Hello, the game is Darkness Falls, a 7 days to die mod, and I'd like you to come with me through the beginner's guide portal into the realm of tips and tricks I wish I would have known. Whoa, where am I? What happened? Hey, just joking around, uh, doing a little roleplay. This first notification is a message from the uh, dev. Make sure you read that when you come in. The second pop-up is the beginning of the storyline. Make sure you give that a read when you pop into the game. There are my first two tips. And that's what this video is. This is a guide. Uh, also a huge tips and tricks video uh, for Darkness Falls 7 Days to Die mod. It's going to be a long, long video because there is a lot of information to relay to you. So how I'm going to format this video, I'm just going to let you know now, it's going to be long, so I'm going to try to go through it in like a, in a very resemblance of how you would play through it. I am in creative mood. Here's another tip and trick for you. Hit F1, type DM for debug menu. Debug menu is now on. Hit escape, and you can go into God mode and fly mode if you're on your own server. You can also control the speed of the day. Um, that's my that's my second tip for you anyway um, so what I'm going to do is kind of go through this video and show you everything that I know I'm going to try to show you everything I know it's a lot I, I've been playing Darkness Falls for uh, probably a year year and a half now it's one of my favorite mods uh, for seven days to die it's a little bit harder this is a mod for when you're done vanilla and you kind of are like an expert at playing through vanilla and doing that and you want something else darkness fall is the next great step it's a complete overhaul mod it changes everything about the game it adds an end game it adds a storyline it adds uh, new recipes new items new weapons new armor new monsters um, it, there's just so much to it I probably will not I'm sure when I'm done this video, I'm gonna say, ah, I forgot this, I forgot this, I forgot this, I forgot that. There's just so much to remember. I wrote a lot of it down. I did a bunch of playthroughs for months, just playing through over and over again. Every time I played through, I remember something I forgot or uh, I learned something new from another player. Every single time I played, played, I'd learn multiple things new. Even from people that were just starting and they were asking me on how to do stuff, I would learn things from them, just from playing with other people and seeing how they play. So I'm gonna to try to smush that all into one video. And um, so you will be able to watch this video from start to end, if you would like to, you know, watch it for 20, 30 minutes, pick it up the next day, watch for a little bit more, or I'm gonna to try to do my best with a lot of timestamps and try to categorize them um, so you can jump around to the part that you want because maybe you played Darkness Falls You just want to know about certain things or maybe you want to know about classes or this or that or other thing I'll try to be as descript descriptive and organized as I can in the description of the video So make sure you do that. You can also hover over the uh, video bar for the timelines and stuff like that um, Basically, I'll try to warn for spoilers, but this is a guide. This is tips and tricks. If you're here watching this, this whole thing's a spoiler. You know, there's no real big surprise endings too much. Um, I would recommend maybe going through your first time without this video and, and, and just trying to learn it yourself. And then when you go through your second time, watch this video. It might be a little frustrating though. A lot of people make mistakes because they're thinking with a vanilla mindset and Darkness Falls is different. Okay, so with that said, um, let me fly up and see where I'm at. With that said, uh, this type of video is very niche and it will not get a lot of views. So I, everybody who's viewing this and finds value in this video, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your support. This, these types of videos are supported by people like you. Uh, please, if you like the video, do whatever you can to support the video and the channel. Hit the thumbs up, become a subscriber if you're not, do the bell notification, you know, all the things everybody tells you over and over and over and over again to do, please do. Uh, but more importantly than all that, if you like the video or you see value in it, make sure you share it with other people. You know, when other people want tips, tricks, guides, and stuff like that, post them the link to the video and say, hey, you know, Fubar over at The Game Is on YouTube 
has some pretty good Darkness Falls content, go check it out. You know, that helps, word of mouth helps the most. So if you do find video or value in this video, that's the best way to help over clicking buttons. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this clip right here and then kind of get started, right? We just, we just woke up and uh, what do we do? What do you do in Darkness Falls? All right, so first let me take off fly mode let me go into creative i'm just gonna get some things that are gonna make my life a little easier for doing this video and showing you guys stuff uh dev these are just dev items that help you don't need loot bonus need some extra health don't need a ring of fire Need that all right so I got some weapons so the purple stuff you don't normally get all right so what you do start out with here is a survival backpack and a blank class paper you want to hold on to that blank class paper these are one of the more valuable things in the game the survival backpack and your quest here start you out open the backpack it doesn't get any more simple than that so you open the backpack which will then tell you to go to a trader. So it tells you, you know, backpack has a map, looking at it, you find a trader, go to the trader. So basically, the game is designed to send you, wherever you spawn in the world, it's designed to send you to the closest trader. Um, that's the first quest. Uh, which is good, so, because traders are important. Now, also, I think it's J for journal, or is it L or K? Let me see, what button brings up my journal? I don't know. Uh, players, creative. Where in the heck is the journal? Ah, there it is. Journal. Um, one thing I didn't know for a long time was in the journal there's all kinds of descriptions in here. I did not, like, I wish I would have read all this when I first started playing. Um, so here's your first welcome note. Um, here's your beginning role-playing thing. Sometimes when you pop into a server, zombies are attacking you and you can't really, you gotta click off of it and run. So you don't have a chance to read it. So in your journal, you can read all the tips and tricks that the developer has put in here trying to explain to you what the game does and the different stuff. So growing crops, animal husbandry, mining, wellness system, survival, first aid, infection, water, dysentery, immediately... You know, all this stuff, I'm going to be going over a lot of this stuff, um, more so in a more in-depth, uh, kind of practical, how it's utilized manner, but it, this is still, uh, I wish I would have known about that when I first started. I didn't realize that going into journal had all that stuff. So first thing you want to do is go to your trader. Traders play a huge role in Darkness Falls, and, uh, but usually right here is where I want to open my, uh, small backpack um, you want to use that and that gives you inventory space so if I open and close that that gives you your first bit of carrying capacity um, I always usually just drop my bed here so I don't respawn any random place if I die at least I respawn here um, can always make another bed I don't know why this is happening I'm getting duplicate class papers which you know it's not a big deal it helps me uh, convey that stuff, but usually you only get one of these. Just be aware of that. Um, with the class papers, you can select a class. There are, um, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes to select from in Darkness Falls. And I'll get in the details of the classes later, but usually at this point is where I select a class. Like, before I even start, I kind of have an idea of what class I want to start with. Um, Unfortunately, since I want to run down all the classes, I can't just start with a single one. Um, well, actually, I can start with a single one. My my strongest pick right now, or my favorite pick, and it all depends on how I want to play. Um, but I guess I can give you my top pick for the classes now. I'll explain why a little bit later. Uh, Hunter is a good start, I think. Um, it's a stealth uh, attack type build, so you sneak attack. Labor is a good build if you want to, is a good start if you want to uh, build and mine for your experience more than kill enemies and loot, um, at least starting out. 
mechanic I think is a very strong start because you get to salvage stuff which gives you all the hard to get things like electrical parts mechanical parts springs iron pipes all these weird things that you need for crafting uh, also it allows you to craft a bike which helps you get around it allows you to craft a mini bike and later on you know all the other vehicles and also it gives you a robotics inventor which is turrets which I love the turrets it's my favorite play style right now unfortunately I was talking to the developer there are some wonky things happening with the turrets that are making them a little bit more powerful than he thinks they should be so I think they're due for a nerf soon but right now they are so very beautiful. I love them. I love the fact that you can do a play style or play through using uh, turrets as your primary weapons right now. Um, but usually I start with mechanic uh, recently. Um, you could start as security would be an okay start. But I, honestly, I think the strongest would probably be farmer because food's very important. Uh, hunter, laborer, or mechanic is and, and which just so happens to be the first four so no coincidence there um secondaries would be like scavenger scientist security i don't think survivalist is a very good start because it just doesn't give you much um so basically once you know what your class what you want your first class will be because you will eventually be all of the classes you will have all of them done and have all the masteries so don't worry about that. It's just how do you want to start the game kind of determines your game play style. So how you want to play and what you want to play is very it's kind of a personal choice. And I'll help you make that later. I'll go over each class in detail what the pros and cons are. Um, but you just hit recipes. So you hit A on a class paper and then you can see you can create any class that you want. Um, so this is blank and then you create a specific. So I'm going to do mechanic. You craft it boom um, read it and now it tells you you have some basic tools it gives you a quest a six part quest each class you have a quest hit the for me it's oh I don't know if I change that at some point but get into your quests you can highlight your class and it just tells you to do some basic stuff so I'll put the focus actually let me go to my white river I already put a primary marker on that a quick waypoint because I'm going to change the focus to my mechanic class so I can do that as I'm traveling is usually what I do okay so now we're going to travel let me make sure I got god mode on because I don't want to I forgot I had to restart that my uh, the game glitched out let me put that back on all right put on god mode I'll put I just want god mode so I don't die put the speed of the day down a little bit all right um so you know first thing is pretty normal fibers some wood but as you're traveling through here some things you want to definitely watch out for or look for is birds nests um for feathers so you can make arrows because arrows and bows have a stealth component that are very good for one-shotting uh things um you know get some get some wood punch the trees like you normally do gather rocks in this you have to in order to make some things you have to transfer you have to make rocks into sharp rocks if you just go to recipes it just one rock gives you two sharp rocks it's silly but that's you know that's what it is and then with that sharp rock plant fibers wood you can craft your first axe uh, a little bit different than uh your starting um starting in vanilla some of the other things oh yeah so it also gives you um, when you complete the quest it gives you rewards you can find a list of rewards like on websites or whatever but it's usually just clues like a piece of equipment um, and stuff like that but one of the things I like to do is when I get these clues is the dies are money basically you can sell those to traders for money I'll wear them for now oh I forgot I had those admin items on um, but yeah, you can sell those for money. Now, the other thing in Darkness Falls to watch out for is these vegetables. So you got wheat, you got carrots, and you don't have to punch them. You just hit E, which is nice to pick them up. Um, but when you first start off, unless you're doing farmer, I, I wouldn't waste too much time collecting these vegetables. You can get them later. Um, the main thing you want to look out for if you're starting in the grasslands 
and it's sending you into the grasslands is apples. Apples you can utilize without any farmer perks or anything like that. Um, and you can use, you can plant them and harvest them for food. So definitely keep your eye out for apple trees. Uh, you want eggs and feathers. Um, so right now it wants me to smack on cars and get gas cans and iron and I'll, I'll mess with that later. Uh, I'm just going to go into creative mode and pretend that I made a bow just to speed things up. Wooden bow. Wooden bow is actually better, huh? I'm going to pretend I made some arrows just to speed things up. Where are the stone arrows? Right there. Um, I usually do a stone spear. Do I have enough just to craft one? So I'll go in creative. Spear. I usually do a stone spear starting out. Um, just so I have a melee item to you know, like get away from me kind of thing. Because spears have a very long uh, distance. So you can hit monsters that are pretty far away. Or zombies that are pretty far away. So it's helpful. The bow I use for the sneak bonus. So you have a 200% damage sneak bonus. Um, so that gives you your 10 melee from the from that plus 22. So it's 32. Um, so we'll be doing 64 damage roughly, maybe a little bit more. Um, so you can pretty much one shot these guys when you sneak up to them. And it's a great way of getting started for clearing. And you don't aggro them because it's a bow, it's silent. If I could, oh, here she comes. Why can I not shoot this? I'm usually pretty good with booze. There he goes. So I did my sneak damage and one shot him. Now this person over here running around like a madman, this is a survivor. You can utilize these NPCs. They'll just go around and kill zombies. They, they have a little potty mouth sometimes though. But what I like to do when I'm starting out is kill steal them for the experience. So she gets them down low and then I'll poke them and kill them. You just have to be careful. Don't attack her because she's literally BA. Like, see how she's just mowing them down? Now, sometimes she won't attack them. She'll bug out and just sit there, but you can still... So you can sit there and kill steal her. And they're very good for helping you clear stuff out uh, when they're around. Because when you're starting out, you don't want to take a lot of damage. Anyway, a lot of people ask me, what, is, what are the survivors? What's the point of them? Um, I always assumed after playing for a while that they're just there for ambiance. Uh, but I did have the opportunity to talk to the developer. And I, I asked him, well, well what, what is the point of the survivors? And he confirmed that. It's basically, uh, for when you're playing single player, the world feels really alone, and he just, he felt like it was just weird to not have anybody else in the world except for traders. So he had, uh, survivors spawn and stuff like that, so I just thought that was a cool little touch. I think he's going to, um, do more with them later, but for right now, they're just, like, kind of ambiance, and they actually kind of help you in the beginning. Unless you hit them, then they will kill you hard. Um... One little tip for survivors, if you're not a PvPer like me, I play a lot of PvE. Uh, let me just get rid of her. Uh, I play a lot of PvE, um, so to get the PvP kill other player achievement, um, you can actually kill the survivors. They, they are a player entity for whatever reason in the game, so when you kill them, uh, when you're more powerful, you can just kind of mel them down. Um, you will get player kill counts, which can help you get that achievement. So when you kill stuff in Darkness Falls, here's another tip for you, they leave a little smushy corpse behind. You can hear it when you walk over, it's like, which is pretty funny when you step on them. You'll get that a lot when you're killing them um, all over the place. You want to you wanna whack on them with your sharp weapons, your axe, whatever. Um, bones are important. Bones are glue. You need lots and lots and lots of glue. So, bones are glue. Bones are important. Um, there are other ways of getting glue, but this is a very quick, easy way of getting bones for glue. You also get rotting flesh. Rotting flesh is important for 
not farm plots like in vanilla, or food. You can make farm plots in this game, but you don't need to. When you get the farmer perk, you'll be able to convert, you'll be able to hoe regular dirt and make a farm plot as big as you want, as much as you want, uh, just with the hoe tool. So you do not need to sit there and waste all your time and effort gathering stuff to make farm plots. Um, you can just use the regular soil. Um, you could just craft topsoil. Anyway, so um, the vegetables, like I said, you don't really need them. Tomatoes are very good later. You can pick some up. Oranges you can't use. Uh, if you go to recipes, you can't use. You can't make orange seeds until you have Master Farmer unlocked. Um, you know, everything's locked. So I guess that's actually something I should show you. There's just so much. It's just gonna be constantly. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. When you're in your crafting menu when you first start out, I usually do this at night, like when I when I need to hunker down at night because things are too fast and too hard for me. Um, is usually when I go into the crafting menu and plan out my skills. But if you go into your crafting menu and you just look at something, uh, what would be a good thing? Let's do um, let's do the backpack, right? So we started with a small sticks and plant fibers. We have that already. To make a medium backpack, you only need leather, cloth, and duct tape. That's not that hard. But you always have to look out because go in here and look into the description. And they do, they've do done a much better job with putting stuff into description to make it easier. It was back when I first started playing this, they didn't tell you anything. How you needed to craft it, you had to figure it out. Um, so it's nice now they tell you you need the tailoring bench. In the tailoring bench, you need a sewing kit. So a tailoring bench is a workstation. And like how you can put a hammer and a wrench in the workbench, you can put a sewing kit in the tailoring bench. Um, it's used to make backpacks and I think like leather armor and stuff like that. Um, so you need you need to realize that. Okay, so how do you make a tailoring bench? So you need to... Uh, let's see, so you need to... Why didn't bench come up? Ah, tailoring workstation. No, it's not called bench. So in order to do this, you need it's locked. You need something called workbenches, a skill called workbenches. And it doesn't say you need anything special to craft it. You need forged iron, electrical parts, and wood. Okay, so let's look at the skill. Now you have to go into the skill and look for workbenches. Go to workbenches. Okay, so workbench level one unlocks uh, workbench and table saw. But requires tool crafting one and hover over this it'll also tell you if there's any kind of level requirements to make the metal work bench and a tailoring workstation you need tool crafting two so now you need workbenches so you gotta spend two points here to get workbench two but you also need tool crafting two which is over here so you need to go to tool crafting in order to do tool crafting you have to spend a point and then you have to be level 10 for two so at level 10, with what, four points spent, you can then make a the, the upgraded backpack. So it it takes a little bit when you want to figure out what you're trying to craft. you got to look around a little bit. That's this tip and trick. Like It's all interconnected. A lot of times you'll be like, oh, well, I just want to make this tool, and okay, I'll spend my points. And then you go to try to create it, and you're like, oh, wait, I need this thing. Oh, no, I need four more points. Oh, no, i got to level four more times, and you get trapped. So if you're trying to plan things out um, and trying to reserve your skill points, you have to look carefully at everything. You have to look at what is what it's locked behind, what skills that's you know the, the workbench is locked behind. So you gotta like thoroughly look at everything. And like I said, they've put a lot of information into the description, so you can do that. And that's usually what I do at night, like when I'm running and it turns nighttime on my first night. I usually make like a little mine hole or something, then I'll take some time to plan out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to spend my points. <laughs> now, as far as initially spending your points, here's another tip. When I first start, you need points, but you're going to level up as you do stuff. Um, See, so you, you want to spend some points. One of the first things I spend my points on is Pack Mule. So it'll give you six more carry, carry six more items per point spent. Right? Up to 30 more items. 
with a full pack mule and the best backpack and the best mods that increase uh, carrying capacity, you'll be able to have everything unlocked. But it takes everything, so don't feel like you're going to waste points or not worry about short, you know, oh, I won't do this because I might not need it later. You got to dump all your points and all that stuff anyway. But you don't want to just dump all your points right away into um, Pack Mule. Because then you won't have points for a workbench when you're level 10 in order to make other things that you can make like a bike and a mini bike. And you'll have to wait five more levels. So when you're starting out, you want to be very cautious with your points. It's okay to not spend some points if you're not sure. I, it's better to not spend the points than spend them on something and then it turns out you really need them for what you're trying to accomplish now. And you have to level up four or five more times before you can do what you want to do because you just blew all your points on stuff. So uh, be wise with points. Be, be cautious with spending your points. Um, there's no rush. You're going to get a lot of points. Uh, one point per level. Unless your server that you're playing on is uh, set to be different. Alright, so let's continue on. Uh, I think I'm just going to put on fly mode since it's so far away. And just kind of get there a little quicker. If you guys don't mind. Uh, that way it speeds up the video a little bit. Um, but along the way here, you would just want to collect feathers. Eggs are important not to eat. You need eggs to make those class papers. Um, you, you can later on craft chicken coops to get eggs but when you're first starting you're probably going to want to save all the eggs you get um you'll probably want to save all the eggs that you get for uh class papers or emergency food supply if if the food if the food thing is not going well for you those things that noise they make drives me nuts they're they're easier than vultures um but in the desert but they're Ah, they're still a pain in the butt when you first start. So, I need to get uh, for my mechanic gas and iron. Basically, it would just make me pound on these cars with an axe to get it. You know, obviously to speed up the video, I'm going to use the magic of creative mood. So I'm just going to pretend that I got a whole bunch of gas. Really? You got beat on me? I'm going to get some scrap iron. Something. Why else beat on me before I can get to it? There we go. Completed that. Now it wants me to get lead car batteries and uh, engines. But if you'll notice, it gave me. Uh, some more gifts, so it gave me a wrench. So now, as a mechanic, I'll be able to wrench batteries and cars and leather and pipes and springs and gas. Uh, so I got it that fast. Look at that. And so, and this is why I got the admin tools, so I just get rid of them. Um, and then you'll see it gave me two food. So, yeah, I got some, got something to eat and food no food poisoning most canned food will have food poisoning foods very difficult in this game i'll talk about that in a minute um so now i need mechanical parts and electrical parts which i can get from banging on more cars or air conditioners or whatever but i'm just going to summon some to show you what happens when you go through the quest mechanical parts and then electrical parts Let me type parts Oops, that was mechanical. Gather lots of parts. So now basically it's leading me up to craft my first weapon, which is a blunderbuss. Uh, Oops. Beauty of... Beauty of... Cheating. And creative. And then it would basically... Want me to craft a blunderbuss? Is that gonna take long? Ten seconds. And then I think that would be the full quest, right? Yeah, I'm on six six, and then I get no reward, but my quest is done. So now, now it's completed. 
And that's it. That's your first quest. But So I got some clues, I got some food, I got a wrench, and I have it forced me to craft a blunderbuss. Um, I don't think I'll need any of this stuff for now. Um, yeah, so that's all a quest is, but if you look into your mechanic now, because I did the quest, it gave me some free points. So now I have three points into salvage operations. I can now have bicycle unlocked because I completed the quest. I can now, I have all these unlocked if I want to complete the quest, complete the quest. And this one I have to be level 10. So I have these first three unlocked. Level 10 for mini bikes. Level 10 for, yeah, so the first three I get unlocked just from doing the quest. So now if I wanted to, I could start putting points into my robotics inventor, which is going to allow me to create a sledge, which is nice. Um, I don't want to get into, I want to talk about the mechanics class right now, but I don't want to do that until I get into uh, discussing all the classes. Let's get to the trader first. Now you're starting to understand why this is going to be a long video, right? Um, there's so much to this game. Alright, so I'm going to fly to the trader. I don't want to fast forward there because I'm going to see things that I want to tell you about along the way. I don't think I've seen an apple tree yet. Ah, here's some apple trees. So you want to keep your eye out for apple trees. Um, reason why is you get apples from them. Apples are uh, a food. You cannot eat them right away or you can have a rotten food chance. But if you look at the recipes, you can make seeds without anything using four apples. So now I can make a seed. And with trees, you can plant them anywhere. You don't need water. You don't need any special soil. You can plunk them down anywhere that they'll let you. And they'll grow. And then you'll be able to harvest apples. Also, if you look, a baked apple is nothing but some sticks, which is made out of wood and apples. And that gives you, I think, five food or eight food. Uh, we'd have to make them. All you need is a campfire. So that's a beginner-friendly source of food right there is apples. So... If you're in the grasslands or you're planning on uh, running through the grasslands when you're starting, always keep an eye out for apple trees. Now, I highly suggest, um, somebody was talking about that POI, that's a bookstore, it's like a Darkness Falls uh, specific POI. Um, if you're going to be around this area, I would not suggest harvesting the tree. I would actually mark it. I would put a little thing here, be like apple tree. Because it'll grow back again and uh, you can come back and harvest those apples like maybe you find no other apple trees so you want to you want to mark them so you can come back and gather apples when they grow them. if you're not going to be in this area or you're traveling far away um, go ahead and destroy the tree because it has a chance to drop a seed which is the equivalent of four apples and there you go Ooh, look at that I got two seeds Nice. I didn't know I could drop two. Did got none from that one. So now I got nine apples and two seeds. I'm I'm on a roll here. Um, I got basically four trees that I can make. I can convert them into seeds. I'm not going to do it now in case I have problems with food. I want to be able to eat these apples instead of uh, putting them to trees. And that's kind of that's my thing. I don't. Uh, I try to play to where I don't die a single time. It's, that's my goal uh, doing these types of games. So, I mean, if you don't care about dying, you can just starve to death and then you'll pop back up with 50% food. But uh, I guess this is a good intro into the death penalty. Let me head on to the trader, I guess. When you die in this game, it gives you a debuff for a few minutes, 5-10 minutes, something like that, where you don't get as much experience. But the main thing is, your health gets lowered. Um, so you have a stat called wellness. Let me uh, show you some food. Um, I don't know. Food. The better forms of food that you can uh, craft, like gumbo and shepherd's pie and spaghetti and all these cool things that you can craft have five wellness. Like the easier foods will have lower wellness. Um, ah, jeez. Fly up real quick. Food. Uh, the lower foods will have lower wellness, like bacon and eggs has no wellness whatsoever. Where's the apples at? 
baked apples. Baked apples are five with no wellness, but it's something that can sustain you when you're starting. Um, see here, the canned food that you normally find in the vanilla game that you can eat has a high chance of food poisoning with low reward. Do not suggest eating these. You can craft them into um, into an edible uh, form by making a clay bowl and putting it on a fire. A uh, clay bowl, you need a forge, so you're not going to be able to do that until you make a forge. But you know, so until you get like level 10, 15, 20, whatever, start getting forges. It's very easy to starve to death uh, by not having a, a sustainable food source. That's why apples are important. Anyway, back to wellness. Food. Um, so, yeah, if, if you see the food and the drinks have wellness on them, uh, like coffee's a good one, has five wellness. Yuka smoothies have three. Um, that kind of thing. Yuka juice has none, but, you know, if you're starting in a desert, Yuka is very, makes a very easy start. Um, but wellness is your maximum hit points. So you start out with 100 hit points. I have 118. Well, actually, I have like 1,000 because I put the admin thing on. But you start out with 100. And if you die, you'll drop 25. So you'll have 75 hit points max. And then if you die again, you'll have 50 hit points max. Um, it will be the max until you eat foods that have your wellness. So it's very important when you're starting out. You won't have access to wellness foods and items and stuff like that. Um, in abundance, so it's very important not to die, more so for the wellness. Um, and that's where, like, a farmer start comes into play. You can, if you get the farmer class, you can, you know, get a farm going and start, uh, baking foods that have, uh, better wellness, because it unlocks not only seed recipes, but, uh, food recipes when you do the farmer class. Again, I don't want to get into classes just yet. Excuse me, I'm going to drink something real quick. All this talking, wow, it dries your mouth out. Like, this is so much talking. So much information to convey. Elon Musk, we need your mind implants. And I could just, like, upload my mental pathways for you to uh, download and interpret my thoughts. And you'll just understand what I mean about everything. We'll just be able to share thoughts. Maybe. I don't know. Sounds science fiction to me. Anyway, yeah, a lot of information, so keep your eye out. Nests, um, apples is really what you want to look for in the grass area. If you're starting in the desert area, well, I guess this is a good time to go into biomes, what biomes are good. Grass is great uh, to start in. It's a mild climate. The worst thing you have that flies at you are those little stupid bees with the horrible sound. You'll have lots of animals to kill. Do not fight cows at first. Do not fight boars at first. I, when I first started playing, I died. And I'd be like, ooh, meat, and I'd smack the cow, and that thing will turn on you, and it does a lot of damage. Um, same with boars. You want to try to stay away from them unless you can get up on something and kill them. Just don't kind of run up to them foolishly. Anyway, yeah, grasslands are great because you have apple trees, but the desert is wonderful. Now, it's hot, so you're going to get thirsty more, but the beautiful beautiful power that is yucca fruit oh my goodness when you're starting out yucca fruit is god's nectar it makes the gameplay so easy because with yucca fruit where'd you go recipes you can make grilled yucca which is the same as an apple and it takes one yucca fruit and all you need is, is a campfire and a cooking grill to make it so you do have to find a cooking grill or you have to have a forge but, you know, you loot some ovens um, and some uh, barbecue grills. You run around until you find a grill, you're, you're set. Or if you find a trader that's selling one, you're set. Um, and then also you can make yuca juice, which is just two yuca fruit and a glass jar, which is better than water. And that's a campfire. You need nothing. So you have an excellent source of hydration. You have an excellent source of food. I would not use my yucca for juice, however. I would just drink the water. I would boil the water and drink the water. I would save it all for food in the beginning because food is critical. It's hard to maintain your food stats at first until you get going, or that's the whole point of farmer. Farmer is a very strong 
start because you don't have to worry about food. You can get a base set down and then you can easily go from there. But the desert's a very good start. Um, the only problem with desert, these look at those. This is what makes the desert horrible. They will attack you when you're not looking. They will sneak you. They will dive bomb you. They'll attack you when your head's turned. No matter how much you run from them, they will chase you and never give up. These things are horrible. They only have 30 hit points though, so they're easy to kill. But they're going to wear you down. They're going to nibble you and nibble you and nibble you. And they're going to get a hit off. See how he comes down, he pops you, and it flies away. And I have God mood on, so he's having a hard time with me. But, you know, they're difficult when you're first starting out and you don't have weapons and stuff like that. So, that can make the... Look, <laughs> the goat is attacking him. Uh, I thought the goat was attacking him. That can make the desert a hard start. Because they'll whittle your health down little by little by little. I One time I was running to the trader and I got caught up with some zombies and they had me down to like one hit point and I was sitting there like ah oh, I need food uh, what do I do and I was looking at this house and I was like I can I was like hiding behind a car looking at the house going I could go in there and maybe get some food uh man but if there's a zombie in there one more hit I'll die and I was sitting there I was like all right let me wrench this car <laughs> I'm gonna wrench this car and make up my mind and I started wrenching the car and I didn't realize it, but there was a vulture behind me. It swooped down, hit me, killed me. That quick. I was like, ah. So, vultures are the bane of the desert start. But other than that, deserts are a great area. Um, the only resource you're going to be striving for in the desert is clay. Because when you dig, you're going to get sand. Um, but it's not, you know, not too hard to go find a grassland area and do a little digging over there. Deserts and grasslands are my two favorite starts. Grasslands, because it's temperate mild easier deserts because of yucca fruit is everywhere also aloe uh, is good for bandages but I'll show you why that's not a big deal healing is not a big deal in darkness falls to me and I'll show you why once we get to the traders still making our way to the trader on day one usually by time on a normal star if the trader is not too far away I can usually make it to the trader before the first day is over, like right around nighttime. Maybe have a little bit of time to do some. Look, here comes another one. This is why the desert start is so annoying. Oh, as far as other biomes, the burnt biome and darkness falls, no. No, 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 no. At nighttime, you will have night stalkers that come out. They got 500 hit points, they run fast, they're little monsters. They hit hard, they'll one-shot you if you have no armor on, they'll just one-shot you. Um, so you definitely don't want to mess with um, uh, the burned lands, you know, like the, the coal, the burning trees with the burned zombies. Stay out of there um, until you're more advanced player, uh, especially at night. Now you can have Night Stalker spawn here at night too as well, um, but it's less of a chance. It's, Let's see, let's see lighting up. So this is the trader. So this is um, the trader, and if you notice, we have loud guards shooting everything. Um, these, all these guards are active NPCs that just stay there. Oh, does he have? A, I didn't realize there's munitions up here to loot. I never came up there. Um, the traders have active guards that will actively shoot zombies, and they'll just they'll just light the zombies up um, until they're dead if they come close. Now, they're not perfect. Sometimes... Which one is that? Is that you? Who's shooting? And what are you shooting at? They're not perfect. Sometimes there'll be a zombie right here and they won't kill it and it'll be attacking you. Here's one right here. Let's see if we can get him, get him shot by one of these guards. Uh, sometimes... Yeah, so he just dropped him. Sometimes, you know, zombie will just break in. So these traders, their bases are not protected. They're f loud. What is he attacking? These traders are not protected. 
<laughs> the guards will protect you, but they're not reliable. Let's take fly mode off. Uh, they're not reliable what whatsoever. Wow, they just dropped him. Um, and they the guards can kill you. So if you get in between their crossfire, like if a zombie was behind me and that guard started shooting at it, they'll drop you and they'll drop you fast. Also, if you hit the guards or the traitors, um, they'll drop you. So you gotta be uh, very careful when you're shooting around them, or if you play like if I placed a turret here, my turret would target it, try to attack it, and then a guard would turn around and kill me dead. Um, traitors are fully buildings are fully uh, destroyable, so um, it's not protected. You can't hang out here in Horde Night and think you'll be safe. They'll just come and destroy this. Like, the guards can help keep you safe, but they're not going to keep you safe whatsoever. The things are going to get through them. They're going to, you know, sometimes the guards just don't shoot stuff. You can get your traitor killed, then you won't have a traitor for a while. Um, so, yeah, just keep in mind you're not 100% safe here. Now, as far as traitors. Well, another survivor. Yep, yep, oh, yep. You got money. I got money. I'll summon money. Anyway, uh, traders take on a little bit of a different role. They're open 24-7. So I would recommend, and that's one of the reasons why the quest sends you to the trader. Let me finish my quest. That's it. And then the quest is done. Oh my goodness. There is no further quest. You're at a trader now. I like to mark my traders little trader mark you can you can put their name down if you want oh my god I'm gonna kill that guy who is he shooting at who are you shooting at can I kill him stop it That was just too loud. Sorry, trader. Had to do it. Um, so yeah, where was I before I got interrupted by uh, Crazy Guard? Yeah, so traders take on a different role. Um, they are quest givers and you have reputation with them. So if you go into your character settings and you look into your character stats, you can see down here. You can see your uh, wellness here too, by the way. Um, but, but you can see your factions. Trader Bob, Trader Caitlin, Trader Hugh, Trader Jen, Trader Joel, Trader Rex. Um, what factions do um, is some will give you quests like Trader Caitlin is the end game and uh, Trader, I'll get into her later. But um, they can send you on quests to other areas. Um, regular traders like this uh, will have uh, when you do their um, jobs. This is how you get faction as you level up the tiers they will sell you skill points so they'll sell you things like parkour or you know i don't know I, you know just anything like uh reloading weekly or they'll sell you like basic farming tips for for dukes and it might be a thousand dukes five thousand dukes or whatever but you can pay them for that and that saves you from having to plunk a uh skill point in it now you will still have requirements so like if you have a level requirement for the tip or the the basic farming tip as a player level five requirement you still have to meet all the other requirements but this way you can basically you're paying for skill points right um, because they're level locked and the more skill points you have the better off you are so doing quests is a good way of doing that also for food in the beginning of the game um, if you do, and this works in vanilla too, if you do the buried supplies, you tend to get a lot of food from the supply cache that's buried. So, um, what I tend to do is I'll do a couple buried supplies to keep me going while I work on collecting my yucca fruits or planting my apple trees. Um, and let me just plant an apple tree so you can see what that is about. Very simple. Plant an apple tree anywhere, anywhere you want. You can plant it in the sand, 
you can plant it uh, in soil. It doesn't need water. Eventually, that'll grow. It take I think it takes about six to seven in-game days for that to actually grow. Uh, it takes a while for it to grow, but then once you can, once it grows and you can harvest it, you can harvest them over and over and over again, like uh, once a day. It's like a regular crop. Um, so once you have some trees going and you can harvest them. You're good on food. You don't need to worry about your farmer right away other than wellness. Now here, let me show you some healing methods and ways to get wellness. So usually the first thing I do with a trader is I come up, I go in my outfit, I take my uh, whatever clothing that dropped. So here I got purple dye. So what I'll do is I'll modify it, pop the purple dye out, wear it again. I don't need the hat because I have that weird thing on. But I'll modify the hat, take the paint out, modify that, take the paint out. Now the best paint is pink. You get a pink paint, that's worth like 300 dukes. But you know, I got these mediocre paints and none of these are needed for anything other than coloring. And I usually just scrap my old stuff to get cloth. Um, but what I usually do is go into them and sell the paint. 17, 28, and 56. Now I got 100 dukes. Uh, if I was desperate, I would sell the engine. But I need the engine uh, for my mini bike. I don't need lead car batteries for a while. Not until I get a working oven or anything like that. So I could sell the car battery for 100 dukes. I can always get more. Definitely don't need these. So I basically will sell anything that I don't really need. I don't need miso soup, so I think I summon them, then I? Um, but I usually do that, and then, I don't buy from him, over here, the guard captain, uh, he is here, he is a vendor, he also has jobs you can do, um, go into his inventory, he won't buy anything from you, but he'll, he sells medical supplies, and a lot of people don't realize this, but these medical supplies are super cheap, look at this, he's got... 20 sterile band he has 23 sterile bandages that heal for 15 health they stop bleeding they they increase abrasion heal speed and they're only five dukes each i could have i could afford to buy uh a lot of them so i could buy him out of bandages i can also buy a couple plaster casts to help with broken bones um so i always do that i always buy at least two of them they're a little bit more expensive I'll buy as many bandages as I feasibly can, um, and then if I don't, if I didn't find any honey from like tree trunks from on my way here, I didn't hit any tree trunks, so I didn't find any honey. I would buy at least one of them just to have for if, in case I get infected. Uh, honey is also good as an emergency food source; it's worth eight food. But you obviously want to save it for infection. Also, you need lots of honey. To, to get the other classes. Eggs and honey are what are part of the thing to make the uh, these blank class papers. So you want to save all the honey you can get. Once I start making money, every reset, he restocks every three days, I'll come here and I'll just buy this guy out of his honey. I'll buy him out of his sterile bandages. You really, I tend to not break my legs a lot. So, I, you know, I'll keep five or ten plaster casts in stock. But the other thing you want to spend your money on while you're here, other than bandages, I would say bandages are your priority because that's going to be your primary heal. They're cheap. You can heal with painkillers, but they're 80 each. So I would definitely just do bandages. You want honey for your infections and for later, but vitamins. You get three wellness from vitamins. So this is my first method usually of getting some wellness. After I buy the bandages, after I get some casts, you know, three to five of them, that way I'm safe. After I buy him out of, you know, that, oh, I got enough for one vitamin left. I'll spend the rest of my money on vitamins. And then you can just eat that. And every 15 minutes you can eat a vitamin and I got another wellness. So now I got a total of 103 hit points. So you can take that up to a maximum of 200 eventually, and then if you get health nut and spend points in health nut, you get another 100. So your max hit points is going to be 300, unless you, you know, like higher end stuff, get into physical conditioning where you can get another 50. So 
300 is going to be your max 350 if you pick the technology boost i'll get into this this is end game stuff here so i'll get into that later but this is a lot of a lot of people miss out on the guard captain i play online with other people and his inventory is never bought out i'm like the only one buying his inventory out so i probably shouldn't even share this information it's going to spread that i'll never be able to find another bandage on an online game but it's like it's so great it's so cheap all his stuff here a lot of people don't even bother with it it restocks every three days or whatever your server set to restock one um you know if your server set to restock i don't can you do vendors i don't think vendor follows loot i don't know but you know they they tend to restock and then you know he has normal vendor stuff typically um these two items are important i'm glad he was in here to remind me to tell you about them um a lot of the items that you're going to need in darkness falls comes from a metal workbench it's basically like a workbench but it's a metal workbench and it needs calipers and a welding torch um, these can be rather difficult to find some playthroughs i do some looting and i find a bunch of them and i have no problem i find them right away some playthroughs i cannot find any for the life of me just remember always come in and check your vendors they might have some they're rather expensive but if you're stuck and can you cannot craft these you can only loot these or buy them from vendors so if you get stuck you can come check your vendors um what else about vendors uh general schematics are used for mods they are very expensive mods in this game sell for a lot basically they sell for a lot because they require uh generic schematics did i say general generic schematics um i if i have extra dukes i would always buy these you're going to need probably for a playthrough maybe 500 to a thousand of these um, there's ways of getting them later, but when you're starting out and you need to make some mods, um, buying them is probably your best bet. And then also you can look for stuff like cement mixers or whatever, anything that, uh, you can't craft yourself that he might sell. Just looking at the food options he has. Food's very expensive too, you can't really rely on vendors for food. Um, you know, if you get desperate, you can buy, you, you know, spend 255 for 20 food. But, you know, hopefully you don't get that desperate. Oh, look, he has uh, boxes. You can't create these without a forge. But since he's selling four of these wooden storage boxes for 20 each, which is really cheap, I would buy them if I had the extra dukes. I would definitely try to buy them because it allows me to have them before I could actually craft them myself. So it's, it's worth a shot to kind of go through, you know, repair kits are very expensive. I wouldn't suggest buying them. They're actually pretty easy to make once you get oil, which is one of the benefits of a mechanic, by the way, that I didn't mention before. Um, and I would try to find a good weapon when I first start out. Like crossbow would be beautiful. Look at that. Compound bow is 22, crossbow is 31. I love crossbows over bows. Um, I would definitely, if I had, if I was in this playthrough, I would try to get some dukes up to buy this from him because that 200% on 31 plus whatever the crossbow bolt is uh, would be very beneficial to me for sneaking around and uh, shooting. So I definitely would be trying to get one of these iron crossbows somehow. Quit wasting my time. Um, if you can camp out in the trader base, like I said, they're open 24 seven, I wouldn't recommend it because it is dangerous. Like even though these guards do protect you while you're in here, they also can kill you very easily by accident. Like you accidentally punched a trader, the guards are going to try to shoot at you and kill you. Um, if you want to be near a big guard base, I would recommend not building too close. Uh, if you're on an online server, most likely they'll have like reset zones or something, so you won't be able to build too close to them anyway. But you probably, the guards can shoot probably about this far. So you want to keep a little bit of a distance. Now one of the benefits about being close to them is they will shoot stuff, and then the little squishy corpses that you can loot for bones and glues, eventually they'll be littered out here. If, if you're nearby making uh, mobs uh, zombies spawn 
So that's another little benefit about camping near a uh, trader. Um, I think I was calling them vendors, but you're camping near a trader. But you don't want to camp too close. So you want to make your home, you know, someplace. Now, you know, if you're playing by yourself, you don't got to worry about land claim blocks. But if you're playing on a multiplayer, you know, you have to put down your land claim block. And then only within that area are you protected. Now, just because you see a sky a limit there, that doesn't mean that's the limit. That's just represent, just giving you a line to so you can see how wide it is. It goes all the way up and all the way down the bedrock. So, from that corner to that corner to that corner, depending on the server settings. I have it set to like 71 blocks. Um, but basically, anything in here will be protected from other players. They can't steal your chests or stuff like that. So, that's basically. If you never played online or online servers, that's what a land claim block is for. It just protects you from other players. If you're just playing by yourself, you build wherever you want. You know, you don't got to worry about reset zones or whatever. You can take over a building and make a POI your uh, base if you want. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna grab a drink. Ah, seltzer water. One more thing I forgot about traders. Let me show you real quick. Doop -de doop -de doop. I wonder if they got like run speed boots in here. Stamina. Need some need the run baby run mod. Do 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 vending machines is what I want to show you to traders. Uh good source of food. So we have yucca, apples, we have quests for buried treasures to help us get food, and then vending machines will help you get food because you can come in here for relatively cheap uh purchase you know various cans that you can then craft using clay bowls later once you have a forge um also usually they have workbenches so you want to check if they're working if they are not working loot them they usually have good loot uh tables inside the crafting stations after you're done looting them, especially if you're a mechanic, uh, destroy them. Because when you wrench them down, see what I just got? I got forged iron. One of the few places that you can shortcut getting forged iron before you get a forge. So, you know, you can potentially have enough to make a uh, mini bike or a turret or something like that. Um... Uh, if you find enough of the workstations that are disabled that you can destroy. But much rather have them undisabled. So now I can go, I found a cement mixer. Now I can go out and try to make some concrete mix using sand, stone, and cement once I have a forge. So that's nice that I have a concrete mixer there. Chem station would be really nice. When I find a uh, trader starting out with a working chem station, it's usually when I'm very happy. Oh, I don't know where the uh, forge. Unfortunately, the forge, but look, inside of it, look what we found. 30 forged iron. That's a great find when you're starting out. That's going to let you craft things that you normally could not. Uh, beds are great sources of springs. You want springs? Kill beds. Uh, chairs are good sources of leather and mechanical parts. Beds, again, are springs and cloth. So, you know, don't be afraid to wrench all that stuff or hammer it or whatever. Um, another reason why the mechanic is such a good, um, good starting point. Um, the other reason is when you wrench cars, you get oil very often. And guess what you need for the almighty repair kit? Oil. And the only way to get that without a chem station is by looting it or by being a mechanic. Um, so, you know, mechanical parts are mechanic or you can craft them with forged steel duct tape. And oil. You need shale in a... You need grease monkey. And a chemistry station. Oh my god, that firing. So loud. So that's why I, I uh, think 
um, mechanic is probably holy moly what is going on over there what is going on shooting at? Jeez, dude. Um, Darkest Falls, the way they spawn the mobs is very nice. They'll just keep spawning. Um, they can just keep spawning and spawning, especially when you're in a new area that you haven't been before. It's almost like, I don't, I don't know how they have it, uh, how they have it set, but it feels like, uh, if you're familiar with vanilla and how heat happens like in the grand theft auto you have heat and the cops come well in here you have heat and zombies come so when you're when you're using stuff like torches and you're burning forges and chem station it, over time it increases the heat in your in your area and that's when zombies come and screamers come and all that stuff way i way it feels like they have it set up is when you go to an area it already has heat until you kill some zombies and cool it down and almost is the way it feels like because like once you clear the area out you'll be you'll be good occasionally a zombie will spawn here and there but when you walk over to an area you haven't been before or your area you haven't been to in a while zombies will just start spawning all over around you that's kind of how it feels i don't know that's just my experience with it but keep that in mind clear area out for your base you should be good for a little bit you won't be bothered too much it'll be pretty quiet until you run some forges and get the heat back up all right so where to go now so that's so what we do we did a beginner quest a class quest we talked about the journal i uh, talked about some i guess we got to review the skills and this is going to probably take 40 minutes to an hour i'd imagine just to go through all the skills uh and the classes so let's, um, I'm going to do skill tree and then classes, I think. And then, so I'm not bothered doing that because this is going to be like looking at a screen. I'm just going to kind of float up a little bit. I'm out of the way. I'm not in anybody's way. And we'll just have a nice little bit of scenery here. I'm right on the edge of, uh, the, oh, there's the burnt area over there. Dangerous. So yeah, it looks like, um... I think the way this map is, is the wasteland is in the middle. Like, think of it like a nuclear bomb hit. The wasteland's in the middle, and then the burnt area, and then the desert surrounds it, and then on the outskirts is the uh, grasslands, and then beyond that would be the snow, is I think how this map's set up, which I kind of like that. It's like a crater map. Anyway, yeah, let me, uh, let me go ahead and cut the clip right here, and then I'll start on... Oof, getting late. I might have to finish this up uh, tomorrow or another day. But let me let me give it a shot and then uh, see what happens. And we'll we'll discuss classes and skill points next. All right. So open up your skill book. As you level, you get one point per level. Uh, there are books that allow you to get a skill by reading the book. Um, but basically, you have these two skill. Uh, tabs here so you got action skills and perks then you have your what is it, eight classes and then at the end here you have your technology tree and this is all end game stuff that starts at level 75 so let's go into action skills so this is stuff like you know your archery skills your uh some of your like um i guess your athletics um and then you got your weapon automatics blunts blades you have your mining skills pistols rifles scavenging you know loot your your faster looting your loot quality increases and your shotguns right um so athletic skills so how how the action skills work is you'll see you have a level here right so as i use athletics meaning as i drain my stamina and then it regenerates i'll get experience in athletics and my skill will go up as my skill goes up it will slightly improve uh by what it says here five stamina recovery um uh decreased stamina from jumping 
And as you level it up, it increases to 10, to 15, to 20, to 25, and you can have a max of 100. Also, what it's doing as it's getting more powerful is it's allowing you to unlock. So you need Athletics 10, Athletics 20, Athletics 40, Athletics 60. Um, so same thing for this, increase your stamina regen, your parkour, so this would typically have been in your agility. So they know they got away they got away from strength, agility, stamina, all that stuff. They kind of revamped the skills and magazine systems into you, these two skill trees. Uh, parkours, you know, you need to have certain athletics, and then each one costs a point. Um, your stealth, you can have um, um, more effective stealth. Weapons, you have to use an automatic weapon before you can buy the cool stuff that makes it better. Now, definitely you want to take your time to look at the changes that he, he has made to the weapons because each one has like a special thing to it. So just go down to the max. So it increases the fire rate by 35%. Reload 30% faster. Increases damage by 50%. Um, uh, head attacks have uh let's see what's it say increased damage for 50 percent increased damage with automatic weapons on head attacks by 15 percent also gives you a 15 percent chance to decapitate so that one's not too crazy it just makes the automatic weapons better um uh, in general and faster and um better headshots now the blunt is pretty crazy blunt weapons are something people really like so if you look at Pummel Pete, when you go into Blunt Weapons and go all the way down, increases the damage by 50%, which is nice. Stamina usage decreases, so you can basically swing forever. I think when you have stamina all the way decreased and you have uh, Sexual Tyrannosaurus all the way up and you have your um, Blunt Weapons, because the stamina is also decreasing as you're skilling up, so you can get a maximum of... So you get faster attacks, 25% faster, 25% decreased stamina here, and then with Pummel Pete you're getting 50%, uh, so that's 75% reduced stamina, right? So you'll be able to secondary swing non-stop with a blunt weapon once you're maxed out. So you have to really look at the skills and, and kind of um, how they play because you might not like blunt uh you know, blunt weapons in vanilla, but because Darkness Falls is different, you might be like, wow, these are really powerful. And I'm using blunt weapons as an example because they're actually quite fun. A lot of people like them. Because if you look, it says 100% uh, chance of knockdown on primary attack. What does that mean? 100%? So that means when you swing with a primary attack, you have 100% chance of knocking a zombie down. So you, you can just keep them on their butt the whole time you're fighting them. You just walk up, donk, they fall to the ground. Donk, donk, donk. They're, they're, you just keep them on the ground. Um, and then you get a 10% damage stack on a successful attack. And then if you look, 60% chance of a knockdown in an area of effect on a power attack. So you can power attack infinitely, and each power attack has an area of effect knockdown. So if you're fighting multiple mobs, you can just be like, just keep hitting your power attack and they're just going to keep going. Boom, 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 boom. Then they have mods like repulsor mods that you can put in to the stun batons, which count as blunt weapons too. And you can shoot, you can basically like eat monsters away, you hit them and they like fly away. So the blunt weapons become very powerful later on as, as you use them. And that's just one thing here. Then you get breaking and entering, which increases your block damage. You get um, bar brawler which gives you different little things so you do 10% damage do 20% damage on mobs that are knocked down and stunned so you're 100% knocking things down so you're always doing an extra 20% damage you get 10% damage we each kill up to 30% so you kill three mobs now you got another 30% stacking on everything um, if you get hit while you're fighting with a blunt, and then you uh, do 25% faster and you run faster. Go into rage mode. So we already have increased um, increased speed here by 25%. Now you're getting another 
uh, 25%, so you're 50% faster now when you get hit. Um, every seventh hit does 300%, so you're sitting there, whack, whack, whack. And then if you took security, you got 50% uh, increased swing speed. And then if you take Fury of Blues, you get another 25% swing speed. So you're, you're doing 75% faster. You're, so like, you know, faster equals damage, but it's also like you're knocking them down that much faster too. So blunt weapons just get crazy at the end game. But that's fine because the monsters get crazy at the end game too. And that's one of the things I like about the progression of the game. Like, yeah, you might go, oh my god, that's nuts. You'll just be, you'll be god mode running around. Yeah, you will be to normal mobs. But when you're fighting a behemoth, you won't feel like a god. So that's kind of the, the cool progression of the game. Anyway, bladed weapons, very powerful. You get yourself a laser uh, sword from from later on in the game. Very powerful thing. This is, this is actually my favorite. I like blunts. I like knocking them down. But the damage you can do with blade weapons and how fast they strike is just it's just silly. And then they can uh, decapitate very easily. You're just basically running around like you're, uh, I don't know, like you're Mad Max screaming decapito. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, like, so Blade Master increase, uh, decrease damage, so it makes you a 5% damage reduction. Um, some bleed, you get stacking. Life Leech is what I like, so every time you hit with your blade, you get two hit points, so it's like two, 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 and you, you can just hit really fast, you know, eventually. Um, so yeah, I like that. Knife Guy is just a general increased damage, and it gives you some harvest increasing and then your uh, decapitation increases. So I like uh, blades is my favorite, blunts are fun. Uh, mining tool kind of, you know, puts all the mining perks together in one place. So you only have to spend five points once you get your mining up. Um, and now I don't really play pistol builds. I don't have a lot of experience with them, but it looks like they just make them faster and better. Uh, not, not too much. Yeah, it just looks like faster, more powerful. Same with rifles, they, they just make them faster, more powerful, better decapitation. Uh, shotguns increase fire rate, make them more powerful, faster. So I think I think blunt and blades are the two like things that have a like the hundred percent knockdowns nuts, and then the speed increases with the life leech is pretty pretty neat, I think. Um and then archery skill, what's that? That just makes it faster, right? Oh, that can stun. You got an 80% chance of stunning your target um, when, when you shoot them. Plus increase, 50% increased damage. Plus you're getting 200% sneak damage. And if you take the hunter perk, you're going to get another 200%. So now you're 450% damage when you sneak. Um, if you get headshots, another 30. Um, increases rounds per minute by 75. So it's like... It, it, it's like just making everything so much more powerful, you know, when you're 100 skill, um, your fire speed is going up, your damage is going up, you're ignoring 40% of target's armor, uh, leg shots will slow them down, sneak it shots have a 20% chance of knockdown, so you're getting pretty powerful sneaky build with the archery. Um, so this is all your like attack skills and athletics and then when you go into the, the perks tree this is more like your crafting line and a couple other uh like it says skill related perks um so you have your generic crafting here so like if you're going to craft any armor you're going to put points into armor crafting and this is where like the difference between playing with a friend or a couple friends you can have one of your buddies be like all right you be the armor crafter I'll be the gun crafter, you know, oh, I'm going builder, so I'll be the tool crafter, you know, I'll be the range, or the melee weapon crafter, so you can kind of split this up a little bit, so you don't have to spend 25 points and everything, but if you're playing by yourself, eventually you're going to want all this stuff anyway, unless, unless you're just going melee, then you don't need gun crafting, you know, you're just, you're, you're definitely always going to need tool crafting, you're going to need science crafting to craft mods. You're going to need armor crafting to craft better armor. Um, but, you know, you can split it up if you're with a team. So how this works is if you look, it 
you can craft different quality armors. And then also what's important is it no longer degrades if you're below 11. So basically here at tier 5 you'll be able to craft level 61 armor. But it won't decrease past 51 when you repair it. So every time you repair something in Darkness Falls you see this little number and the color underneath. So this is tier 1, this is tier 3, this is tier 2. If I was to repair that, that would drop down 5 points to 24. Repair it again, it drops down to the next tier of 19. That That's going to affect, on a lot of weapons, the damage that it can do. Um, also will affect, uh, modify how many uh, mods you can put into it. Modify. Yeah, so I think 33, you can have three mod slots. 40 to 49, you can have four, and then 55, 60, six mod slots, all the way up to max level of 80. 80 is the max level that you can have something that has eight slots in it. So the, the, the quality of the item is important for the increase of modifier slots, and for a lot of items, it'll actually increase the damage, or maybe like the attacks per minute, or whatever. You gotta look at the different things. Um, but it will increase some items uh, like laser pistols. I know for a fact will increase the damage as the tier is higher. So uh, the, the ability to craft higher tiers. Um, where were we? The ability to craft higher tiers is important and the ability to keep it from degrading is important as well, especially for things you're going to use a lot like tools, pickaxes. Your primary weapons whatever they are uh, is definitely going to be important so yeah so that's basically all this armor gun science for mods tool crafting now science is needed for a lot of different things a lot of the stuff interacts like to make workbenches you need level two uh, tool crafting you know so it's all interacting with each other too um, as you go down you have some skill stuff lock picking I never found a use for that I think that's just it's it's too hard uh, you never have lock picks and maybe if they made it so you could craft lock picks or whatever uh, you can craft lock picks there um, but I never use them I just bang open safes or whatever uh, with a crowbar or a pickaxe a survivor to decrease food usage I used to think this was a good thing to invest points in I no longer do I'd rather just get the food and eat the food because you need the wellness anyway um, Especially if you're the type of player that dies a lot, you're going to need to constantly be eating food to get wellness. So the faster your food actually goes down, the better off you'll be to eat more food and get more wellness to maximize your hit points. Uh, if you don't die a lot, then this could be good, but it's not a priority. Pack Mule, very important. Definitely a priority. Um, get these as soon as you can afford to get them. If you don't have to save your points to unlock, you know, whatever it is, armor or tools or uh, whatever the thing is that you want, as soon as you have some extra points, put it in Pack Mule. I would always suggest putting your first one, one or two points into Pack Mule just so you can get around. Better Barter is the thing that allows you to see the special stash in Traders. Definitely important as well as getting a better deal, selling, buying and selling. Money is Dukes are important in Darkness Falls. You will need dukes to buy the generic schematics that I showed you earlier. You're going to need dukes to buy solar panels. You're going to need dukes to buy uh, fusion forges from Caitlyn. You're going to need dukes to buy uh, laser workbenches so you can get them earlier. Um, you're going to need dukes to buy... Uh, what else do you need dukes to buy? Just, just all the stuff from the crafters. So that's going to be important also to see their special stash to get all that stuff that I was just talking about. Uh, I just did a playthrough. I had five five of this and still could not see solar cells or solar banks or any of that stuff. And it wasn't until I put three more points in the charismatic nature, even though the charismatic nature does not say you get more special stash stuff. As soon as I put three points into it, I was standing next to the trader. She had no solar stuff for sale. I put three points into this plus five five of the other one and boom, she had... Uh, solar panels for sale so this definitely affects the special sta stash as well um, <clears throat> da, 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 da. so better barter is kind of important but more so towards late game 
Um, and you got stuff like do-it-yourself, you know, being able to craft mechanical parts. And as you can see, you need science crafting three for that, science crafting four for this. Being able to craft insulators is important end game. You need those, I think you need those to make uh, electrical parts, which is used to make um, laser pistol and laser rifle ammo. Pretty sure be wrong about that and i'm not gonna bother to check right now um but you know you'll know if you want to spend points in that or not that's all kind of like end game you know you got stuff like electric traps workbenches you know if you don't pick see see where it says no labor class if you do not pick the labor class you don't have to pick the labor class to get advanced forges you can unlock it by spending a point here but you have to uh you have to have level 50 whereas you can get the advanced forge if you pick the labor class at level 20 so that's one of the benefits of picking a class um, depending on what you want out of it you know simple stuff like plumbing allows you to make a working sink where you can collect water from it kitchens allows you to make a working oven which basically means you don't need fuel anymore and you have more recipes like the working oven is even better than the chem station for making glue. It's the best conversion of bones to glue in the game. So you're eventually going to want a working oven at level 25, drop a point in it. You know, the, the water, you don't have to have that. I could show you ways of having a source of water that's near your base if you're not near a natural source of water. Coil gun crafting. So you have normal gun crafting in this game. And then once you're past like your AKs and your M1, A1, 41s, whatever that rifle is, <laughs> um, you know, your shotguns, all your normal vanilla guns, they have something called coil guns now, which like you'll be like, whoa, the damage increase is incredible. Um, but in order to craft them, you need what? Level 50 and then 75, you can make the s rifle and the sniper. Um, a level 50 you can make the uh, pistol um, and I think the pistol yeah the pistol uses 44 coil rounds and then this uses the uh, 7.62 coil rounds the the coil guns are dropped from like military mobs and stuff like that the parts for them the coil rounds are pretty intense to make they're not it's not simple it's not like gunpowder brass and some lead they're they're going to make you go out and uh farm up plastics and all kinds of other stuff and electrical parts and yada 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 so uh, it's definitely a process to make the weapons but the progression system is basically um vanilla vanilla guns and then coil guns coil rifles and then you start getting into lasers so laser pistols at like uh, 75 to 100 and then like um, uh, level I think 150 you can start crafting laser uh, rifles and stuff like that and they get exponentially more powerful and then laser rifles are pretty pretty OP um, yeah but all your all the rest of your stuff is down here um, marksman you know rifle crafting um, AR-57, butchering tools. Butchering tools you can actually get from books. So I wouldn't worry about putting any points into them. Um, basic farming tips you can get from books as well. Bicycles and mini bikes you can get from books as well as um, from the classes. Uh, I think everything else you need to... Well, I don't know. Some of, the, some of these weapons you might be able to get from books as well. As long as you have gun crafting to, you know, meet the other requirements of, like, gun crafting 3. And that's pretty much it for this. Oh, there is one more, the completionist. The completionist, where did you go? There it is. So, this is, like, end game goal here. So, you get 25% extra experience. Of course, by the time you get this, you don't really care about experience anymore. Never suffer ill effects from death. Not that big of a deal. Increased crafting tier by two for all future technology items is a big deal. So future technology items when you're crafting stuff like uh, laser pistols and laser rifles, it allows you to have a higher level. 
um, but you have to complete all the classes and have all their masteries and have a technology crafting perk. Skipping over to classes because I'm going to go straight to technology and then I'm going to clip this video and I'm starting to wind down my my throat's starting to get dry from all this talking and not just dry but hurting and I think I'm going to call it a night for now and then I'll pick up on the classes tomorrow but I do want to get into technology since we just hit that so we did this line we did this line I'll get into all these classes um, and then which ones I think are the better starters and what's the pros and cons uh, but first let me get a technology so when you hit level 75 you can unlock this one player level 75 so you can start unlocking the multi-tool energy cells and enriched uranium at level 75 you need to craft a book called the future is now a lot of people get hung up on that because they don't understand how to they don't understand how to unlock that because you can't just click it for a point you have to craft this book and read it um, I'll get into crafting these uh, I think like the paper to ink after I talk about classes but the main thing here you need is research notes which are dropped only and which you get from higher level areas um, which I'll get into later but just know that in order to get the biotech skills or the um, uh, the future tech skills you need the future is now also another tip I didn't realize for a while when you read the futures now it unlocks this one and then you can once you unlock this with technology one basically future now is unlocks this so when you when you read the book it unlocks this one required level 75 it doesn't tell you they should have you must read the futures now or something they need to put up here that's where a lot of people get confused once you have that unlocked you can buy these once you hit the level requirement but here's the tip if you make multiple of the futures now and you eat it, it'll unlock this one. You eat the next the futures now book, it unlocks this one. You eat the next one, it unlocks. So you don't need to waste your points on these. You can just keep crafting the futures now. You craft five of them, eat them all. You can eat them all before you're even the level, and then as you hit the level, it'll unlock. The big turning point here is. Um, when you can make a laser workbench but by then you will probably have already bought one from Caitlin um, the laser battery recipe is a big deal what laser battery is it allows um, there's a monster called demons in the game which I'll show you later but they have a huge regen you can't really kill them you can't your damage output has to be immense to not only do damage to them but to beat the amount of hit points they regen they regen like very very fast Unless you have a laser battery in your melee weapon, and then when you hit them, it disables the regen. So, and then you can also, it also unlocks the power hammer and plasma axe um, recipes. It's basically like a hammer and an axe. It just gives you some more weapons to play with. So that's a good turning point for melee at level 100. But the big turning point, and this is what I consider kind of like end game right here, is when you hit 125. This uh, allows you to make nanites, <laughs> unlocks power armor, which allows you to craft the best armor in the game. Uh, up until this point, you probably will already have, if you do everything right, you'll have a full set of power armor by the time you're able to even craft it just from drops. But this will start letting you craft it. And then when you can craft it, you can increase the quality of it and then get max level power armor and all that stuff. So you have good power armor. But the big thing here is nanites, because once you get nanites, that's what you need to craft the shots that you need to take for this. So basically, you don't put skill points in this. You need um, you need to craft shots for it. You need uh, the, the crafting thing opens up at 125 from the technology crafting. You can either get biological boost or you can get techno technological boost. You cannot have both. If you look at the skill points, it says must be 125, must have technology one unlocked and must have no tech boost. So you cannot have tech boost. If you look at tech boost, it says you cannot have bio boost. So basically you're mutating your body. Nanites will 
nanites are like futuristic and give you these two benefits or you can get like uh, demon nanites from killing demons and then you get uh, power similar to to the demons so you get accelerated regen uh, you can run faster um, <clears throat> that's a big turning point so for me I like the biological boost because of the gotta go fast it increases your uh, walk speed by 50% which is nice but increases your run speed by 100% and then increases your regeneration so basically you can run forever and you run twice as fast that's beautiful to me right there that that alone is just the best accelerated healing uh, the developer of this mod has been nerfing steadily every release uh, it started out uh, well let me show you what it does now regenerates 10 hit points per second remember you can only have 300 hit points unless you're in here so you'll only have 300 hit points for 30 seconds so basically you're going to regenerate 300 hit points in 30 seconds um, with this so if something can't kill you within 30 seconds you'll never die that's and and you always be topped out um, that's when he started nerfing it so it was up to a hundred percent of your max hit points and then he nerfed it down to 90 percent then he nerfed it down to 75 percent in the last build this build that he just put out he nerfed it down to 50 percent um, so basically it's not as good now because in order to even regen you have to be at like 150. Like right now, if I got hit, I would start regening, but it would stop once I hit 150. So basically, if you get this, it's no good unless you kind of... I mean, it's it'll keep you from dying really fast, but, um, you know, the high-end demons can, can hit you, can kill you when you're half health. And I don't know, three, four hits, five hits, something like that. A behemoth could probably one-shot you at 150%. So it kind of, you know, really took the wind out when he nerfed that, but it's still pretty good. Um, it still gives you 50% chance to heal broken bones and arms and stuff like that. Um, the technological boost, I was never very big on it. This just increases, increases your general stamina regen and gives you 50 health. I, I think this needs to be more. Like, So I have 350 instead of 300. That's not a big deal. I think this should be another 100 health, in my opinion, to make that, um, you know, compare to the biological tree. Transhuman, um, increase your physical damage resistance by 10%, so it makes you a little tougher. Uh, increase your heat and cold resistance, that's kind of meh. Uh, increase your block damage and harvest amount by 5% for mining tools, that's such a small... It feels like such a small amount to increase uh, the harvest amount. I think that should be like 20%, 30%, maybe even 50% to make it worthwhile. So if you wanted to be like a miner, this would be the one you take. Increase melee weapon damage by 5%. That's it. That's all it's doing is 5%. You're getting 75% from your other skill trees. This end game thing only gives you 5%. So unless i'm reading this one wrong and interpreting it wrong the technological boost just doesn't compare to the biological boost to me um 10 of your damage resistance i'm usually at like 65 70 armor at end game 10 of that gives you another seven so that would put me you know if i'm at 65 well if i'm at 60 that'd be another six armor right that's not that great unless I'm doing my math wrong I don't know I just feel like technically I feel like biological boost is in a good position I, I wish accelerated healing was still at like 75% that felt like a good I think 50 is too low 75 was good but I think this needs to get bumped up a little bit in my opinion uh, for end game and I would really like to see some more end 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 game stuff but yeah it's really cool when you get to this part you start becoming really powerful and then beyond that, you uh, you get your laser pistols. You can start crafting them. By you know, by the time you hit this area, you already have laser pistols from drops. Um, but this lets you craft them, so you get better. And then end end game level 175, you can start uh, creating. You can start crafting laser rifles. Laser rifles do not drop. You can craft the battery mod, which saves you 50% of your ammo, and then it gives entity. It gives you penetration to your laser rifle. 
And that's kind of the end game uh, stuff there where you're super powerful. You're in the technology, uh, you're going into the labs and exploring, getting all this technology and stuff like that. And you're injecting yourself with shots and biological boosts. And that is the skill system except for the classes, which I'm going to take a break now because I've been going at this for a while and my throat is, I don't know if you can hear it, getting pretty, pretty cracky from all this talking. So I'm going to take a break, rest my vocal cords, and I'll pick up on this later and we'll discuss the, uh, the, the classes. We'll get into the in-depth detail of what each class gives you, why it's good, why it's bad, and my opinions on each as a starter option. So let's go over the classes. But before I do, after I pause the video uh, discussing the skill sets, I was thinking to myself uh, about yucca fruits. And I was like, well, they're not really spelled the way they're spelled. That wouldn't be a long U. And then I was thinking, well, you know, I never heard anybody actually say that, I don't think. So I might be mispronouncing it. So I looked it up. And sure enough, I was mispronouncing it. So it's yucca fruit. Yucca. Like yucca, yucca, yucca. Anyway, it's yucca. Yucca fruit. So I'll probably continue saying yucca fruit because that's what I've always been saying in my head and whenever I talked about it. So it would probably be a hard habit to break. But, you know, I'm not from the southwest is where they grow. So uh, I've never actually heard anybody say that before but they are a beneficial fruit they are the magic desert fruit in this game anyway so on to skills skills okay so we covered action skills perks we covered technology which you get later now let's talk about the classes which makes this mod very unique where it has classes now as i said before you will have, eventually, if you play the game all the way through, you'll have all the classes. You'll have all the masteries to each class, and you'll be able to get the completionist done. Um, but when you start out, you need to pick a class. You get one blank class paper. In this instance, I picked mechanic, and I think that's the strongest start. And I said that the uh, first four here, I think, are the strongest or best starters. Farmer, hunter, labor, and mechanic. Scavenger, scientist, and security, I think, are like uh, second tier. And then survivalist, I just think, does not compare it to any of the other ones as far as what it offers you for starting out. Um, so let's go through each one. Uh, let's go backwards. Let's start from the weakest and go towards the strongest. So let's start with survivalist. Survivalist gives you increased disease resistance. Those guys are down there lighting stuff up. Um, it, it gives you increased disease resistance and every minute you have a 10% chance to shrug off illnesses after five points. I mean, that's great for endgame, but when you're starting out, you know, just buy honey. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not that great, uh, self-medicated, your drugs are 50% more efficient and you don't get dehydrated from them. I'm not even sure what the withdrawal symptoms, I don't know if I've ever had a withdrawal symptom, at least not that I realized when I was using meds. Um, I mean, this is great, but again, the end game, you don't even have meds when you get started. Well insulated, uh, grants 25 insulation against both heat and cold. Now this is something I've been trying to figure out, but I don't know, and nobody seemed to have the answer for me when I asked. And I should have asked the developer when I had the opportunity to talk to him. I wish I did, but I forgot to ask him this. What, what is heat and cold res resistance in Darkness Falls? As far as I know, it's the same as, um, same as in vanilla, which it just affects how much, uh, food and water, um, you consume so i don't know if it gives like damage immunity or something like that to like maybe the fireballs that the demons launch or anything like that so i don't know i doubt it i've never seen it uh any benefit to it other than assuming that it lowers your food and water con consumption so this in my opinion unless i'm ignorant about the topic doesn't really offer too much uh, master survivalist is nice though the mastery but then again the masteries are hard to uh hard to come by maybe i should probably have started with how you get these classes well, i'll do it after since i already started but um 
the mastery gives you a large backpack which is nice it's the final backpack uh, that you need to maximize your inventory space mega crush is a crafting recipe for food it's a drink that allows you to run fast um, jerky is a great food it does not give you any wellness but allows you to convert meat which is readily available into jerky which it's not like uh, i think it gives you like 20 or 30 food so it's not like one meat and it's only i think it's like one meat so it's not like five meat gives you five or ten food like one meat gives you 20 or 30 or something like that actually let me summon it since i keep forgetting i am in creative mode for the purpose of this video so it's not like i can't just go jerky let's see what it gives 20 and it gives 20 water and it heals you by five so it's a semi heal gives you a nice chunk of food and it gives you water and it costs no water to make which is the weird thing how does drying out meat give you food jerky jerky needs one raw meat that's it no sticks no nothing else per one meat you get 20 food and 10 water that is that's what makes that so powerful however you know i think in my opinion if you wanted you sh this should be down here i think jerky should be within the things that you get that you learn when you start it if they put jerky in with here then this would be more of a survivalist class um because now as a starter you have this awesome food that you can create um let you create survival torch which isn't that big of a deal as far as i know it's just a it's it's basically a torch that doesn't attract zombies Woohoo! you know like like you really care too much about that um i guess it's good if you're gonna take hunter and be stealth and you want to hold a torch i don't know i don't know if there's anything else to that but the um the lantern also doesn't attract zombies so you know you can there's other things in the game that can replace that the m4a1 you can craft which is nice it's a nice uh, automatic weapon titanium machetes are nice for collecting um meat and things like that um and then cloth uh tier for cloth leather scrap iron and steel hmm that's interesting it gives you all the all the uh if you're going to be an armor crafter you you want this um but only up to steel not for titanium that's interesting so i don't think this is a great start because of that i think this would be a much better option if they took the jerky oh and the radio is weird i skipped the radio the radio is just like a thing you can create to get those little notes that tells you to like kill five female whatever's you know the notes that i personally you can't sell them so I, I actually when i get them i either drop them or scrap them in the paper i never do those mini quests i just don't find the reward from those mini quests to have or hold any kind of value for the time that you put into them um, so like if those mini quests could be worked on then the radio might be uh, worth it because then you can it's just a crafting station to craft those quests so you can get them somewhere else other than dropping them all right, so let's go on to security. Security is an absolutely marvelous, marvelous class. But it doesn't help you starting as much. Um, it's more of a melee uh, build. So you get Fury of Blues, which gives you 25% melee attack speed. So this is like, this is a must to complement any melee build. If you want to do pure melee, you might want to start with this. I don't know um, if we're make it your second or third pick usually this is my third or fourth pick when i start getting towards end game and i'm trying to flush out my character uh, to make it more powerful i usually take this so you get 25 percent attack speed on melee you get pain tolerance which is 25 percent reduced hit point which is which is big it's basically 25 armor it's the same thing um and, and it even helps you better than armor because it works against i think uh fire and all that stuff no chance to get stunned, which is a big thing. Getting stunned is uh, very bad when you have big, tough, modded monsters hitting you, and some of them can two, three shot you. Um, you don't want to get stunned. You can still get knocked down, though. Armor Specialist, another beautiful thing that I love because it reduces your mobility penalty of armor by 3% per piece. And I'm, I don't know, uh, armor, steel armor, let's look that up. I think that might be the full penalty of steel armor.
Hmm. I could type correctly. So let's see. We got steel. We got some titanium. Got some, let's just break out some different armors here. Padded leather. And power armor. So here's the ranking of the armor. You got padded. What's this? What's the hazmat. You have padded and then leather. So let's see. No mobility. Um, no mobility on padded. You have three mobility on leather. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't nowhere near reduce, but it basically will make leather have no penalty. Um, scrap instead of seven, you'll be at what four. Um, Instead of seven, you'll be at four, and then instead of six for titanium, you'll be at uh, three, and then, yeah, that's what it does. So when you get power armor, which is the best armor in the game, <clears throat> it completely negates the mobility penalty, so you have no mobility penalty. Um, for, for any of the heavier armors, it, obviously it's not going to reduce it a lot, but it's noticeable. Um, so this is also a tier of the armors. I might as well go through that, kind of interrupt the class breakdown. Um, these are all vanilla, and then you have titanium, which is a new ore. Um, it's the it's only ore that they added to this game, titanium ore, and I can get into that later, but then you can make titanium armor. And then end game, power armor, which protects you from radiation and all that stuff, which I'll discuss later on. But it also gives you really good stats in comparison to uh, steel like, as you can see, it's one less armor rating, but it gives you better mobility, less noise, uh, stamina. If I think it also has a... It used to, or it still does, have an also added benefit to it to make you more resistant. So there's like a buff you get when you have a full set on. And that buff protects you from the radiation uh, in, the, in the wasteland. And I think it also reduces, like, damage or something. I was never able to get... And then again, that's another thing I wish... Uh, I would have asked the developer if it if it had any extra abilities because some people some more experienced people in the game You know last year had told me that it does help uh, with damage reductions and stuff like that, so um, But basically power armor is the best ar armor in a game It can be crafted late game, but when you first get it it comes off of drops from demons So anyway back to the classes. Sorry for that interruption. So armor specialist you get the worn, uh, the, the movement penalty, so you're running around faster, which is nice. You get the stamina penalty, so you're, you're getting even more stamina regen now. Um, for walking and running. Um, and then master security, you get the tactical rigging, which is a mod, I think for your legs or your chest, but that's a inventory expansion. So that's another piece to your maxing out your inventory. Um military armor um you can craft titanium armor um the spiked the titanium spiked club which is the club uh if you're going like melee blunt you're going to want that titanium spike club that thing's awesome m60s are obviously one of the best vanilla as far as damage output uh guns you can utilize m60s as demon killers in this game uh, they're not as powerful as like coil weapons and lasers obviously but because they have such a large clip and uh, you can shoot them so fast, you can, you know, kill a demon, maybe one or two demons with a clip. Um, you know, that, that used to be my tactic. I used to get at two or three M60s and then I'd use them and I'd just run up to the demons and spray them in the face and take them out before they could take me out. Um, increased crafting tier for automatic weapons. That's it. When you make the M60s, you're good. Um, for military armor and titanium armor so that's going this is an armor crafting mastery m60 mastery and melee club mastery is basically what you're going to want that for uh scientists okay so now we're getting into kind of more viable starts so scientists demolitions expert right so you're going to start uh i i should do i never done a playthrough for of demolitions i should do that but you're going to be able to craft, I think. Let's see. Increase craft pipe bombs and dynamite. Time charges. Grenades. High explosive rockets. And you can craft 
flamethrowers. Um, yeah, so I guess this is like explosive flamethrower build, which I've never run through myself. I just don't find explosives that great. Uh, maybe if they didn't damage you when you shot them, because a lot of times the zombies get close to you and then what do you do? Um, but it increases, obviously, your damage, reload speed, aim, uh, dismemberment chance, um, and gives you all the explosives to craft. So if you want to be, like, a bomb guy, dynamite, rocket launcher, stuff like that, this is this is where you want to go. Um, but most people get scientists for, yeah, science. Because this locks the number one, right there, chemistry station. Also unlocks gas cans, which if you're using the auger, you're going to go through a lot of gas. Other than that, just scrapping cars and stuff will give you enough gas for everything. Grain alcohol, not a big deal. You get a ton of that later on. Acid, always a problem, even in vanilla. Um, but I usually don't have a hard time with acid. I'm not crafting too much stuff that needs a lot of acid. Um, but being able to craft it is a good thing. Um, normal ammo, what's that mean? So all the ammo in this game is kind of locked behind. Being able to craft it is locked. So unless you unlock science or um it's called weekly reloading weekly you can find these books these are one of the things that can be unlocked with books so as you're going through looting this is a library right here you go through and loot this library um you can unlock it you you read one reloading weekly it'll unlock that you find another one and read it it'll unlock that so you don't need to find Reloading weekly one, and then you need to find a reloading week. Just you find reloading weekly four times, and you eat it four times, and you unlock them all. Um, but there is the fact that you need gun crafting three, one, two, three, and three to make these. But it's nine millimeter bullets, shotgun shells, six point seven two, seven point six two. You know all the different vanilla um, weapons come from that, or come from science. Yeah, science allows you to unlock, it just instantly unlocks normal ammo for you. And it unlocks the chemistry station, which you're going to need for gunpowder. It unlocks junk batons, which is like a lesser, they added a lesser um, yeah, baton, the stun baton, into the game. Um, which is nice, so you have a beginning uh, stun baton. It looks like you can make some mines too, which I never use. Um, and then flaming arrows and bolts. Random miscellaneous stuff like uh, my more mines and military fiber. Um, then you can craft the normal stun batons, um, and then you can craft exploding arrows and bolts, and then you can craft battery bags. So this stuff is not that; it's pretty niche. It's not that big of a deal. Um, once you get once you get the first point in this, usually I just put one point in this and I move on just for all the just really for the chemistry station and normal ammo which a lot of times I'm not even playing a normal ammo build uh, physician is really good and this is another reason why a lot of people take this it doubles your healing so those little cheap 15 hit point um, bandages will now be 30 hit point bandages and in this game all healing is instant too so when you when you use a healing item, like a bandage, it's not like do, do, do over time. You just you heal. As long as you don't have like a dot on you or something causing damage to you, you'll just take the full health. Same with eating. When you eat or when you heal, it's instantaneous. They, <clears throat> excuse me, if they remove the sit there and kind of have it tick up and wait and you got to wait to eat again. You just sit there and spam your food or sit there and spam your bandages if you want to get up to, uh, up to health. And I actually kind of like that. Um... Master Scientist. Oh wait, there might have been more in this. Yeah, you can craft different different things. First aid bandage, mortar pest, pestle, which you can also learn from farming. Um, medical healing used on yourself is 20, 25% more efficient. Yeah, so that's, there's the 50% more efficient. Three cogs. Fort bites are nice. Um, when healing others, you receive the same benefit. So when you heal somebody else, you get healed too, which is nice. It's kind of weird, but I'm usually not playing in that place of a team. Um, unlocks Plasma Baton, which is the third tier of Baton. It's a very great Baton, especially if you're doing uh, it's a club. It's considered a club, so it has all that 100% knockdown stuff. 
and it has the addition to stun. So this is, you have a chunk baton, a normal baton that you find in vanilla, and this is your more advanced baton. Uh, so it allows you to create that. Uh, advanced healing items, hazmat suit and biofuel recipes. Um, hazmat suits, you can get them from drops if they're difficult if you don't know how to get them or where to get them. So if you're not watching this guide and you're just doing your own playthrough, you're probably going to have a hard time gathering up hazmat suits and getting all the pieces. So this could be nice being able to craft them. You need hazmat suits to take no damage in the wasteland, so um, they're, they're kind of important. And I'll get into that later. I don't want to sit here and talk about the wasteland yet. Um, increased crafting tier for batons, combat axes, bladed weapons, spears, flamethrowers, and rocket launchers. Now, this is weird, isn't it? Oh, no. No, that's not weird, because this is the rocket launcher build. I forgot. So, yeah, you get increased crafting for all that stuff. But does how does that help you start? Other than the chem station, not that big of a deal. And there's a lot of other reasons to take other things more and kind of just sacrifice without the chem station. Because you can make... I think you can make gunpowder without the chem station. You don't need the chem station. I think they have it set up. So you could do everything without the chem station. So you need a chemistry station for this recipe, see? So to have it cost one coal, one nitrous, uh, one uh, nitrate powder, um, you need the chem station. But you can also craft it at the mortar and pestle, right? But it costs double. And then you can also craft it out of your inventory, but it costs quadruple. So, you know, if you take farmer or scientist, you'll you'll get a reduction in your cost to make gunpowder. Uh, the chem station just gives it an extra reduced cost, and you'll find that with everything. So, glue, right? Look at all the recipes for glue. You, you can make, that's why when you type something, you'll see multiple recipes. That usually means there's multiple ways to, or, or multiple methods to make it, and each one has a different result, so... If you make glue out of a bowl of sap in a campfire with a cooking pot, it's going to cost four bowls of sap. If you make it out of bones and murky water in a campfire and cooking pot, it's going to cost seven bones and one murky water. If you make it out of a chemistry station, it's only going to cost you five, so it's a two reduction of bones. If you make it in this, it only costs two bones. So this, whatever this is, is the most efficient for boons. What is that? Oh, the working oven. And you need a lead car battery in the working oven. So, yeah, you gotta look at the different recipes um, for efficiencies. The chem station, I don't know if there's anything you can't create with the chem station. I'm trying to think, but all the, all, I never get stuck 100% needing the chem station. I, there's always a way around it. It just costs more. And one of the things that really kills me without the chem station is it dies um, which are needed for getting the classes in the first place so having a chem station will allow you to access the, the other classes quicker so that's the other thing like if you take a chem station you'll be able to quick more quickly access get access to the other classes and I'll get into that later after we discuss the classes I'll talk about how to get the classes and then I'll, we'll, we'll go in and we'll get into that like I said, there's a lot to this game. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. And I know this video is just a lot of blah 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 talking, but it's the only way to convey this information. There's no shortcuts to it. Either that or learning it and playing it and keeping it all in your in your head. Um, Alright, so that was Scientist. So let's move on to Scavenger. Scavenger lets you sell stuff and get uh, multiple quest rewards when you do vendor quests and it also it doesn't say it but it does I did confirm my last playthrough it does help with the secret stash I, I had 5-5 five, five of the um, better barter which is the thing that says allows you to access the vendor secret stash but the vendor would not sell me solar panels and stuff like that I, I, tr I tried 20 times 20 vendor resets and nothing was showing up and I was just getting extremely irritated and I had some extra points and I had this class unlocked so I I think I might have had one point in it and I dumped two more points into it got it to three of five and 
reach out standing right there i checked that there was nothing i put points in it checked and boom solar panels were for sale and solar banks so this doesn't say it but it definitely helps with opening up the tiers so i would recommend five five of this five five of better barter if you want to buy the uh, secret stash stuff from the vendors but this isn't needed for starting out i mean you know 25 percent better deal selling sure i mean making money in the beginning is going to help you. you can buy a lot of stuff you can buy mods you can buy gears from the vendor you can sell stuff and i'll get into well maybe i should get into what you can and can't buy and sell now or what you should yeah so took a little break on the classes here since we're talking about selling and no 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 stay on track ah it's so hard there's so much there's so much information i'll do that next i'll go back into the trader after we're done with the classes and we'll discuss some, some additional things about the trader and sell them okay so this doesn't really help you uh as much um starting out um treasures of the dead you know adds this is like the magazines from vanilla adds jewelry gem mineral mineral water is nice to be able to craft that is actually pretty nice um but but water is not a problem you can just make boiled wa water at a uh, campfire like so it's not really you know oh great you don't have to click boiled water three times you can just click a mineral water once you know it's it's not that big of a deal it's not helping you that much and finding extra resources is nice but it's not helping you lucky looter now this is the one that most people will start with this um but again darkness falls follows the same method for game stage and looting as uh, vanilla so lucky looter is not as effective as um in the beginning early game stages as it is in the later game stages and i'll go into that after i show you this so what's it do um i think we got to read each one here so this one increases the amount of duke's ammo you find as well as it put it steps up your loot bonus all the way to 100 percent. but you get dukes and ammo you get brass and lead you start getting more um, junk and food. You start getting more medical items. And then this one increases gems. And the big one here is the 20% chance to drop from zombies. That's huge because a lot of the end, end game loot comes from zombie drops. Like when you're fighting demons and behemoths and stuff like that. The end game loot is a rare chance to drop from the bags that drop from those demons. So if you have a higher percent chance to for those zombies to drop a bag then you have a much higher chance of getting those rare items um so this one's important very important extreme like this is one of the most important end game ones in my opinion but it's absolutely end game is where it's important it's not as important in the beginning of the game also a lot of people jump on this in the beginning so they can get their loot bonus as 100 percent to your loot bonus now I'm not sure loot bonus I think it's just how much loot is in the container that when you loot it I could be wrong on this it's either how much loot is in the container or the quality of the items or the tier of the items so yeah you know, I'm explaining some vanilla here but you have a game stage and how the game works is like from game stage 1 to say 10 or 1 to 20 you're going to only get this type of stuff blunder buses you know sp stone spears you're, you're not going to get anything better than that until your game stage is higher so this doesn't say it increases your game stage it says it increases your loot bonus which makes me think that it's going to uh just give you more loot not better loot your game stage is still going to reflect the uh, quality of loot so great you get two blunderbusses now whoop 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 de whoop um, but a lot of people go for this because their play style is i want to get into a poi i want to climb up on the roof and get that box and you know i'm a master of where all the loot boxes are and all the pois and i can just slip in there real quick and grab them and go and i can get tons of loot and i can get a full set of armor and all kinds of weapons and um but me i don't like it because the game stage hinders you um, so this is great when you're higher game stage, like 50 plus to me, but, uh, before that, yeah, you know, but you know, it, it's a personal option. It depends on your play style. Oh. 
sorry, phone call. And, um, let's see, so, scavenger here. Sorry. Spam call to, wasn't even worth anything. Those robocallers gotta end. How can, how can our government let that happen? Anyway, um, master scavenger unlocks desert vulture recipe, which is a nice, uh, pistol. Um, I'm not really a big pistol user, so that hold, doesn't hold a lot of value to me. Bonus gain from wasteland treasure by 10. Increases loot drops by 10%, which is a nice. So you get 20 from this, 10 from that. That's 30% total once you get the mastery. And increases pistols by 10. So if you're a pistol user or a pistol crafter uh, or looter, this is a good one. It's, a, it's an okay start, but like I said, I, put, I rate this as second tier. It's uh, possible um, to start with this, and some people do, but I don't think it's as good as the top tier of these. All right, so mechanic. And again, this is the one that I feel is currently the strongest start uh, for many reasons, uh, but also it's one of those reasons I was talking to the developer and he's going to nerf it, so uh, we'll see. We will see, but I still think it's a strong start. Even if he nerfs it, it'll still be a strong start. Um, so salvage operations, this allows you to harvest faster and get more resources, which is nice. Salvaging is when you're using the wrench on cars to get the various things. So that's nice. And when you do this quest, I didn't put any points into this. So I instantly got three of them just by doing the quest. So later on when I'm higher level and have some spare points, I can knock out the other two. No big deal. So this is a nice boost because it gives you those points right away. You can craft wrenches and craft steel clubs so and then also if you want to be a melee club user this is a good way of starting out with that because steel clubs are a nice uh, melee and you, you can steel club now i don't go steel club route myself but let me see what you need to create it metal workstation welding torch so by level 10 you could have you could be crafting your own steel clubs if you did everything right. Um, most likely you're probably going to want to buy one from the vendor or try to find one in loot because you have to get the metal workstation which means you need tools level 2 and then so you need 4 points, 2 in tools level 2, 2 in workstations um, and then you also need to have found or bought a welding torch from the vendor to be able to use it and you also need steel. Um, leather you can get, duct tape you can get easily steel is going to be the hard part but i know how to find steel on day one and i can show you that and it works well with this class of scavenging steel um i guess i could show you that now since we're talking about it and there's some right here but one of the tricks to get steel on day one is doo -doo 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 -doo, can you guess it i'm looking i'm looking right at it i'm looking right at it is it the cars nope really let me go down to this one still just as loud uh, these lampposts if you if you scavenge these lampposts you can get steel don't oh, have invisibility on if you scavenge these lampposts one steel two steel four steel per lamppost on that one so you can get three I think three to five steel just by knocking out these lampposts and they're they're on a lot of POIs throughout the city so as you're walking through the city yeah, you, know, you just nerd pull up the lamppost and scavenge it, and bang, you got steel on day one, forged steel. Um, so workbenches and disabled workbenches, as I mentioned earlier, like in the trader station, you can usually find some in the trader station. Like they have a working one here, so I don't want to dismantle it. But if that was non-working, you could dismantle that for uh, forged iron. And then you could use light lamp posts for forged steel. There's other things that give you forged steel. I forget what they are. Uh, I always just go for lamp posts because they're usually easy to find and easy to access, and you don't have to go through any zombies. <laughs> yeah. So like right now, I've just doing this tutorial, not even trying. I found 46 forged iron, and I have nine forged steel. So steel what is it, club. I could type steel club. Halfway there already to a steel club that I can craft myself at level 10. Back to classes. <laughs> Try not to get off subject, but this pertains to the class. Alright, so, um... Let's see. 
where were we at here? Du -du -du -du. Unlock Steel Club. What's this one? Unlocks the Ratchet. So that once you get uh, level 20, you can craft a Ratchet, which is a better wrench, basically. Uh, Grease Monkey. This is another great reason why it starts. You will not have any vehicles unless you take Mechanic or you find one. And I don't think you can even find them. I've never... I don't think I've ever found a bike in Darkness Falls. So this is uh, the only way you're getting a bike is if you buy it from a vendor or you know somebody that has Grease Monkey or you take Grease Monkey yourself. So this is one of the reasons why it's one of the strongest starts. You're not dependent on anything else for mobility for vehicles because at level one, you can create bikes at level 10, you can make mini bikes and a lot of, unless I need to move fast I just skip the bike and just wait until level 10 to work on uh, mini bikes and then eventually you can make um, all the other vehicles so this just being able to make mini bike and bicycle starting out and not having to be reliant on anything or trying to find it from a vendor and leaving up the chance is a uh, very very absolute best one of the best starters so you're already able to scavenge Right, so you're getting some of the harder to get materials to find places, electrical parts, mechanical parts, pipes, uh, springs, um, cloth, leather, you're getting gas, you're getting oil for re repair kits, there's how else do you get oil, you have to, you know, other people are going to be starving for repair kits, you're going to be swimming in them. Um, let me see if there is another way to make oil. Oil. Oil, oil pump. What is that called? Uh, here, get. It's just called oil. Oh, okay. It was just saying oil shale. So in order to make it, the only way to make it is with an oil pump. An oil pump. An oil pump. Or a grease monkey. And oil pumps, guess where that comes from? The only way to get an oil pump is mechanic class in the mastery. You can create oil pumps. So... Uh, repair kits are completely locked behind um, for crafting the mechanic and that's why this is another great start now all vendors sell repair kits they're expensive they're like three or four hundred dukes each um, but that's not a big deal for some other classes for builder for example and we'll get into him next our labor laborer not builder um, that's not as big of a deal for him he can manage that. He can buy the supplies off the vendor every three days. So, but for the most part, just for crafting repair kits, it just makes it so much easier. So you have a great start with getting all the rare items. You have a great start with being able to craft repair kits on your own. You have a great start with being able to create your own transportation. And then the third best thing is these, these, uh, these turrets are just devastating. Excuse me. Uh, these turrets are, they suck in vanilla. I mean, they're okay. You throw one down, it adds a little extra uh, stuff, but, and I've always liked the gameplay of having like pets and turrets and stuff like that. You know, I'm always a summoner or something when I play a game. So I love having my minions do my damage, but I only like it if it's comparable to damage I can do with other classes, other builds. Darkness Falls changes this, so it does. So if you look at Robotics Expert, or let's go one up, 40% um, more damage, which is nice. That's like all the other weapons, though. All the weapons seem to get 40 or 50% more damage. But look at the firing rate, 120% firing rate, and you get 40 extra rounds. Plus, you can put magazines into the turrets that increase the rounds. Um, so with that firing rate, it takes a slow turret and just makes it into a killing machine. And that's what makes these things really beautiful is that faster firing rate. Um, robot reload 20% and another 50. And it has a big range and then you can deploy two at once. Now, I kind of, I don't remember the conversation I had with him about the two at once. I think he said, yeah, that's a mistake when I was talking to the developer. Um, because currently when you when you max this out you can plop three down and I like that I think you should be able to plop three down I like that fact and I think if if he nerfs it later on he should keep that he definitely shouldn't make it two 
or you should even expand it and allow you to plop four down, which would be nice. Um, so I'm not sure. That might change. It might go back to two. His description says two, so he probably meant two. And it's probably just a bug that you can put three down. So he's probably planning on fixing that. I hope he does it. I hope he leaves it at three. I think that gives it, that makes it better viable and more unique. Um, but yeah, these things kind of blast and they auto target, which is nice. Now, there are some downsides to these things. There, you know, there's a lot of micromanaging you got to do. You got to place them right. Zombies are charging you. You place them. They can actually block the placement. If there's things on the ground. They can block the placement. You lose them often. Sometimes they'll sink under the ground. You put them on a block. They'll fall through the blocks. There was, you know, there was times they fell through protected blocks, you know, on some servers. And I couldn't even access my uh, turret. I couldn't get to it no matter what I did. I had to like ask the admin for help. So there's a lot of disadvantages to turrets, but I just, me personally, I really love the gameplay. I think they're strong. Um, they're fast. They're they're fun to just be able to kind of, you, you just run up to the monster. And let me see if I can get a turret going here. And mind, mind you, I'm not talking about these. I'm not talking about mechanic. I'm talking about these robotic turrets. And even the, even the sledges are nice. These things are fun. You can do a lot with these sledges. Um, so when you start out, it's like dunk, 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 dunk. But when you do 120%, this thing's, it's even hard to hold your mouse because it's like dunk, 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 dunk. It's just nuts what it can do. And then when you plop one of these things down, it'll, it'll crowd control those zombies. Like you could literally, I've made little traps with these things where I put three of them. Like, I put three of them down, like one here, one here, one here, and I have the zombies path in, and they just get stuck. They're just getting slammed against the wall. Donk, 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 donk. Um, so, you know, a lot of fun with these. They're actually good for starting out, um, because you can place them down and then stand next to them immediately. Unfortunately, I think that's what a lot of people see turrets as, an assist. When you place them down, they're there to assist you. They're not there to do your primary damage. And that's one of the things I like about this mod. I think he unintentionally made turrets good enough to be um, primary damage instead of having just to rely on them for, you know, assists. Um, I don't know how to fix that other than do like what they did with s some of the mods and Terraria did with summoning. Like, how do you fix a thing that can, like, if you're a melee user, you can use turrets to boost your damage. Um... So why not use both? So what you could do is make it so like if you're holding anything else but a turret or something, um, your damage gets reduced by 50% on all turrets or something like that. That way you can if you know you can make them powerful and viable, but you're not like using turrets and using your pistol specialty or something. If you can kind of follow my meaning, but turrets are very powerful. One of the things I think he's gonna um, fix with turrets. Here's the ammo. So when you get started, uh, this is another thing that makes turrets great because you can use iron scrap to make the ammo. There's no gunpowder needed because, you know, the turret is doing the uh, propulsion. You don't need gunpowder for the propulsion. So this is, it's so noob friendly when you're starting out. As soon as I get a turret, I'm like, ah, I can kill stuff easily now, you know? All the normal mobs that gave you a hard time and had potential to kill you, now they're almost a non-threat. As soon as I get turrets, I feel safer going anywhere. I'll go out at night. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, they can take out a lot of monsters. All the low-level monsters, they could take out no problem. Now, when you start getting to higher-level monsters, you want to start using different ammo. So you got, um, where's the... Uh, I thought I had slug ammo. ammo. You start using um, armor-piercing, which... The same thing as robotic, just costs two more, uh, two more scraps. So it's not a big deal to make that. You can make it right in your inventory. You don't need a work uh, well for the AP. You need a workbench. For this, you don't. You can make it right in your inventory as you're playing. But the bug that I think he's going to fix is the shell ammo. Unfortunately, um, the shell ammo takes these turrets and brings them up to the next level. Uh, with the shell ammo in the turrets and they'll be able to kill demons and stuff like that. They they turn into a viable endgame weapon. And honestly, they it does make them a little powerful. Even though I love the turrets, I love the fact that they're powerful, you become way more powerful than you would be if you had M60s and full M60 spec. 
So it does kind of make him a little powerful. I understand why he would do that, but um, why he would change it. But the reason why this happens, this is basically shotgun ammo, right? And then these things are basically, um, well, yeah, it's shotgun ammo. So what it, what I think it's doing is, um, let me see if I can summon it so I can explain it. This does pertain to classes. I'm not getting off track. Um, shell ammo. Let me get some so you can see the stats of it. Here it goes. So your damage per pellet is two, and there's eight pellets. Um, I used to know this off the top of my head. Let me think for a second. And the range damage is 12. So what I think it's doing, here's what I think it's doing. And I didn't confirm this with him. He just said, ah, yes, it, that, that needs to change. The ammo makes it too powerful. I didn't realize how that worked when I did it. Um, but basically, you get eight pellets. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be eight times two is, uh, uh, 16 extra damage, right? Which puts it in line with other, um, other, um, ammo. But what it ends up doing is 8 times 2 and 8 times 12. So, you know, now it's doing a whole lot more damage than what it's supposed to do. I think it's taking, each pellet is taking the damage off the turret as well. So that would actually make this little turret 14 times 8, uh, damage. And that is just crazy. Uh, the effective range on these things are very small. So after 10 blocks, the damage starts cutting off. So these are kind of, these are medium ranged weapons. So anything further out than here is going to start seeing reduced damage. But anything that comes in to range and when, when you get better, they stay active farther away. They'll be active like this far away. Um, but anything that comes within range of these turrets is just going to get decimated. A single turret with mod modded up with good mods, uh, when you place it down, can take out a demon in probably five to ten seconds on its own. You just place it down, pop, 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 demon dies. Um, there's no other weapon except for the very high-end weapons completely spec'd out that can do that. Um, so they are definitely a little bit powerful. So until that changes, highly recommend starting mechanic and using turrets until they get changed. And even when they do get changed, as you can see, the mechanic has a lot of benefits. And even even just using normal turret ammo, which doesn't have that bug, these things are pretty good because of the increased um, damage and fire rate. It makes them more viable. They just won't be OP with that uh, ammo. So this is still going to be a great... Um, starter build and then master mechanic what's that give you impact driver the oil pump the auto shotgun which is a great weapon allows you to craft the motorbike the 4x4 and muscle cars now muscle cars are something added to darkness falls they're cool looking uh 1970 type uh cars cool paint jobs i don't think they perform as well as the motorbike in the 4x4 though they seem to get hung up they're like because they're low riders they get hung up on the terrain they don't feel as good as um, the motorbike in a 4x4. So I think a lot of people get hyped for the muscle cars, and then when they actually use them, they're like, eh, I'm going to go back to the 4x4 or the motorbike. Um, increase the crafting tier for blunt weapons by 10, shotgun, and wrench style tools. So this is eventually, if you're a blunt weapons build, you're going to want this just for the crafting tier so you can get better blunt weapons. Um, but this is probably the strongest absolutely in my opinion right now strongest start just because it allows you to get the hard to get materials it allows you to make your own transportation and it gives you an extremely viable weapon that can carry you into end game uh, very easily now the laborer class this is a very strong start but it's not combat so if you're a non-combat um if you're a non-combat person you like to build you like to mine um, that kind of stuff, if, if that's your game, 100%, just without even thinking about go labor. Um, labor is going to open up all your forges and stuff like that. So it's going to open up your forge, mining helmet, um, unlocks the workbench, dark traps, all your electrical fence posts and stuff like that. Unlocks your metal workstation and tailoring station so you don't have to put points into that. Um, all your power doors, shotgun turrets, nail guns, unlocks your nail guns so you can upgrade stuff faster. 
um, augers, chainsaws, all the tools that unlocks all the tools in this build. Hammer and forge lets you scrap, uh, make tools so when you start out you can make your own scrap tools and then you can move up to uh, iron uh, instantly as soon as you're done the quest and get the materials to build it with. <clears throat> And you know, then you can also make the big forge. The big forge in the normal forge, you cannot make steel. Uh, in the normal forge, you cannot put a crucible in a normal forge in this game. Um, also, speaking of forges, since we're on builder, they change the way forges operate. Let's see. Yeah, I'm. Let me do. A, let me do all the different types of forges while I'm here, just to show you that. Since we're on builder, it's not skipping. It's not getting off topic. Do, do, do. So we got that forge, that forge, and it goes that forge, this forge. Um, so they changed the way forges make or are. So you start off with your normal forge, and then the big forge is the first forge that can smelt steel. In order to make advanced forges, you need 250 steel per. So that's the next forge. So you definitely need at least, usually what I do is I make one big forge and I just let it run until I get 250 steel. And then um, I make an advanced forge and I let both of them run to make more steel. And then I get another advanced forge and I let all three of them make run to get more steel. And then, you know, by that time I'm shutting down this guy and getting rid of it and just using advanced forges getting rid of this guy once you have advanced forges that's it just get rid of these because i'll show you why boop boop advanced forges look cool too i remember the first time i seen them i was like what the hell are those things boop. Boop. So there are the forges um so yeah as you can see you need fuel right when you're forging now, what's different about forges is you'll notice there's no smelter. You do not need to smelt. They took the whole smelting and storing materials in the forge out of the game. I love that change. I think the fun pips, fun pimps need to do that. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are nostalgic about s smelting stuff into the forge um, and then crafting from the smelted material. But with this, you just craft from the material. You got stones. You don't have to smelt the stones into the forge. You just, you know hit craft like anything else like a workbench and it'll craft them i i, I definitely like that change um i'm glad uh, i'm glad he kind of removed that from the game um, but you still need fuel but as you can see you can fit a crucible and a tool and die tool and die is what is needed to make ammo um you're not going to make any kind of mechanical uh casting without the tool and die set and you can't fit that in here or yes you can actually sorry you just can't uh, put a bellows, which increases crafting speed. So, um, in here, anvil, tool, and die. In here, all four, crafting speed increase and um, crucible. And then, obviously, in here, in the advanced forge, once you get that, you can put all four. But if you notice something, you notice the difference? Fuel. No fuel. You don't need any fuel for this one. So, you can just come in, load it up. 2,000 hours worth of steel production and walk away and when you come back, you know, it'll all be here You just loot it out. So once you get advanced forges keep them babies cooking is my advice. Just keep things in them cooking um, Keep going advanced forge has not these are your normal forges. This is more for um, uh, Converting plutonium and uranium um, and titanium and stuff like that um but you can do titanium in the advanced forge. Let's see. And also, uh, let's see. Yeah, so when you want to get into crafting like laser pistols and laser uh, rifles and stuff like that, you're going to need this. This is the fusion forges endgame. I just kind of wanted to show you the different forges as we're talking about builder and back to builder. Wasn't off topic. We we're talking about the class. Let me get a uh, drink. My throat's getting a little rough here. I got some... Uh, Yum yum coffee. <clears throat> this is a lot of talking. This is a lot of information to provide to you guys. So I know it's kind of boring. Hopefully, if you're interested in learning the finer details of 
Darkness Falls. Other than doing playthroughs so you can watch me play and kill zombies while I'm randomly talking about crap, I can't think of any better way of formatting this so, than just standing here and talking about it and discussing it and putting timestamps in the description so you can jump around where you want to. Alright, back to Builder. Strong Start Labor. I keep calling it Builder because it's Master Builder. So I don't know why I keep calling the Labor Christ Builder. Alright, so yeah, so you can make forges and then in level 10, the level 10 unlock is steel crucibles and concrete mixer. So it unlocks your concrete mixer so you can get to building your uh, bases and all that stuff. And then at level 20, you unlock steel tools and advanced forge. So by level 20, you want to get some, um, actually by level 10, you want to start getting your steel production going. And then by level 20, you'll have some steel ready to make some advanced forge and steel tools and stuff like that. And then once you get your advanced forges going, I usually pop out like at least six of them advanced forges. And then you can just sit there, cook steel, and cook whatever you want nonstop. At that point, those types of resources, like you're really strapped, but by like level 30 something, 40, if you're if you're a laborer, you have so much steel and so much um, all the materials that you um, could ever want. You could just keep mining. You have all the mining tools. Um, you can craft your own tools. You can uh, craft them and upgrade them. So it's definitely a strong start, but it's non-combat. So, you know, this is, you're not going to be going out looting. You're going to be suffering in the fact that you don't have a lot of leather. You don't have a lot of cloth. You don't have armor as well as you probably do. You probably don't have the best weapons because you haven't been out looting. This is, this is the make do with what weapons you have, bows or whatever to kill sleepers. Sneak out during the day and loot during the day. Don't dare go at night build. And at night you go home, work on your base, work on forges and smelting and mining and stuff like that. I think my next playthrough I'm going to do this. I've been doing mechanic for like so many playthroughs. I think my next playthrough I might actually do a labor and just build. Especially since I just put my I just put my uh, AFK horde base build out. So make sure you check my channel for that. It's a good uh, build. You know, I'll be working on that. So especially since I'm working on builds. Um, that'll be great. So anyway, Master Builder unlocks titanium blocks. So it goes... Um, the, the upgrade path is wood. Uh, I think it's like reinforced wood. And then you have um, flagstone. And then you have like an upgraded flagstone. And then from flagstone it goes to concrete. And then you have reinforced concrete is the next strongest. And then in darkness, usually that would be it. But in darkness falls, you can upgrade uh, reinforced concrete to um, like a first stage of steel. And then you can upgrade it to a second stage of steel. And then you can upgrade it to titanium using titanium ore, which is endgame ore that you can mine from the wasteland um, and makes the blocks very, very strong. Also, titanium tools or upgrade to steel uh, makes them very fast. Like you think the auger's fast, get a titanium auger and see how fast it is. It'll just be like, this is silly. Um, so you can make titaniums. Uh, just while we're talking about augers and... Not getting off topic, but it does pertain to the class. Why we're talking about augers. There's an auger. There's a titanium auger. See, the, <laughs> like, a, like an auger is ridiculous, right? 40 block damage at 300 attacks a minute. How about 80 block damage at 300? So it's like twice as fast or twice as strong than the normal auger. In Darkness Falls, though, however, there is a sacrifice. They don't augers aren't the kings that they are in vanilla um they have a long repair time so you'll be sitting here for like two minutes while you repair it i think it takes 10 or 11 repair kits per repair on an auger so that's the downside to it the auger is about twice as fast let me check my notes here real quick i did some test runs where's my notes on auger auger speeds auger is much faster but costs 10 or 11 repair kits and damages at least 10 times faster. What I mean by that is it takes wear and tear 10 times faster than a pickaxe. Um, so you'll be, re not only does it cost 10 times the repair kits, but it, it's gonna break down 10 times faster than a pickaxe. A pickaxe lasts like forever. 
Like you can literally pickaxe non-stop for like an hour before you have to repair your pickaxe. It's nuts when you get titanium pickaxes. Um, gas. Gas is really a non-factor if you have a recipe to craft it because you can just go out and mine shale and then make unlimited gas. Um, but it, the, tight, the, the auger does probably about twice as fast as the pickaxe. So you're sacrificing uh, repair kits, basically, uh, for speed of mining. And I honestly, in, in the very end game, once you're not strapped for any kind of resources, you have all kinds of repair kits. Repair kits are a non-issue. Auger is definitely the way to go. Um, it's just so much, it's twice as fast, basically. So when I was mining titanium, I timed it out. Titanium was like the hardest thing to mine. I got uh, 850 titanium in 20 seconds with a uh, titanium pickaxe, fully modded. With my auger fully modded, I got 1,200. Um, so 850 versus 1,200 kind of gives you an example. Now, that was with the hardest material in the game. When you're mining like uh, iron ore, you're just blasting through that stuff. Like it's It's like... Each tick of the auger, it does 300 attacks per minute, will destroy a block. Like, every single every single time it hits, it destroys the block. It's like, dang, 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 dang. So, it's, it's extremely fast. Um, but it's not the king that it is in vanilla, because pickaxes are nice. Pickaxes, you... At end game with a titanium pickaxe, you can use your secondary swing, which does additional bonus damage to the blocks. It makes it... makes You can, like, one-shot blocks. Um... And forever, you can your stamina will never go down. So pickaxes are very nice, but augers are faster. But there's a cost to it. So just keep that in mind as a builder who can craft this stuff. Um, there's no shame in going. Some people just go with pickaxes, especially because they're quieter and they don't attract zombies. Um, but in the end end game, I usually swap over to an auger just so I don't have to carry a shovel and a pickaxe and all that stuff. I really wish they had an auger auger axe you know like auger could do the same thing that wood um also i haven't tested it but i think chainsaws in this game and this doesn't allow you to yeah i think it allows you to make chainsaws as well and axes and all that stuff um i think chainsaws actually do more damage to blocks than um like augers and stuff it just doesn't give you the resources like chainsaws are just ridiculous for dismantling uh, and deconstructing things like you're just blasting through a house like if you use the chainsaw on a concrete block I think it might actually be faster than an auger. I haven't tested it out though, but just keep that in mind uh, Chainsaws are valuable more for just cutting wood in darkness falls um, What else is there? Yeah, that's it. So builder definitely a strong start. Oh um, Not getting off topic because it does pertain to um it does pertain to the class. So you need all those repair kits for your auger, but you can't make oil with the labor. What do you do? What do you do? Well, these traders sell repair kits. Pretty much always sell repair kits. Don't make a liar out of me. There you go. This guy sells six of them. Usually they have more. A lot of times they'll have multiple stacks. They'll have 10, 20... Um, so it's not usually hard to find repair kits from the traders. Um, so a laborer is going to buy his repair kits, but they're expensive. They're 400, look at that, for six of them, it's almost 3,000 dukes. Um, that's fine though, because a laborer is going to have unlimited resources, right? So let me show you. So let me just kind of show you some math here. Robotic turret costs three per one so that scales down to a three to one ratio so let's take three thousand of them and we have turrets let's take three thousand of them going creative one thousand so that's the same ratio it takes three thousand iron to make one thousand of them that's going to be the same ratio and then forged iron, forged steel, titanium. Now, depending on your forge, if you have an advanced forge, 
Uh, the other thing with the Vanish Forge is I think it's faster and it also reduces the cost of some of your recipes. I did not mention that with the forges. So that's another reason to, like as you can see, like depending on the forge you use, see the crafting time go down and go up. See the cost go down and go up. So that's a forge and that's probably an advanced forge. So the, the advanced forge not only doesn't have fuel, but it immensely reduces the cost of a lot of recipes and immensely increases the craft time. And then when you factor in craft time bonuses from equipment and skills, um, you can almost get some of this stuff crafting instantly. Um, let's see what it is with this one. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, I just wanted to see... So let's say... Let's go with Advanced Forge, because you're going to have Advanced Forge by level 20. We'll do the comparison there. So it costs 5 iron. I'm going to say clay is a non-factor. Cost, so it costs 5. So, 3,000 divided by 5. Let me break my calculator out so I don't get that wrong. So, 600. 3,000 divided by 5 is 600. So, we would be able to make... Six hundred. Ah, oh, well, we can't stack it to six hundred. Oh, and that's forged iron anyway. Darn it. I uh, what am I doing? Sorry, I have a point to this. Forged. I just want to show you because I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Can't stack that to one hundred. All right. So with the same amount of scrap iron, you can make 600 forged iron, 1,000 robotic turrets, or just 3,000. So when you're starting out, if you were to sell this to him, um, he'll sell it to you for 600. Let me just make sure. And the game also, like I, so you can see, the game tells you what the sell price is going to be to the vendor, the default sell price. And that's what we're working with here. There's no bonuses, so we could just go by me clicking on it. So you mine up 3,000 of them, you can sell them for 600. If you forge it into iron, you can take that same 3,000 and get... That'd be uh, 1440 for it if you forged it into iron and sold the iron bars to them. If you simply crafted it into robotic turret, you can get 18. So this is uh, the best means to make money that I know of so far. Um, Converting your iron into uh, robotic turret armor ammo and then selling that to a vendor um, Now you can only sell three stacks per vendor. So if you're looking to maximize this You'll want to get three stacks of this. That's 18 18 18 and then get three stacks of forged iron as well And that's 12 12 12 Now you're rolling in newbie money, right? Um, you don't have to worry about it and then Just so you know so first stage don't ever sell your scrap iron don't make I, i've tested out other things uh making pipes and things like that making forged and selling that it seems to be the best value the best bang for the buck and then robotic turret is obviously better than forged and then when you go up one level steel actually becomes your most uh efficient method it takes a long time to to craft forged steel but once you have advanced forges running you'll have tons of forged steel and you will want the forged steel to upgrade your base, to steel blocks and all that stuff. But if you need money, this is your most efficient conversion of scrap iron into something to sell to the vendor is forged steel. And then you're also getting 15, uh, yeah, 15,000 per vendor for this. So you can get 15,000 for steel. You can get another, well, by the time you're selling steel, you don't even want to waste your time. You're really not going to be like, oh, I want another 3,000 on top of the 15 that I just got. Um, forged titanium, a lot of people sell that, but here's the thing with forged titanium. This stuff takes a long time to mine and forge, so that, when you factor in the wear, the tear, the time, the effort to craft forged titanium to sell, it actually becomes very less efficient than just going out and destroying iron or uh, iron nodes to make, um, to make forged steel and just selling that to multiple vendors. So I wouldn't recommend selling forged titanium, so basically sell robotic turret armor, 
in conjunction with forged iron to get the most money best bang for your buck and then once you can make steel bars and you have excess like you have all your advanced forges up and running and this is why you'll go in some people's bases and they have 20 advanced forges running you're like why do you need so many of these because they go out and mass mine with the auger get a bunch of get a bunch of steel craft and then they run around to all the vendors and sell it and then when you have like better barter and all that stuff you're you're getting even more um so anyway that's that's how the that's how the builder rolls like the builder utilizes the trader so if you're using builder you're out mining you're getting all that stuff you have your forges you're making bars you're selling them to the trader and you're starting to rely more on the trader oh well now that crossbow i can get that easy you know uh the armor that you're selling i can get that easy oh am i short on food because i don't have farmer well i can buy some of that food easy like he starts buying more becoming more reliant on traders and the secret stash and stuff like that. Oh, cement mixer. Oh, I don't have a welding torch. I'll just grab it there. You know, general schematics. Well, they're expensive, but not to a uh, builder who can sell all these forge bars and make money. So that's kind of the trick. So I think trader pairs. When you're starting with trader, if you're doing non-combat, not trader. I'm sorry. If you're starting with labor and doing non-combat, I think it goes well with like scavenger, um, just for the charismatic nature. Um, lucky looter obviously is going to help when you do that, but you don't even have to burn your other class. Um, I think if you just do better barter, which is right here, you're getting 50% uh, better selling and 25% better buying and it's opening up some of the secret stash too so um i definitely think better barter goes well um you're also going to want tool crafting to pair because you want to when you craft your tools this depend this is the this is what gives it its quality also when you're using your augers and your pickaxes this will prevent it from uh degrading so i mean i know i went over that earlier but you know same thing goes with armor if you're crafting armor you want your armor crafting up so not only are you crafting it at a higher tier, when you're using it and repairing it, it won't degrade beyond a certain amount. So you, you want that for all your crafting perks of whatever you're crafting and using. Okay, let's go back to... That was a lot. I think I'm going to save the clip here just so the video doesn't corrupt and then uh, we'll continue. Okay, so back to classes. Builder. Laborer, I mean. I keep calling it Builder definitely a good start in my opinion it's just a different play style so that's why like these four i think are the best starters um so we did mechanic labor so in my opinion i think labor is either first first or second depending on depending on the play style um and then we have hunter the hunter why include it in one of the top four best starts it can get difficult in a lot of other ways. Um, what makes it good is basically stealth, right? So increase movement speed by 30% when you're crouched in stealth and increases sneak attack by 200% damage. Now that's, the, you're gonna be a bow user, a crossbow user at first, eventually you can transfer into melee and blades um, for knife, because knife has knife, crossbow, and um, bow have, if you look at, the stats on a bow they have a multiplier for sneak damage so when you combine that with the multiplier from hunter now you're now doing 400 percent damage of your weapon when you do a sneak attack so you're relying on sneak attacking that's difficult when they wake up though so basically as a hunter they wake up you're probably going to want to run away uh run away and sneak and then crawl back in and take them out there were some zombies up here i thought they despawn. Well, look at that, they despawned after a while. But it's good for raiding, um, crawling into a building, and sneak attacking mobs. With a hunter with sneak attack, your XP is going to go pretty fast. I think that's another thing that gives you a strong start. So once you get turrets, your XP is going to go pretty fast because you can kill fast. Once you get labor and you start mining and building, those two combiners are like some of the moot. They're not the fastest XP, but they're most consistent. So over time, they're the fastest. And then with Hunter, you're going to be killing stuff non-stop with your bows and your crossbows and stuff. 
so you're going to be getting all that juicy kill XP and you're going to be leveling fast so that's why I think these are like really good starters these three um, also what you get boop, 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 if you go into your normal thing from the shadows this will make your stealth more effective and you can start working on this right away right this is dependent on your athletics not level so once you get your athletics up to 60 you can have full um, uh, bonus to stealth and basically you'll be able to walk right up on monsters and pop them in the head with a knife or something um, you'll be able to I I'm pretty sure you can one shot demons with this build with the right gear and stuff like that you just pretty much will one shot anything except for like succubuses and behemoths and things like that with extremely high hit points you'll be able to do a thousand a thousand five hundred I, I don't know the exact number but you'll be able to do enough with headshots and stealth to pop even some of the hardest mobs but you're going to be weak when it comes to um not really weak but weaker when when it comes to mobs that are awake and aware and tougher mobs Anyway, but it is definitely a strong start. One of the other things that makes it a strong start is this. Harvest more resources from any animal using a bladed tool. That might not sound like a lot, but you're getting double the meat, double the glue, double the fat. Fat and meat make food. So um, even, even if you're just grilling the meat and making grilled meat, it's still a reliable source of food when you're starting out. And food is extremely important when you're starting out. It's difficult to get. You're spending a lot of your time effort energy and resources just maintaining your food so you don't die unless you don't care about dying then food who cares about it um, master hunter let's see the extended magazine mod is very nice if you're playing an online server other other players that haven't taken hunter or don't have the hunter mastery will pay for that um, sniper rifle is obviously good for stealth headshots stuff like that titanium knives obviously the best stealth weapon knife titanium crossbow the best stealth weapon crossbow um, you get titanium ammo recipes and then you're increasing your uh, crafting for bows and rifles by 10 increase the range and duration of your tracking ability so that gives you the when you have this I think when you have I don't know they don't they don't have I thought it used to be in here like tracking or something but I think when you pick hunter you get an innate tracking Ah uh, yes, yeah, so I haven't even been going over these. Uh, when you finish your last curse, increase crafting tier, gain, gain the ability to track animals when crouched. Yeah, so I haven't actually been doing that going over to classes. I'll have to go back over and look at the actual hunter class level. I've just been looking at the abilities. So basically what that means is when you crouch on your compass, on your map, so on your compass, actually, well, I, I don't want to complete the quest here, but on your compass up there where it says day one when you crouch you'll be able to look around and see chickens and boars and there'll be like a little icon telling you what direction you're on also if you open your map you'll be able to see them on your map where they're at exactly also they'll have a little icon like when when you place something down how they have that little icon overlay now you'll have an icon of the animal of the chicken the pig or the whatever if it's behind the wall or whatever but yeah you'll be um it'll it'll allow you to so you're getting double the meat from animals and stuff like that when you kill them and you're going to be able to find them so much easier now when you're stealth down so hunter is a very viable start and it's a fun play style a lot of people come into the game and they want a real stealthy play style and they like stealthy play styles but vanilla stealth isn't that great this really kind of sets it off. It makes you really feel like a hunter, stealther, killer. Uh, so it's definitely a fun play style. It's one that I enjoy playing. I've done knife, headshot, you know, play styles. Um, it's definitely fun. One of the things that a lot of people don't consider of why this is a stronger class is a lot of times when you start an online server, you're playing with higher level people. Which means, so when a monster spawns, it's supposed to spawn at your game stage level or like an average of the game stage level of of what's around you um but i found when there's high level players running around you're going to have all kinds of high level monsters running around um in pois because what has, what happens is like you have 
and Joe Derp, who's like level 200, comes blasting down the streets on his hot rod, you know, and he comes, goes to the trader and then goes around this way and does whatever. Well, now he's basically just infected this whole area with high level zombie spawns. Um, you could have demons in your POIs that you're trying to go in and loot and stuff like that. And that becomes a serious hindrance to any other class but the hunter. The hunter is the only class who can effectively deal with that. Uh, and mit mitigate the risks of that, and that's because a hunter is going to be focusing on his stuff. You can just bypass those bastards. Oh, is there a demon right there? And there's three other zombies, or five other zombies, and one demon, and there's no way you can handle that demon? Well, guess what? You're a stealth build. Just one shot the other five, get all the experience, loot the stuff, and go away, and just leave the demon sleeping. That's what makes the hunter valuable. So, a lot of times when I'm joining a late stage server um i try to join servers when they're on day one but when i'm joining a late stage server my my well i shouldn't say my two but my top two go-to classes tend to be uh a laborer so i can just keep to myself and build until i'm more powerful or i'll go hunter if i want to go out looting and then that way if i run into problems i'm good i'm a stealthy boy i can just run away and stealth um it's not a problem so let's get into, and then one of my third starters when, it, when it's late stage is Farmer. Um, it's not as good as I think Hunter or Laborer for late stage, but it's beneficial because you can keep to yourself. Um, farmer, how is growing food a good starter class? Well, food's very important in this game. Food is what's going to give you your hit points. Uh, food is very difficult starting off to maintain effectively. And with Farmer, you just eliminate all that instantly from the start. It's, it's a good start because, you know, you're going to get living off the land. So you'll get all your seed recipes. You're going to get additional items when you harvest crops. You don't need to use farm plots. You can craft a, a scrap iron hoe. You can craft uh, animal snares, which are going to get you animal fat, bones, and meat. You can craft chicken coops, which is going to give you eggs and feathers. You can craft... Um, mortar and pestle to make all the other stuff um so it's going to open up a lot of options for food and then with sous chef you're going to um they get all the recipes unlocked for food is basically all the recipes um so you're gonna have easy to make juices that give wellness easy to make uh things one one of my favorite things i make my 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 easy like the easiest line to make food and drink that you don't have to think about tomato juice gives you the most wellness and a great amount of uh um uh water um replenishment and it's easy to craft that you just need tomatoes and water bottles in a mortar and pestle you don't even need an oven or anything like that and tomatoes are very easy to find and they're very easy to grow they're very easy to get started there you go tomato um, just make the seeds, plant them, and tomatoes are actually used to make red dye as well, so you need them for red dye. So tomatoes covers your red dye and your drinks in one crop. Um, and then the other thing I like for my food, because everything else is very complex, and I, I don't like making all these goofy complex cooking recipes. Some people get into that stuff, like people will want to set up vending machines and you have all kinds of cakes and pies and whatever they got. Um, I don't get into that. I want a path of least resistance for me. And that is hobo stew for me. Hobo stew is a very simple uh, recipe. That consists of potatoes, corn, animal fat water, and rotting flesh. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're not going to be using rotting flesh for farm plots. Other than farm plots and hobo stew, it doesn't really have a use. But you're going to be having, you're going to have a lot of it while you're smashing these corpses for their bones and stuff like that. You're going to have a lot of animal fat just from in general, and animal fat's very cheap from the traders. You can, you'll have no problem with animal fat. You buy one stack of animal fat from the trader, and you're good for like almost your whole gameplay because <clears throat> it only takes one to make one of these. Um, so you'll have plenty of rotting flesh, you'll have plenty of animal fat, bottled water is easy. So the only thing you need to grow is potatoes and corn. And then you have your food taken care of. And hobo stew, I think, gives like three wellness, a ton of food, and some water as well. So 
that's usually my go-to is hobo stew and tomato soup is usually my that's my easy to make easy to craft food is kind of what i end up doing um and then once i get uh survivalist and i can make jerky then i just make jerky and then i only eat the other stuff when i need wellness like if i'm at max wellness there's no reason for me to eat the other stuff um so yeah you craft unlock all your recipes coffee beer they give you five wellness and then master farmer what's that give you oh so grow lights that's that's interesting that's something i've never done because once you have a farm set up you tend to have more food and water than you you ever need but if you wanted to get crazy with it and you wanted to have an underground you ever have an underground base and you hated that you had to have an above ground farm or a farm on your roof Darkest Falls got you covered because they can you can do underground farming. They got growing lights. You use super corn, not to make glue in this one, but to make mutated seeds. So you can make modified plant seeds, um, and you can use that to grow stuff underground. And they also, from what I've been told, I haven't done it myself, but from what I've been told, they harvest a much quicker than a normal plant. So you're going to get even more for less space underground. Um, so you can make like irrigation systems, lighting systems, and uh, actually have better crop production underground if you want to. Uh, blackstrap coffee is a thing a lot of people freak out about. Um, unlocks SMGs and hoes. So SMGs and hoe crafting is for Master Farmer. Let me look at blackstrap coffee real quick. I forget what makes that so good. Uh, the stamina regen. A lot of people like it for the stamina regen for six minutes. Six minute, thirty percent stamina regen boost gives you five wellness and twenty five water for drinking that. That's nice to have that stamina regen when you're mining or whatever, or just running around. Uh, oh, here's the muscle cars, by the way. Probably should have pulled one of them out and showed you what they look like. So you can see, this one is distracting, but that's the muscle car. Don't they look cool? But they don't. They don't drive really well. Kind of. <laughs> Yes. Why am I in this weird point of view? That's usually... This is not the point of view you, you are usually in. I don't know why I'm in this. Oh, I bet you I know why. No collision and fly mode. There we go. They just, um, uh, I don't know. They look cool. I don't even think they sound as cool as uh, the motorcycle and the four, but I think the fun pimps did a really good job. Over the, over the years with getting the motorcycle and the 4x4 into a good place. But these tend to get caught up on like little dinky donks more than uh, more than the other stuff does. My favorite's actually just the motorcycle. I usually just motorcycle around. I'm not too worried about storage and stuff. Um, but I guess I should kind of go back. We're still talking about classes here. Get my turn it visibility on so no monsters bug me um let's go back into classes and just review because i never clicked on the actual survivalist skill and showed them while i was going over it bad on me increases crafting tier for cloth leather so it gives you another crafting tier for uh on survivalist for your armor types what's this one give um so it looks like crafting tier for the different things i gave you so it gives you a crafting tier at the end and then crafting tier in the beginning so that's where you get two additional crafting tier so yeah that would make sense because you can bump things up to five with in the crafting tool tool um tool crafting you bump things up to 51 and then when you go into your class specialty the first will bump it up to 61 and then when you get your mastery it'll bump it to 71. <clears throat> excuse me and 71 is the max you're going to be able to craft with anything if you want to bump something up to 80, you then have to combine it, and I'll show you that later when we get into that stuff. 
Um, so yeah, I think everything is just like crafting tier. Increase crafting tier. Spears, da 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 da. Scavenger doesn't give you, yeah, it just gives you a pistol. Mechanic is blunt weapons, shotguns, and salvaging tools. <sighs> okay, so you get the nail, that's weird. I thought it gave you the nail gun recipe. Advanced engineering. Hmm, could have swore I see the nail gun in here. Lantern, iron, forge. Huh, weird. Could have swore I see the nail gun in there. So that unlocks the nail gun and your tools. Give it extra 10. This one is giving you, uh, for Hunter, your rifles and booze. It gives you the ability to track. And this guy is giving you a tier for SMG. So basically, it's crafting tier for most of them. Just boost the crafting tier by another 10 when you finish the quest. So that is classes. Um, you know, a big, long section on that. But it can get to complex. Pick the class that you want that you think you'll want to play as the play style. Eventually you get all the classes. Uh, I guess I should get into that now. Um, how to do the classes, because eventually you're going to unlock them all. So how do you unlock them all? Well, go into your crafting, type class, and you can see, you can pick whatever class you want just by making one of these things. How do you make one of these things? Oh, you need a blank class paper. Any workstation? No workstation needed. So you just need a blank class paper. How do you get a blank class paper? Well, there's two ways. One costs 240 bundles of skills, 60 paper, 4 ink. And one costs 120, 30. So, okay, what's this one? Well, this one's just in your inventory. So if you just make one in your inventory, it's going to cost a lot. What's, why is this one reduced? Because it's a writing desk. Okay, so you need a writing desk. The best way to do it is with a writing desk, with a bundle. That way it doesn't cost you as many inks or bundles of notes. What's a writing desk? Writing desk. How do you make that? Wooden nails. You need a workbench and a claw hammer. And that's it? Oh, you can just make one. You don't need to learn anything. So, very easy to make a writing desk. There's no reason to ever... I don't even know why I have this recipe in here other than screw people from not realizing you can just do one on a writing desk. But, uh, yeah, uh, you're definitely going to want to use a writing desk because bundle skill notes take a lot of effort to acquire, ink takes a lot of effort to acquire, paper is very easy to get, quill is just converting feathers, one quill is one feather, super easy, so this is a non-factor, this is almost a non-factor, bundles of skill notes and ink is going to be your hardest um, thing to get when, when to make these uh, skill books, that's, that's what's going to be your limiting factor, especially on an online server, because everybody's going to be looting uh, the areas for the bundles of skill notes. If you're playing by yourself, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. It's not going to be a major factor. Ink will probably be your hardest thing. So how do you get a bundle of skill notes? Well, let me go into creative. And grab some books and schematics here. So when you get a book and a schematic, you got to be careful because sometimes... It looks like you can learn them. Oh, that one worked. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like you can learn them, and then when you read them, you can't learn them. You're actually, like, it's blocked from some other requirement, or you'll never be able to learn them because it's only a class that can learn them. So you gotta, books are kind of weird on whether or not you can learn them. Um, but anyway, back to the skill notes. When you scrap a book, or a schematic, boop, it scraps into a bundle of skill notes. So one book is three bundles of skill notes. So basically you want to hit bookstores and scrap all the books that you don't need and get bundles of skill notes. And that's how you get the bundles of skill notes. So you need 120. So 120 divided by three, you need 40 books to make one uh, blank class paper. So eight classes, eight times four. Well, actually, it'd be 7 times 40, because you get one for free. Uh, 
time. Four, zero. So you need 280 books to get all the classes. That's a lot of looting books from bookstores. Um, that's probably equivalent to, depending on the size of the bookstore, you leap five to ten bookstores worth of books. And that's just to get your classes, right? So, um, what about your masteries? Well, just type in mastery. And here's all your masteries that you need. Um, in order to craft these, why is that locked? Oh, these are locked because I went with mechanic. So you can only unlock the mastery. You can only craft the mastery book of the thing you have unlocked. So you can't craft a scavenger mastery if you haven't used a uh, scavenger class book yet. But to craft these, you need 480 um, bundles of skill notes. You need ink, quill, and you also need the class mechanic again. So that's another... 120 so you need basically to make a mastery you need 600 uh skill notes and then you have eight masteries not just seven you have eight masteries eight times 600 eight times 600 equals 4800 divided by three you need 1600 books 1600 schematics is my math right on that yes i think it is in order to get all the mastery so as you can see that's a lot of um looting bookstores it's, and there's no other way around it you gotta loot bookstores is that right really need that much because you need 600 times eight let me redo this 600 times eight equals 4800 notes you get three notes per book divided by three and you need 1,600 of these schematics and books scrapped just to do the masteries, not including the uh, original class books that you need. So pretty, pretty crazy to unlock all the masteries, right? And then the other thing that's going to block you up. So before I get on to that, this is why I consider books and blank uh, bundles of skill notes the most valuable resource in the game. Because that's unlocking all your abilities and, and your masteries and stuff like that. It is the most valuable thing in a game. A lot of times when I'm on multiplayer, I'll, people will be like, Hey, anybody got this? I'll be like, sure, I'll trade you how much dukes you want. I don't want dukes. I can get hundreds of thousands of dukes. Dukes are nothing. I want your I want your skill notes. I don't know. You got your skill notes? Yeah, I got like 200 skill notes. All right, I'll trade you whatever you want for them. Sure. You know, whatever they're looking for. And they're happy because they get what they want. But they don't realize they're trading away the most valuable thing in the game. But maybe that's not important to them. Maybe they don't care about unlocking other classes. So, But this, hold on to them, save them. They're the most valuable thing in the game, in my opinion. Now, the other thing we need to craft is ink. What is ink? Ink is made from black dye, jars of honey, and egg. So if you remember at the beginning, I said save all your eggs. Honey is not too much of a problem because you can buy it from the vendor. So as long as you're periodically, once you have extra cash going up to the captain of the guards and buying out all his honey, you're good. I mean, you don't even need to do that constantly. Just once or twice, you'll have enough honey because you only need one honey per ink. And then what are you going to need for class? Uh, blank class paper is two. Two times seven. And then for mastery, you need one uh, four. So two times seven and four times eight. So two, two times seven is just doing it on a calculator. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> four, Fourteen. Um, and what I say, four times eight. Um, was it four times eight? Is thirty-two plus fourteen. We got. 46 inks and then you're going to need another 14 because each or another 16 because each one of these also requires an additional class book so you're going to need what i say another 16 16 so you're going to need 62 black inks in total to do everything so it's not as bad as the bundle of skill notes um oops sorry so 
62 of these and you're done. So you only you only need maximum 62 uh, honeys. That means you're going to need 124 uh, eggs, um, which is a lot of eggs. But if you're holding on to them, you'll be good. And then also as you unlock uh, your farmer, farmer class gets the um, chicken coops. Chicken coops use apples to make feed. So you need a couple apple trees to make feed for the chicken coops and then they'll produce eggs for you. So I think like if, once you get started, if you have like five or ten chicken coops, you're usually good. If you check them and refill them every once in a while, you're usually good. So eggs, not too difficult. The honey, very easy because you can buy it from the merchant. Um, the thing that the thing that makes this hard is getting started and getting the black dye. Um, black dye you can usually find in like the cloth rewards the, um, that you get from your class um, you can sometimes find them in there go to like a laundry mat and look in the, all the washing machines for clothes that have dye in them go into the savage countries things like that things that are going to have clothes loot them you might get some clothes with some black dye black dye can be crafted in a in a campfire cost two of blue red yellow I would this is where the chemistry station matters the most to me because when you're first starting out it's hard to get these these blues reds yellows and to get enough of them you really don't want to pay twice you don't want to pay twice so if you have the chem station it only costs one of each um, so it reduces the cost by 50 percent and this is usually where i'm like okay i'm, I'm getting going with my first class or what do I want to do? Do I want to go science now so I can get a chem station so that all my further classes like so basically one of the things that holds you up more than the notebooks at first is the is the ink. So if I can craft twice as much ink and dye because I have the chem station and that helps me get my classes twice as fast and then I can open up more things that helps me get the stuff faster. And this is where farmers have a good head start because a farmer can make all these he's not dependent on it he can make pretty much unlimited dyes as long as he has uh unlimited inks as long as he has the eggs and the honey because the blue dye can be crafted the red dye can be crafted and yellow dye can be crafted by the farmer yellow dye is goldenrod right um dye blue dye is snowberries um Red dye is tomatoes. So as a farmer getting started out, you can not only are you getting food, but you're having the ability to get the raw materials for dyes so you're not dependent on running out and looting everything, which is good because the dyes are a pain in the butt when you're getting started. Um, the only thing you need to do is unlock... Uh, well, actually, if you're a farmer, you really don't care as much for the chem station because you can make unlimited resources. So the fact that they cost twice as much doesn't really bother you as much because you you can you can pop out 30 50 60 blue uh snowberries to make blue dyes it's not a big issue for you so farmers have a very good start with the dyes um, a lot of people don't realize that um, that's one of the reasons why farmers is a strong start because not only do they solve the food and the water problem they're solving the dye problem which actually makes them fast to unlock all the other classes so you can start as a farmer right and you can't do much looting when you're little anyway when you're level 10 20 the stuff you're getting out of chests are kind of weak anyway so who cares about doing that loot in the beginning in the beginning work on your base do some mining where you can do some farming and then as soon as you can unlock the other classes unlock something stronger unlock a laborer or unlock a mechanic or unlock the hunter so the farmer has a nice start with and this is one of the reasons why i put it up in the top four um with crafting uh food it takes away your food which is a major hindrance when you're getting started and it takes away your die issues uh, which is a major hindrance to unlocking the other classes and when you obviously when you unlock the other classes you're reducing your hindrance uh, and reliability or reliance on other things so that's why the farmer is like a really good start like the builder is a good start the hunter is a good start if you want to kill stuff and sneak the mechanics a good start because you have turrets to help protect you travel and stuff 
But what's travel good for? Travel's good for looting and stuff like that. What's hunting good for? Hunting's good for going out and looting. Well, when you're looting the first 20 or so levels, you're getting low-level crap anyway. So why not start with builder? Or why not start with farmer and builder or something like that? And that's usually, like, if I go builder, I usually go, like, farmer, my second class. Or I might start farmer and then go builder. Um, and then, you know, by the time I'm level 20 or 30, then I start branching out into the more loot-oriented uh, uh, classes. Because that way, when I'm actually going out and killing zombies, and I'm actually going out and getting loot, it's valuable loot. It's good pieces of armor. It's good weapons. It's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not bad stuff. So that's actually a smart start is builder, farmer in the beginning, and then branching out into other stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I put farmer in one of the tops. Um, so yeah, so that's how you make the classes, dyes, red, red, uh, blue, yellow to make black, black to make ink, 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 you need your eggs, your honeys, preferably at a chemistry station, and that's the other thing, like, if you're on an online server that has a lobby that has a chemistry station, just eliminates the need for science class right away. Like if I, that's the other thing you have to like think about how you're playing. Are you playing it by yourself? Are you playing it with friends? Uh, are you playing it on an online server? If you're playing it on an online dedicated server, do they have a lobby? And in that lobby, are there basic workbenches that you can utilize? Because you really don't need to mass produce inks. You just need to be able to go there once in a while and pop an ink at half cost. Um, so all these are should be like these are all things I try to factor in when I'm starting a game real quick just like should I do this should I not do this well do I need that do I not need that um, for for the classes um, and then that's it once you get all the classes unlocked you are pretty you'll be definitely an end game by the time you do that and then you can start working towards your completionist um, not that you'll need the extra XP or the ill effects from death but uh, uh ill effects by the way does not count for wellness you still lose wellness when you die i did get the completionist done and i tested that i, I ate a death just to see if my wellness would go down and it did uh but the big thing you want the completionist for is increased crafting tier by two for all future technology items excuse me um future technology is this stuff so in here um it's for your pistols your power hammers, your plasma axes, um, your laser multi-tools, uh, pulse, well, pulse grenades, just grenades, your power armor, it'll increase your tier. So when you're making power armor, that does not go off uh, armor, your armor perk. This has no bearing on power armor whatsoever. This is only for standard armor up to titanium. Your power armor goes off of your technology crafting tier. So as you get into your hundreds, 125, 150, level 175, you're increasing your tier for being able to craft power armor. Um, so just keep that in mind. A lot of times what I do is I skip armor crafting. I don't put a single point into this because I'm more focused on end game. Like I'll put stuff into science so I can craft mod. I'll do tool crafting so I can tool, do my tool crafting. And depending on what I'm doing, if I'm doing a gun build or a certain melee build, I'll put points in the gun and weapon crafting. But a lot of times I skip, I definitely skip the armor because I'm thinking end game, I want power armor. I'm not going to waste time with armor crafting and getting my tier up. I'll just loot whatever armor, I'll loot whatever military armor, I'll loot whatever steel armor I get. And then use that until I can get power armor. So for me, armor crafting kind of falls more towards end game, um, end game stuff. Whew, that's a lot of, that's a lot of blibber, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, tell me about it there, guard. Um, just some random tips. Um, I mean, how do I go down? C. Um, one of the random tips that I have. Oh my goodness. Why are they so loud? Which one is that? Oh, you're gonna stop when I get close, huh? Let me go in, uh, I'm invisible. 
Um, opening and closing doors. So for doors like steel vault doors and uh, garage doors and things like this, um, there's a great way to almost make them automated. Um, and that's if when you hit E, you unlock it, and then it has a little animation, and you hit E and you close it. Basically, anything with like that little animation, if you just tap E twice, it'll reserve the game will reserve the the tap, so it'll open and close it. So E E E E. And this probably isn't the best example because it cuts the animation in half. Like usually a vault door would probably be better, but what this does, let me take my clipping off. Is as you're running, you can you hit it, e, e, you go through it, and you know it's closed behind you. This way, you don't have to, you know, open it, run in, turn around, and do that to keep the zombies out. Um, you always want to keep your doors closed on your traders and your base and stuff like that. So just ee e your way through it, and that's a great way to open and close uh, doors that have any type of animation. Doesn't work on all doors, but for most larger doors and vault doors and stuff like that, it works. It's a great alternative to having power, where like you don't have to have a camera. Like otherwise, you'd need a camera set up on both sides with a power source running it, and you know you walk up and the door opens and closes behind you. It's just a great way to kind of resolve that. That's one tip. Um, steel, early game steel. I already told you the lamp posts. Uh, is one uh, source of it. The other one is non-functioning vending machines. Now, I haven't seen any, but if you ever see a vending machine, um, if it works, that means it has electricity and it has product in it. You can buy it here. So let's see if any of these are non-functioning. <clears throat> Take fly mode and collision off. Yeah, so the ones you can search like this, they're non-functioning. So if you wrench these down, you can get steel from it. And let me take your visibility off. There you go, steel. So that's the other source of steel that I know about. So you got steel from all these, all these broken vending machines, all the street lamps are good early uh, source of steel. Next tip, uh, to get wheels, you can craft them. Which I think you need acid. Um, oil, acid, iron, coal in a in your inventory. So that's not bad. So polymers, acid, iron, oil, coal. So it's not hard to craft the wheels. But I find uh, when you get started, the easier way is to take a wrench. Not any other tool. It has to be a wrench. And the wrench tires down. Um, they, will, they have a chance of giving you wheels. And I would like to show that if I could. Yeah, I'll keep the clip off. And they're usually all over the, the ground. If you're on multiplayer server, a lot of people don't even realize it or care about it. Or they only want a couple wheels anyway, so... Yeah, they're only gonna smash tires until they get two wheels for a motorbike or a mini bike. Of course, I'm gonna have a string of bad luck. Yep, there's one. Usually, you only get one wheel per. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I got a wheel from the tire, so use a wrench or a dismantling mechanics tool on a tire that's laying around you can get wheels um, also there is a really good uh, place for wheels let me see if this map has one here's another tip how to teleport when you're a single player open teleporter I think it's called uh, race it's like a raceway is it the mini bike track Yes, this one has it. Look at all the wheels. So, wheels and polymers. A lot of people have a hard time finding polymers. Like, I'll ask people, how do you get polymers? Oh, go inside the apartment building and smack all the curtains out. Oh my god, it takes hours. Just find this POI or another POI like it that has all these wheels. And, um, not only can you get tires, but you can get polymers. See the polymers? But that's not the greatest part. I'm just looking for a wheel here to show you can get wheels from these. There's a wheel. When you use your axe... Oh, 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 I don't even have an axe. Let me s through the magic of creative mood. Through the magic of creative mood. Titanium cobalt axe. Combat... Oh, I thought it said cobalt. Combat axe. 
Oh, I didn't even know they had that axe in there. I would have been using that on some things. Oh, man, I, can you put that on an auger? Sorry, I just want to check something real quick. No, you can't. Okay. Can you put it on a pickaxe? A little distraction here, but I've never used or seen that mod before um, in, in Darkness Falls, so I didn't realize that was available. Let me just get a pickaxe and an axe. I'll do titanium. Why not have the best? I'm just curious if that can go. Give me block damage and a pickaxe. Nah, so that's only for an axe. Wait, what? It's not lighting up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's only for an axe. Well, that's still nice. Let me just double, double check with the auger. Yeah, you can't put it in the auger. Anyway, you take your axe um, and smack these and you just get lots and lots of polymer. I don't think pickaxe is better. No, pickaxe is not better. Just take your axe, donk, polymers, polymers, polymers. And you can just go around this whole track and get a probably about a thousand polymers, I'd imagine, through this whole track. So again, that was the race track, I think. I think there's other ones as well. Check this one out. I think there's some that this one doesn't have many tires. And there's another one that don't have many tires. Mini bike, mini bike. Yeah, so it looks like the mini bike ones are the ones that have tires. So mini bike racetrack, a good source of tires. So you want to look, uh, look for them, keep your eyes out for them. Uh, for resources. Through the magic of video, video editing, I was able to just set this up real quick. Uh, my next tip is when you're using power doors or a power drawbridge or anything like that that you can uh, remove by accident, a lot of times by habit what I'll do, and maybe it's just me, but I'll run up and I'll go to hit E just from habit or double E, uh, like I showed you earlier to open and close, and E is actually the same thing for take, and then you only got like two seconds to realize that you're about to dismantle your door and your whole wiring system. Um, so just a quick tip, and this isn't just a Darkness Falls tip, this is just an in general tip. Just punch it one time. Donk. Do like one or two damage to it. If something's damaged, it can no longer be picked up. Must repair before picking up. So that way, if you, you'll stop with the... Uh, accidentally picking your stuff up and destroying your base thing just punch it once it look it's got two hit points off of it from one punch don't use a pickaxe and put a big dent in it just punch it one time that's, i think that's the least damaging thing you can do and uh you're good now i can't accidentally pick it up it'll only function how it's supposed to and that's that tip through the magic of editing again uh my next tip is in darkness falls um you can fit in a one block square, so it's not like that in vanilla. Um, there's some weird, whatever they do for the blocks and the block textures is different in the Darkness Falls mod. It allows you to kind of exploit this a little bit. Um, you can just crouch down. Oof, actually, um, let me put a ramp up because I don't have my jump up. I'm so used to having jump higher spaces that uh, I thought I'd be able to jump up there. So if you're crouched down, you can fit into one by one by one block spaces. And I don't know why I'm not going in there for some reason. It's weird that there we go. Something was jamming me up. Um, which allows you to see through the blocks. So as long as there's so as long as there's a solid connection, all the other blocks will disappear. You'll only see the surface. Um, so you know, basically, what this allows you to do is create a bunker. That you can protect yourself in and you can shoot through this so as long as well as seeing through it you can shoot through it so you could have 20 blocks out here thick and and have a big 20 block wall and fit into a little uh single space and you'll kind of clip your vision but also your bullets can shoot through and you can shoot zombies or whatever you can just kind of sit in this protected block area and shoot through it and hit the other zombies i actually found this out on my first playthrough um i accommodated somebody's base who left the game and they had a real nice base setup so 
I had just taken it. You were allowed, like, if somebody was gone for X amount of weeks, you could just kind of go in there and confiscate their base. Uh, so that's what I did. I went in there, plopped my land claim down, and claimed it, and they had a really nice um, uh, horde base set up, but it was really weird. It basically had you crawl down. It was like a pyramid, and then you had, they had you crawl down into this space. And basically what it allowed you to do is just sit in this pyramid fully protected and have a 360 view of being able to shoot through titanium blocks. That's kind of how I found that out. Um, but not aside from like exploiting it to shoot from inside like a protected bunker. Um, it's also good for like um, if you're doing a treasure chest. Um, let me actually summon a shovel. Actually, I have an auger, right? Let me just use an auger. So if you're doing a treasure chest, dig down a few blocks. Pick a cardinal direction, west, south, like on one of these corners. Just knock a single block out, and then you'll be able to squeeze into it. And now you can clip through. And like I said, anything that's solid, you'll be able to see through. So since all this is solid ground under here it looks like I could see through eternity but what that lets you do is when there's a treasure chest over there that's not solid ground like so when you're doing like a buried treasure you can just kind of dig a hole and look and go oh, okay it's over there and then pop back out of the hole and go over to where approximately where it's at and get closer to it and then you'll know exactly where it is so you can kind of cheese POIs you can cheese uh, protection by crawling into a little hole um, Let's say you were digging a hole through a wall, you were trying to get through a POI and it was concrete. Um, you only have to dig a hole um, one deep. So it kind of saves you a little bit of time, you know, if, if you're trying to dig through here. But you didn't want to dig through the whole wall, you can kind of utilize that to slip right through one block. You don't have to smack down two blocks. Sorry, have it. Gotta get them books. Um, and I guess that leads me into my next tip. Check the ovens for grills and pots. When you're starting out, you want to cook yucca and all that stuff, you need grills and pots. And you're not going to make a forge until level 10 unless you take builder. So unless you take builder, you're not going to have that to cook with. So you want to try to find one from a trader. But the most reliable source in Darkness Falls for those is a wall oven. So you want to hit the residential areas. Stay away from the big industrial POIs at first they have harder mobs more mobs just hit the residential areas they're easy to gain access to and you can grab yourself a cooking pot and a grill pr relatively quick I mean sometimes I've I've been in situations um, where no matter how hard I tried I could not find a grill and I was starving to death but that's more of a rarity I think that is my next tip uh, my other tip is watch out when you're looting cars in Darkness Falls. Cars do have alarm systems. So when you loot uh, a car, of course there's no alarm system. When you loot a car, of course no alarm system. When you loot a car, an alarm system can go off. That will alert and trigger any zombies nearby. Um, and then they'll come after you and try to eat your face and that is no good when you're first starting out as a newbie You don't want that uh, Alarm going off actually that I am my very first playthrough Story time very first playthrough. I think I jumped on the hated cruise server darkness fall server and it was it was uh, It was completely dead except for one guy. He's like the more hardcore guy on that server He's always the first guy to hit max levels. You know, he plays all the time. I guess he just loves darkness falls but uh, Dark One, I think his name, I think he's Australian. Uh, pretty cool guy. He helped me and my wife out a lot. We were, <laughs> we jumped on. The server was like day 600, 700. Everybody had long gone. He's the only one playing except for maybe one or two other people popping on here and there. And uh, me and my wife were just bombarded. We never played Darkness Falls. We were, What's this? What's that do? What's this do? What's this do? How can you do this? Can you do that? <laughs> like, he was nice about it. He was just answering our questions as best he could. Um... But my first playthrough on that, I was like, all right, we built a little base. It was like day two for us. I was like, all right, I'm going to go explore. You stay here and finish this stuff. I'm just going to go out and see what I can find. I walked to the nearest gas station. 
I wanted to see if I could get some like gas or something or figure out what I could find. And I seen all these like, uh, like it looked like there was fire on the ground. I was like, that's weird. There's fire on the ground. I walked up to a car I hit the car and the alarm went off and the fire stood up. It was zombies on fire. I was like, whoa, that's cool. Zombies on fire. And then all of a sudden they went, foof, foof, started throwing fireballs at me. And everything was exploding and they almost hit me and I'm on fire and I'm burning and I'm a newbie. I'm panicking. I'm running. I'm running full speed. These things are faster than normal zombies. He's chasing me. He's shooting fireballs at me. I'm like, ah, I'm running full speed to the trader. Oh my God, I'm going to die. I don't want to die. This is my first like day and I'm going to die. And uh, I make it to the trader and the trader is lighting them up with the gun. And like two or three traders, the, the guards are lighting up the zombie with a gun. And um, I'm, it, he won't die. I'm like, what the heck is going on? What? Like, I'm freaking out. I almost died. I set off a car alarm. I had no idea about car alarms. You know, my heart's racing. I somehow managed to run to a trader, and the guards are killing this thing. But it's not dying. It's just sitting there. So I, you know, get a little closer and look at it. It's getting knocked down from the guards knocked down on her gun. But it keeps getting back up. And then it gets down, and it gets back up. And I'm watching it. Its hit points are regenerating. And the guards are doing massive damage, but they're just not doing enough damage to where it can get it down. So I had a shotgun and um, I just ran right up to its head, like, like this bush with its head. And I just just unloading a shotgun on it, like die, 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 die. With my shotgun blast point blank to the head and the other guards killing it, um, we managed to kill it and it died. Now, knowing what I know now, that was insane, and I don't know how I didn't die at that point. That was a demon shooting fireballs at me when I was, like, a newbie. And um, they have incredible regen that you have to either disable or overpower in order to kill them. And I didn't know that the guards could kill me, so I'm, like, standing right, like, luckily, I guess I was standing just outside of their line of sight, so I wasn't getting shot by the three guards shooting at it somehow managed to go up there and kill the demon um i don't know how i didn't die in that scenario but that was like i think it's things like that that forge your love for a mod or a game because i was just like what the heck was going on a lot of zombies here what the heck is going on you know it kind of like sealed my my love for the game and that's why i also said at the beginning i really recommend your first playthrough go through it unknowledgeable right don't watch this video like that's why i said like don't watch this video if this is your first playthrough that's my first tip and that'll always be my first tip i'm not putting this video out to spoil the game for you i want you to fall in love for the game i'm putting this video out because it's a very complex mod and there's a lot of goofy things in it that uh you might not realize and it could take a lot of it could take a year of playing it over and over and over and over again before you find out all this stuff and that's kind of why i'm putting the video out so that's why I said in the beginning, recommend playing through it, uh, ignorant, and learning what you can the first time. Second time, watch this video and go, ah, okay, okay, I know that now, and then do a more efficient playthrough. Um, it's about having those heart racing experiences and learning more so than uh, trying to be having a perfect playthrough and not dying and knowing exactly what to do. Okay, so I just teleported over into some grasslands here. Um, just wanted to show you my next tip for mining. It's a little different. Um, I don't even remember what vanilla is anymore. Um, fly moon, no collision. Um, so to find ore, you would just want to find these boulders that are sticking up. If you find the boulders that are sticking up and then hit them with your pickaxe or your auger, it gives you rock plus something. See over there in the bottom uh, right hand corner. So I know there's a nitrate vein underneath of this. So if I dug, if I dig straight down, I'm going to hit nitrate. So that's how you find ore. So you just basically, you want to run around. Let me put fly mode back on so I'm faster. You want to run around and just whack these boulders. So that one has shale underneath of it. Of course, because we're in the desert. You're in the desert, you're going to find tons of shale. Um, let me see if I can find one that's not shale. Yeah, most of it's going to be shale in the desert, but that's that's how you do it. And the reason why I went to grass is because I wanted to show you another tip about mining ore, and I can't really show that to you in the desert. Let's see what this one is. All right, so there we go, some iron. So let's let's dig down. I think I have 
visible one, which is why you can't see my ogre. Alright, so I found the iron. But if you look, I mean, this is probably a bad spot. The ore nodes are surrounded by sand. So you see how you're getting sand, and then it's ore. Sand, and then it's ore. Um, the ore will have a big chunk, and then surrounding the ore will be a small layer of sand. So that's how you know if you're hitting the edge or hitting a new chunk or what, whatever. Um, you can actually kind of follow the sand around and kind of dig out, dig all around the ore node if you wanted to. If you wanted to just kind of see what the ore nodes actually look like. But I just wanted to let you know if, you, if you're getting sand in the in the grasslands or something like that, um, it's because there's ore nodes. But finding ore is not difficult. You know, it's pretty pretty much like vanilla. There's iron, uh, iron, uh, nitrate, lead in the grasslands. There's shale. I think there's some coal in the desert. In the burnt biome, there's coal and I think some shale and some nitrate. Actually, maybe shale's only in the desert. Um, in the snow biome, I forget. It's been so long. I never go to the snow biome. But I think it has like the same stuff as the grasslands, just different ratios. Um, but that's basically it. You just go around, smack the boulders in the appropriate biome, and um, you'll be able to see what resource is underneath of it. Now, just because... So that's iron. Just because there's no boulder here, there's still probably tons of resources underneath. There's The way the world's designed, there's just nodes all throughout the whole thing. You know, dirt for 10 or 15 spaces, and then a big node. And that goes down... All 50 blocks or whatever 60 blocks to the to the bedrock to the bottom level so just keep that in mind you can actually just dig straight down I know a lot of people what they do is they build a base and then in their base they have an entrance to their mine they'll dig down to bedrock and then they'll dig out outside of their land claim out you know to a desert or whatever and they just mine whatever they find uh, that way uh, which is pretty viable especially if you're a builder it's a great way to get experience are you coming after me boy Wish you could uh, tame pets in this uh, in this mod. That would be cool. Um, yeah, so that was that one. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, let's talk about uranium, plutonium, and titanium ore and mining it. Um, oh, what do we got here? We got a behemoth is killing a dog. Oh, is this a behemoth versus bear fight? Ah, maybe not. So. In the wasteland is the only place you're going to find uranium, titanium, and plutonium. They look like lead, iron, and a nitrate. So basically, same thing you would find in the grasslands, but the, the skins are the same, but it's going to give you a different material. Um, you need a radiation suit, a radiation anti-radiation pills, uh, or the radiation mods in your armor to be able to come out here and uh, kill it, unless... Currently it's bugged unless you're on a uh, PvE server, but then it just kind of gives you fuzzy, fuzzy fuzz in front of your face and doesn't hurt you. Um, so what you want to do is the same thing. You can go and bang on rocks and the rocks will show you, but in the wasteland, as you can see, there's not a lot of rocks, right? There's not a lot of boulders sticking up in the wastelands that you can knock on to see what's underneath. So honestly, it's everywhere underneath you. Um, so your best bet is to not run around looking for boulders to smash. Oh, excuse me. Not run around looking for boulders to smash. So as you can see, that one has um, plutonium under it. Um, just I just tend to dig a hole. You can find a spot that's near where it's easy for you, like maybe like on the edge of uh, the border. So what a lot of people do is they'll get into like the... Um, Depending on your map, like on this map, the burn biome is on the edge of the wasteland, but some some can have grass. But what a lot of people might want to do is go right to the edge, because since harder monsters spawn out there and easier monsters spawn in here, is then dig a hole down. Let me take off uh, collision, because it's going to be hard for me to mine and fly. You know, just dig a hole down. Oh look, I found some. <laughs> it's literally everywhere. Um, but what I was going to say is just dig a hole down. Sorry for the volume. Dig a hole down, go in a direction until you hit some. 
um, go in the direction of the wasteland. That way your entry hole is not in a hard area. Um, and that way if monsters detect you, most likely they're not going to path all the way back to your hole, run down your tunnel, and get to you. They're going to try to dig down, and uh, it won't be that big of a deal. Um, but uh, the other tip I wanted to, other than how to locate it, is how to, once you locate one, you found the other two. They tend to spawn in a cluster of three. So right now we have, um, what is this? Your uranium looks like uh, iron. If we dug around, remember what I told you about sand? It gets um, the outside of nodes are coated with sand. So we can find, we just follow that sand around and just dig it out. And don't mine the ore because look how long it takes to mine through that stuff. Just keep digging it out and look around. Try to find the edge of the node. Once you find the edge of the node, you can just keep going around it. Uh, we found, looks like we found some shale. And you're basically just going to skim. I'll try to talk louder because this is loud. Or maybe I'll just reduce the volume in the uh, post, in the edit. Um, but you basically just want to go around and keep going around. Who, kn who knows how big this node is? It'll eventually run you into titanium and... Um, was that plutonium or uranium? Plutonium. So every time I hit plutonium, I'm just going back in the other direction. It could be under it, could be above it. I usually try to stay vertical. What's concerning me here though is the lack of sand. It's connecting right to the rock in some places. I don't know what that means. Oh, and here we found the titanium node. So if you're on an online server and they have reset regions, I highly suggest mining in reset regions. Um, that's another tip because once you find the node, um, you can just mark it, you know? So I have titanium here. So I usually just put a T for titanium. I know back this way, I can just follow my path back. And over here, I know, I have uranium, so I'll just um, put a marker there, a U for uranium. Now I just need plutonium. And look, if we had made a triangle, I now know titanium's here, uranium's here, plutonium is either here or here, most likely. It's usually in like a triangular cluster, so basically just keep going around, um... You know, you found your titanium. If you're just looking for titanium, stop right there, but... Keep going around, and then eventually, just keep digging out the titanium, and you'll find the uranium, too. So, that's the tip. It spawns in clusters of three. You can kind of just dig around it. Is that not reloading? I can't reload when I'm invisible. I guess I'll just do it for the sake of the video. I don't have a miner light on. Still titanium. Get titanium again. Anyway, this video is long enough, but you, you get the premise, right? I'm just digging around. Uh, the ore node until I find the other ore node. Or you could just dig a straight line and power your way right through it until you find multiple nodes. You know, however you want to do it, but this stuff is all over. You get people who will be like, I can't find it, where is it at? Literally, if you just dig a straight line, go down a little bit and dig a straight line, you'll find it. Uh, it'll be near impossible. If you go 20 20, 30 spaces and don't find any, I would be surprised. Oh, there's the other resource. And that's the stuff that looks like uh, uh, nitrate. So that is the plutonium. A little bit further out than I thought. Um, so this is probably plutonium. We're probably like at the edge of it. So all this is titanium, uranium, plutonium. So I'm going to just kind of put it right here. And then I have my 
trio. And if this is in a reset zone, I can farm this. Out. This will be more a, a note of the stuff goes a long way. Um, but if this is in a reset zone, when this resets, it'll all repopulate and I'll know exactly where it's at every time. So that's why I always suggest mining in a reset zone on online servers and also just for server stability. All right, so I hope that was a helpful tip of finding the end game resources. Next tip, not every NPC you see out here is a survivor. Some of them are bandits and they will attack you and they hurt. So be careful of them. Watch out for bandits. They're not always survivors, especially when you get into the harder areas like the burnt biome and the wasteland there. Okay, so my next part of the guide, I guess since I'm sitting in my base in Darkness Falls, I might as well show you some of the different uh, workbenches that they have in Darkness Falls that you're going to encounter um, throughout your stay. Um, and just some different items maybe, and weapons and stuff like that. Um, okay, so let me see. Where where can I start with? Um, just one tip in general. These new writable lockboxes are a very nice way to organize. It's a lot better than doing chest and then sticking a sign up. Um, you can just pop them up there and then you know edit whatever you want them to say. And I, you know, it's my chest to for my inks and my books and my bundles of skill notes and all that cool stuff. All right, so let's start with workbenches. All right, so when you first start, your main things you're going to create are your workbench, your standard normal workbench, and I think I have some forges. I might have gotten rid of the forges, the placeable, and your standard forges when you start off. Um, that and that. So when you start, you're gonna have your forges. You can make iron in the forges and all the normal stuff. Um, in forges and darkness falls, again, you don't need to smelt. You just craft with what you have in your inventory. Um, just like a workbench or whatever. You need fuel. You can have tools. Um, um, I think the die set is so you can have weapons, if I'm not mistaken tool used to forge to craft your munitions yeah so like ammunition and stuff like that whatever's forge related you need the tool and die set for um so you start out with forge and workbench don't need the smelt um the next workbenches that i usually do are this metal workbench which the tools for this are welding and uh calipers 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 um these, are, as I mentioned earlier, but I'll just mention again since we're talking, these are drop only, so you're not going to craft these. So you want to uh, go in and look for the hardware boxes, the um, working stiff boxes, and you'll, you can find them in there. Or keep an eye out on the vendors. The vendors sell them for a couple of thousand dukes, and you can get them that way. So drops, boxes, or vendors, you're not going to be able to craft these. Without the welding torch specifically, I think blocks a lot of the recipes that are going to allow you to progress. I think that is more for crafting like weapons and stuff. Um, so you want to keep an eye out for them. Oh, so I think the welding tor torch blocks your crucible. I think you have to make crucibles. Uh, you have to make crucibles in the metal workstation. That's a workbench metal workstation yeah it's just well you don't have to but it reduces the cost so it's basically like an improved workbench see how it reduces the cost but you need a welding torch so when you're starting the iron the iron's pretty difficult to get the uh, you know all that stuff you don't want to have to you know drop more than you have to um, oh actually it needs an additional thing there crucible what was that that it needed Oh yeah, it needed 20 oil, and oil's precious when you're starting out too, because that's each oil is a repair kit. So, uh, workbench very good to have. Um, then after workbench is usually for me the um, tailoring workstation where you can make like clothing and uh, armor, like light armor and clothing and hazmat and backpacks. Usually I pop this out when it's time to make a backpack. I'll also make a college jacket just because they're easy to make. College jackets give you like a 5% run speed, 5% mobility. Um, but you can craft all that stuff in here. 
you do need a sewing kit. So usually once I'm of level and I have a sewing kit, I'll craft a tailoring workstation, make a college jacket, um, and make a medium backpack and anything else I need clothing wise that I haven't already looted. Um, the uh, writing desk is for the skill books. Um, I showed you that earlier when we were discussing skills, but this is where you craft them. So you can craft all your different uh, books in here. I don't craft anything because because the uh, bundle of skill notes are so valuable and rare and hard to get most of the time on online on online dedicated servers because other people are looting them too. Um, I don't waste them on trying to build up skills. Uh, I'll just use the ability to build up skills because you can get these little uh, like bladed weapons notes will give you a skill point in bladed weapons. And it only costs 15, but it costs the whole ink and 15 of your skill notes for one skill point. And to me, that's a waste. I wouldn't do that. I would solely use them on blank class papers. And then the next thing I would use them on is uh, crafting your mastery books. And then you don't need, you only need inks and research notes for futures now. But once you're done your masteries and all your skills, then everything, they're all extra at that point. Then you can start popping out generic skill notes. Generic skill notes are nice because they give you a skill point that you can spend in your skill tree. Instead of getting a level, you can actually craft that book to get a skill point. So that's kind of what I would use them on, but I make that, I make the writing jet desk so I can, as soon as I have enough notes to get a new class is when I'm crafting one of them. Um, and then with forges, when you start upgrading your forges, the next one is your big forge. So that's this one. It's kind of cool looking. It looks like a big fireplace. A lot of people use it for decoration after they're done with it, if they're building something more than a utility box type base. Um, but the difference with this is you can put a crucible in it. So this is the first forge that you can make steel bars, forge steel with. Um, let me get rid of some of this concrete here. I got so much cement. I just make it. I don't even need it. I just keep making it because I had stone. I had so much excess stone from mining. Um, so yeah, so you make this for steel, and then usually by the time I get a 250 steel, I can make these advanced forges. And the advanced forges are nice, uh, as I discussed before, because you don't need fuel. You can just run these things 24-7. Um, I just keep keep running, keep sticking stuff in them. That's why I have so much cement. I have the stone. They don't cost fuel. I just dump 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 worth of uh, um, 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 cement crafting into them and then log off and come back on later and it's done um so they're very nice to have uh, as soon as you get the um advanced forges you're definitely going to pop out you know three four five six of them a lot of people go crazy they'll have 10 20 of them um and they just start doing mass production um I'm, uh, you want to make sure you have your bellow uh, bellows in them for crafting speed and anvil in them as well um just to reduce, just to help with the speeds and stuff like that and make sure you can do all your recipes. This is the end game forge other than the fusion forge, which is when you get into the labs, you can, um, you can, when you get high enough, you can craft these or you can buy these from Caitlin or you can use the one in a lab if you can't do either one of them, but they're basically for crafting. You won't really use this. It's basically for crafting laser pistols or laser, laser rifles or you know converting plutonium um, and uranium uh, into enriched uranium which is used in crafting all that stuff you don't need it for forged titanium I don't know if the recipes are less any less let's check iron is five that's ten and that's twenty let's check the this one over here forged iron is five ten and 20 so it's the same it doesn't reduce the cost any um, but again it doesn't need fuel it's, you know you, anything you can do in another forge I think you can do in this forge um, but really you only need you only need this as far as I know for crafting laser stuff and titanium stuff um, the um, portable lathe this is drop only as well it can be found on vendors or found in boxes or usually dropped from monsters found in 
the parachute thingies that come down, the drop supplies. Um, I never have a problem with the lathe. One, because usually I don't make uh, rifle, pistol, gun builds. I'm usually doing other builds, melee, turret, stuff like that lately. So I don't have a problem with them. Um, but they can get difficult difficult to find. Sometimes you just have a bad luck run and you just don't find them and you're stuck and you want to make guns. So this is uh, used to make uh, weapons. Uh, I, I haven't even used it. I don't even have a battery in it. But if you want to make uh, coiled weapons, um, you want to make your various um, various weapons, your shotguns, stuff like that, all the weapons um, only need parts. So, oh, I'm... So I'm sorry, this isn't to make the weapons. Let me rephrase that. This is to what to make the weapon parts. So you can find weapon parts. Let me show you a box of these. These are like all the weapon parts. Like, I haven't crafted a single one of these. This is just all, some of the ones that I found. Um, I throw away a lot of them. Um, but the weapons that you craft, so here's a shotgun stock. Let me look at recipes. That's used in the auto shotgun, which just needs parts, long barrel, stock, and receiver. So it's a little more realistic. You're actually using the parts of the weapon to make the weapon. Um, I find a lot of these, but if you're missing one, two, three, whatever, you can come to the lathe and say you need a barrel. You just need some pipes and you can make a barrel. Say you need an AR receiver because you didn't find any or you used them all or whatever. Forged steel and mechanical parts. So this just lets you make the parts needed to make the uh, weapons. And I think the weapons are just made in a regular workbench. And then you have a working oven, which is nice. It's like an upgraded campfire. Um, it does not take fuel. It works off of a battery and it does not deplete the battery. So it lasts forever. So you can easily just load up a thousand water if you want to. You can cook foods. This is where you cook all your foods. This is the most efficient uh, glue maker for bones. Um, actually, just before I came in here, I popped out like 600 glue that I had crafting in here. Um, so this is very nice to have. It costs one skill point once you're, once you're of the level to craft it. Uh, very good to have. Also, working utility sink uh, where I keep my water. Basically, if you have an empty jar, you can fill it up without having to go to a puddle uh, someplace else, which is, you know, just convenience. Short of doing the utility sink, you can do starting out, you can do the same method that you use for the farm. You can just get a little water barrel and drop it into like, you can actually put it in your base or near your base, outside your base, and just like put it in a hole in the ground or something and use that. There's no reason why you need the utility sink. I just like having it in my base with a sink uh, near the stove. Uh, mortar and pestle again is for the seeds and crafting food. And I think that's it. Oh, the laser workbench is very nice. So one thing I haven't touched on yet, and this is a good point to, uh, to add to the guide, is upgrading. So let me see if I have something I can upgrade here. All right, so I got all this power armor, right? Mm -hmm. Let me do some gloves. So I have all this power armor. If you go into your workbench, uh, that's chemistry station, sorry. If you go into this workbench, you'll see this box that says combine item A, item B, result. So if you put item A and a same item B, the result will be the durability is a little bit higher. Um, if you do something higher, uh, basically it'll increase the durability. I wanted to show you that it can create, create, create eight the level higher um but the workbench can go up to oh, got some weapons crafting in here i forgot about um the workbench can go up to i think 50 and then in order to go to 80 you need the laser workbench the laser workbench is just like the workbench except that it um i think it might be faster i don't think it reduces uh, material requirements for anything. I could be wrong about that, but I never noticed it. But basically, the thing that's good about the laser workbench is you can now get things past 71, because 71 is like your maximum crafting. So if you did want a level 80 whatever, you can just keep combining them until they're level 80. So let's let's try that, right? Let's try to... I'm going to use my 26 to repair my 53 a little bit. Let's see what a 46 does with the 53 almost fully repairs it 
Why is my 46? Oh, because the 49 has less durability. So I think it goes off the durability value. So that's going to basically, by eating this glove, and this glove is going to give me a fully repaired 53. I think that's better because if I repaired this and then repaired that and then try to combine them, remember it's going to drop down five. So this will turn into what a 47 and this will turn into a 41. So I think it's better results to just use to sacrifice this instead of repairing them and then sacrificing them. So we take the 53. Now when we drop that 26 in there, it's going to probably pop that into a 54 fully repaired so that's you want to get it fully repaired and then as you start popping durability into it it's going to increase so now that one's going to pop it into a 55 so you can keep combining stuff like that for example here let me use these coil pistols right so a 61 and a 61 will make a 67 67 and a 61 now it's a red 73 nice and upgraded now it's a 79 i do another one and it'll be an 80 Boom, now I have a max level coil pistol. And that's how you get, that's how you upgrade. So what's nice about this upgrade system is it reverses the durability loss of you repairing. But also when you find a bunch of crap like military gloves, you can just be like, ah, oh, well, you know, nobody wants a 59 and a 55. So you can just kind of combine them together, stick them in the box for later, and just combine them all together. Uh, which is, might what I, might what I, that is probably what I'm going to do with these guns. I'll just combine them into nicer guns and sell them. Um, so that's the that's the laser workbench. That's what that does. It's like a normal workbench, but you can upgrade things higher. I think you can go to 50 in the normal and then 71 in the laser. Um, what else is good? Oh, um, time in darkness falls. Time in darkness falls. You cannot tell the time. You see how I have the time here? That is only because I have a watch mod on my uh, wrist, which is one of the benefits of one of the masteries. I think it might be survivalist, I'm not sure. Mega Crush, Radio, Survival Torch. Uh, one of the masteries allows you to craft a watch, and I forget which one it is. But let's say you don't have that yet. Um, what what do you do? So the only way to tell time is go to a trader. When you go to a trader base and open the trader, you can tell time um, so that's and the traders are open 24 7 so that's the only way to tell time when you're starting out if you get a little bit of extra money from selling like steel bars or iron bars or something like that the trader will sell vending machines you can pick up the vending machine and then put it in your base and then whenever you want to tell the time ta-da tells you the day and the time so that's a little little tip and hack for your base gives you a little bit of clock in your base so you you, you can tell the time without having to travel all the way to the trader. Um, what else is different about Darkness Falls as far as workbenches? I think that's it for the workbenches. Uh, if there's other workbenches that I'm missing, they're probably not very relevant. I don't think there's any other workbenches that I'm missing. Um, these are the best. I love that you don't have to smelt. Let me pick this guy up to... And, uh, you know, it just adds... It's a little confusing at first, but it just adds some extra ambiance, uh, extra things, extra um, crafting that vanilla was missing a little bit. So it just gives them a nice little tier. Um, some other things you can craft. Is that a bunny rabbit on my... How the heck did he get up there? Other things you can craft are the coops. So like these are the chicken coops. And how you utilize them is... Actually, let me go show you because this is actually something that people probably won't understand like they'll be like how do you use these chicken coops so get some animal feed which is made from apples in the mortar and pestle and then you just reload them with this and it's, it is it is a little weird the animation is a little weird and it doesn't really show you that it's loaded so you got to pay attention you just and that's loaded and then that will grow a nest on top of it and then you can loot the nest and it's a little slow but you just load these with apple seeds. I, I don't need any more eggs, so I'm good for now. And then this is a snare trap. Um, honestly, I never use them. Uh, I don't need bones and meat and fat from them ever, so I don't ever use snare traps. But that's what a snare trap will look like. When it's caught, it'll have like a box that you can loot, and it gives you all that stuff. 
Um, I think that's about it for workbenches. Let me, uh, let me figure out what I gotta talk about next. Let me shoot the laser gun. Pew! Yeah, let me show you the damage of a, a 176 with a modded out, uh, laser bladed sword. I got a blessed metal mod, which, actually, let me show you some of the cool mods that they got here. Uh, modify. Bless Metal Mod increases damage to undead targets. Bladed Tip Mod um, uh, degrades the weapon slower. Hunter Mod. Now this is something people are always like, Oh, Hunter Mods are made so you can kill people. Uh, it gives 100% damage to living beings. But watch, watch the damage. 176. 113. 176. Now this isn't just a Darkness Falls thing. This is a... Um, this is a seven days to die thing. I've noticed that a lot. You pop a hunter mod into your weapons and it'll jack the damage up uh, a whole lot. So that's like actually one of the most important mods in my opinion. Laser battery uh, gives melee weapons the ability to disable demonic regen when you hit them. Temper blade just uh, reduces your, um, uh, lowers how much it degrades. This is just decreasing your stamina and then this is just another thing to put it in there and give it a couple points of damage um what do i have in here just just your standard stuff hunter mod bless mod magazine extender scope and a full auto um oh there is one more workstation i don't have it built you know what this guy over here has it built so let me show you that the workstation um that you create um motorbikes and um, hot cars and hot rods and 4 by 4s This look at this guy's base. He just has all of his workstations sitting outside. All right, so this right here is the mechanics workstation, and what this allows you to do is create the 4 by 4 truck, um, the motorcycle, all the muscle cars. And then it allows you to create uh, mods as well. So where are the mods? We've got a vehicle armor plating mod, which um, reduces damage uh, passed to the players. So it basically, you know how you can take damage when you're in a vehicle? It just reduces that by 50%. Uh, the vehicle engine economy reduces your fuel usage. And your engine turbo increases uh, minimum and maximum speeds by 200%. So it makes it a lot faster. So your vehicle will literally zoom and lag out the server. <laughs> uh, spikes just, I think, does damage to zombies. So if you like running over zombies. And then you got a headlight mod, which just makes your headlights even brighter. And then the rest of the stuff down here is just for actually crafting the various cars. The engine and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what the... Can you make batteries with that? Oh, I guess you can make batteries in it, too. So that's what this is um, used for. That's a mechanic mastery allows you to make that. And yeah, I think that's about it. That's all the different uh, stations he has. What's he doing? He finally... Oh, my God. He made the whole base, his whole base out of titania. I never see this guy play, but yet he's, like, building high-end uh, traps and horde bases. But I never see him out gathering resources, which is weird. He must know something I don't. I wonder if he's a doopy. A doopy duper. I don't know. But cool. Looks like uh, he don't care about his workstations, though. He's just using them bare minimum to get done what he needs done. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the next tip. Let me check my notes and see what else I need to talk about. So my next tip is gardening. Um, you don't when when you when you get the skill um, armor and you get your first points in living off the land, you can make a scrap hoe. And what you do with that is you just take any ground here and you just till it. You right click it and it just changes it into plantable dirt. Then you can plant seeds in it. So you can make seeds with a mortar pestle. Um, and then you can plant the seeds. So obviously, obviously, I have corn, potato, coffee. I have tomatoes for juices and dyes. I have goldenrod for yellow dye and snowberry for blue dye. So that's my dye patch slash drinks. 
I got my coffee here for my coffee drinks, potato and corn for my um, um, hobo stew that I use, and that's really all I need for my garden. These were my original apple trees that uh, that I used to eat. Actually, it was the weirdest thing. Uh, I had these apple trees over here, and they got destroyed um, on a horde night. For whatever reason, the AI went straight for my apple trees and smashed them, and i never seen that before. So what I did is I just built them up and put some dirt in these little things and just made like a little uh, cute little boundary thing. Um, and that way they were protected and never got messed with. But I don't even use the apples anymore. Um, but what I wanted to show you for gardening is how to water them AFK. So in Darkness Falls, um, all plants need water to grow. I think what it does is each grow stage, it checks if there's water source nearby. If there is, it'll utilize it. It'll actually drink the water. That's why some of this is dry. Because one, one of the plants probably utilize some of the water. Um, I don't think your plants will die if they don't have water, but they won't grow. So it needs to have a water source at least four blocks away. So one, two, three, four is the max distance that I can grow from this water source right here. Now these are rain, rain barrels or rain catchers? Let me double check. Rain... Rain catcher, very easy to make. What are the requirements? No requirements. I think you just know them uh, from the start, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit of iron, a little bit of wood, and you can place them down. So what you want to do is dig a one block deep trench going down however long you want. I just have like 10 or 11 blocks, just enough for my crops. And then every, either every other or skip two spots, one, two, put a rain catcher. Um, you want to dig down an additional uh, block to put the rain catcher in. You don't want to put the rain catcher here. The water will come up over and the water will wipe out your plants. It'll destroy your plants and destroy your seeds. So you want to countersink the rain catcher. Have one, one block deep for the water to overflow out of the rain catcher. And that's it. Like The game just kind of assumes that it rains every now and again. And the rain catcher basically generates water. This is a very easy way to not have to worry about irrigation because otherwise what you would have to do is have a bucket out here and you'd have to come out here and dump water manually into um, you know into your crops and that's just a big hassle big mess and you spill it and you destroy your crops just pop pop some rain catchers down into a deep counter sink them too deep have the trench one deep and you're good to go you don't ever have to worry about it your crops will pop up and then you can just harvest your crops and you are good to go. Get some coffee. Um, don't really need to harvest my crops. Okay, so you've you've built your base. You've built up your normal vanilla tool set. You've worked on your skill. By now you're probably level 40, 50, 60, 70-ish. Um, what, what do you do now? You got your whatever, your favorite weapons, your favorite gear loadout, M60s, AKs, whatever you got. Stealth build. What are you doing now? You've, you've done quests to build up repu reputation with your traders, which by the way, I sh think I showed you earlier. But you can go into your stats. Your stats have, uh, in Darkness Falls, more information. Your wellness level, uh, all this stuff. Um, but you can see your trader faction uh, for each trader. Um, and I'm pretty sure, it's starting to get hard to remember what I have, what I haven't said at this point in, in my earlier videos. Um, but just in case I didn't mention it before, um, as you do quests with traders, you gain faction. When you gain faction with traders, they'll sell you skills to save you on your skill points. You can just buy them with dukes. Um, also, Bob, Hugh, Jen, Joel, and Rekt are your standard traders. Caitlyn is a special Darkness Falls trader who only spawns out in the wasteland. Um, so basically, the progression, and this is kind of getting kind of into the spoilers of the story um so just heads up about that if you want to skip this part but um basically as you progress with one of these traders or all these traders eventually they're going to send you over to a uh, special vendor now this vendor is called eve the wandering merchant or what was her name oh the seasoned survivor um so they send you to eve who is like a quest uh, person now Eve used to only spawn in the burnt biome and she would just randomly spawn like uh, she had a placeholder for survivors so you would have to go into the burnt biome kill mobs get mobs to spawn travel around the burnt biome killing all the mobs 
trying to get survivors to spawn so one of them could be potentially excuse me potentially be eve they have since changed that and i think for the better because that was pretty frustrating when you were trying to progress to find eve they now gave her her own base camp with guards and stuff um i'll show you a method to find this stuff on um when you're on online servers uh when they don't have maps um but basically any df poi darkness falls is going to be prefixed with defaults um so these are like your special uh pois and what i'm going to go through in this segment is each of these kind of the progression of the game so after you um after you do the quests with the normal traders they're going to eventually send you over to eve now how they do they're like go check out this trader go check out this trader and they send you to other traders so you can locate the other traders organically within the game um without having to look for them or look into the files or do anything like that they will send you over to quest df quest prefab is where eve spawns so we'll go over to this one i don't know if that's the same one i was just at but uh this is the poi you want to look for you find that you found eve now that you found eve oh don't you guys start with the shooting you can pro mm, it's just so loud and i don't want it like over overtaking my talking um now that you found eve you can progress with the darkest falls quest line so now you're out of the you're out of the um you're out of the normal vendors oh did she die what's what's she doing you okay eve so you talk to her and you get jobs from her she's going to give you multiple quests like this one's the test and i think after three quests she sends you to a bunker. Um, and then bunker is do, 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 DF military bunker. Military bunker is where you're going to get your first taste of your high end, um, your high end loot. Let me actually do no collision too. I'll keep it off. Keep it off fly mode, but. Or maybe I should do fly mood with collision. Um, this is this is where you're going to get your first taste of um, of the end game, where you can potentially find laser weapons and laser swords and stuff like that. And you're going to start getting key cards if you don't already have key cards. Um, basically, any POI that has a military a zombie or a nurse zombie can drop key cards and stuff. Let me show you what the key cards look like. So you have red, blue, and uh, green key cards um, that allow you to um, get into certain locked areas. And even this one will have a key card. So you can't even do this quest. She'll send you here to do this quest, but you can't even do it until you get a key card. Do, do, do. Go down and show you so you want to go to any kind of like military poi or any kind of poi that's going to have like a nurse they can drop the green and i think the blue i'm not 100 percent sure but they definitely drop the cards that you need why can i not because i got fly mode on okay take fly mode off and walk slow then so as you can see door is locked when you try to open it you can't um, usually with these doors that has like a colored block over here signifying red, blue, or green. This one doesn't. Um, it takes either blue or green. I can't remember which. So let me just summon some of them. The key. Get some red, greens, and blues. To open it. Get rid of that, get rid of that. You just put it on your bar and right click. Oh, see how I try to put it on the bar and right click and it says it needs a green. You need a green key to open it. So before you can even get in here and do this part, you need to have found a green key card from a military POI. These nurses here and the military guys that are ones that, um, I'm sorry, nurses, scientists, I guess they are, not nurses. These little lab coded scientists are the ones that can drop the key cards. So you open that up, unlock it. Take these guys out. Now this POI is hard, cause watch, they they will keep spawning. 
So what he has here is he has these little body bags. They act as uh, spawn points. And they'll just keep spawning mobs. So and if you want to deactivate the spawns, you have to smash the body bag. So if you go over here... Blow this out. Oh wow, I can't even destroy that block. It's protected. All these blocks in these bases are protected, by the way. Even with my admin destroyer gun, I can't destroy it. But did you see how he just spawned from that body bag? So it makes this real tough. When you first come in, you're like, oh my god, I'm killing them, and they just keep coming, they keep coming, ah! So it's very, very tough until you realize that you have to kill the body bags in the bunker to stop them from spawning. But what you want to... I'm going to go invisible so you can't see me. Stop attacking me. Uh, what you want to do is search these desks, these science desks. These have chances for research notes, which allows you to craft your technology tree uh, stuff, which I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you now since we already went into it. In order to get these, um, you have to do the future is now, which I've already showed you. Future is now. Very easy, you just need ink, and instead of using the skill notes, you have to use these research notes, which can only come from higher level mobs, or from these higher level chests, to advance your, uh, the future is now, and advance your technology tree. So you want to look at all these desks, and you'll find key cards, and you can find laser pistols, uh, laser pistol ammo, and you can find um, repair tools. But they are rare. They're like, um, I don't know, one or two percent chance of drop. But eventually you'll find them if you keep looting these uh, bunkers. Now there's some uh, cell ammo for the laser. So if I find a laser pistol, I'll actually be able to use it. The ammo is actually pretty, pretty common compared to the other stuff. Ah, oh, there we go. So we got a multi-tool. And I'll explain to you... What the multi-tool is in a second? I guess I'm in creative mode, I can just look, but I'm so... I like I like looting and seeing what I get from this stuff. Because it's such an important step in the game. You're like, ah, oh, come on, laser pistol, laser pistol. Ah, oh, come on, laser sword, please, please, please. And you're disappointed if you don't get one. But at least I got a multi-tool, which is nice, even though it's a lower level. I think because my game stage is very low and my loot uh, bonus is very low, I'm not getting much... Um, boop, boop, boop. Just want to check. Alright, so I'm going to have to summon it. Yeah, I think because my game stage is uh, lower. Uh, but the laser multi-tool is really nice because it's faster than the nail gun for building. So it is a build tool. It's the best build tool in the game. It's very quick. It's, it uh, upgrades blocks very, very fast. Um, so it's definitely a good have. Also, um, it is as good... It's... I think it's as good, except maybe a tiny, tiny bit slower than the impact driver for taking apart cars and stuff. So you no longer need your wrench, you no longer need your ratchet or your impact driver. You can just use your multi-tool, which is very nice. Um, it's also used in the laser workbench for crafting recipes. And it's one of the first things you can craft. Um, but one of the other things you can find here is laser sword which the laser bladed sword is a very it's like one of the best sword in the game and you can find them in those chests you can also find the laser pistol and why is it a laser that's a laser rifle am i just not seeing the laser pistol maybe it's not called a laser pistol Ah, there it is. Laser pistol. Why wasn't that working? You can also find a laser pistol, which uses energy cells. Now, laser pistols do extreme amounts of damage. Energy cells uh, fuel them. Um, when you mod these laser pistols, that damage doesn't go up by one or two. That damage will go up by 20 or 30 per mod. So these things can get very, very powerful the higher tier they are. It's a low tier, so I can have low mods. Um, so getting a laser pistol is a big deal, but what is more important about the laser pistol is you can't, you can't create the ammo yet, um, for the laser pistol. So you have very limited ammo, so you don't, you want to use it sparingly, but also you don't want to use it on normal mobs. Um, can I go in here? Let me, 
Oh, I got no clip on. Does that mean I can go through blocks? I just want to get someplace where they're not going to come after me. Um, I want to take invisible off so you can see the pistol. Um, the pistol's pretty cool, uh, but what, what it can do is the laser, pist laser pistol has an inherent ability to disable uh, demon regen. So now if you just shoot a demon once, pew, yeah, it makes that pew pew. You don't see anything come out of it. It's just a laser pistol. But if you hit a demon with that, it completely disables the regen. Now you can start killing demons. So you want to save your initial... Um, you want to save your initial ammo for that one shot on the demon and then take the demon out with your regular gun. Uh, what else is there? Um, oh, the sword. Let me show you that. That's pretty cool. I love the sword. It's one of my favorite melee, uh, melee weapons. It's just so powerful, um, but I just love the way it looks. and. Uh, it's one of my favorite melee weapons, that's all. There's nothing special about it otherwise. You can put a mod in it um, that disable, disables demon regen later, but you can do that with any melee weapon. The, pist the laser pistol is the key upgrade when you're finding stuff in this bunker. That's what you're really hoping for, so you can disable demon regen. Really, I, I hope for a sword, a pistol, and a multi-tool when I come in these places. Um, so that's... A lot of tips about the progression, but I'm going to give you a separate tip on how to cheese this base. Now, I did talk to the developer about this, and he's aware that people uh, do this. Um, and he said he's going to eventually you know, make it so they can't. I just hope he doesn't nerf it too hard. Um, but when you come in here, this is a quest. You're supposed to knock all this stuff out. But what you can do is, since these are infinite spawners... What you can do is farm this place. So what I do is I come in and I'll build a thing out of concrete. I'm just going to use flagstones is what I got. But I usually just build a little uh, little fort here like so. And you can make it better than this. It's just a quick and sloppy one. I usually make a little fort right here. I'll do a double on the top so they can't jump and jump over. But that's not so important. And then I'll get into the middle of it, and I'll just stand here, and I like to use my, this is where I like to use my sword and get my sword skills up. And you just sit here and chop them forever. And what will happen, I'll show you what will happen here. I use concrete, so you can just use your repair tool, have some concrete in your inventory, and, um, you know, um keep it repaired but they'll just keep infinitely respawning now sometimes they bug out like this bag over here isn't working properly for some reason the one in there is so it's respawning them um, you can also come into here these are military guys in here um, and their spawn bag is right here this is the, qu the quest is usually right here um, oh, wow check that out you can see the whole military bunker it's just a box that's cool um, so you can unlock this door and let them out. Sometimes these big guys here, these mutated soldiers, all those, they, they can't get through the door, only the little soldiers. So sometimes you have to come in here and clear it out. Also, be warned, detonators can spawn from this bag. So occasionally you'll get a detonator. Um, now while these walls are impenetrable and cannot be destroyed, the floor can here. Out here the floor can't, but he can destroy your little base that you made so you have to be careful sometimes I don't like the openness I'll just go off this bag and I'll go off the respawn from that bag you see them just pop up um, and then you can just sit here and farm like you can sit here and farm and what you're farming for is you get a lot of the research notes you get hazmat suits from these hazmat guys so you get all the materials to make the mods um, you'll get a lot of recipes, so you'll be able to get the uh, research notes without having to go to bookstores if you looted all your bookstores. You'll get tons of this stuff, grain alcohol. That's why I said gr crafting grain alcohol is a non-issue because you'll get so much from these guys. But you can just sit here and let these 
spawn forever. Hard part is getting in here and controlling it without accidentally destroying the bags and uh, getting your, your concrete built up and getting in there safe. Once you're in here and you got concrete, you could sit in here. I would recommend using some type of melee, like the, the laser sword or some type of melee. That way you have unlimited ammo. Um, you'll blow through a lot of ammo if you're using your regular weapons, which is fine. If that's what you want to do, this is also a great place to level up fast, build skills. Like I said, I usually try to find a laser sword. As soon as I find a laser sword, I come in here and I'll just start doing this to build up my laser, uh, my sword skill. Um, so I'm getting levels, I'm getting my weapon of choice skill ups, I'm getting uh, tons of, you'll have so many drops you'll just be destroying stuff. You'll have so much stuff. You're getting hazmats, you'll get dye from your hazmats, you'll get schematics which gives you the uh, skill notes. So this is kind of how you can cheese and farm the military bunkers. Now let's say you screwed up, um, actually here's another tip, you can just kind of place some blocks down like this. You can place some blocks down like so. If you if you were wanted to, and that'll kind of protect the body bag from accidentally shooting it. That's just something you can do, especially if you're using turrets. Like if I was setting up turrets here, your turrets could accidentally destroy the body bag. But let's say it's non-functioning. Uh, if it's non-functioning, what can you do to fix it? One thing is just go far away. If you go far enough away sometimes, like out of the chunk that it's in, and then come back, it'll start respawning. Sometimes you need to log out and log back in, and it'll fix the spawns, and it'll start spawning again. If none of that works, or you accidentally destroyed the bag, you know, oopsie, now my spawner's broke, all my bags are destroyed. Don't complete the quest. You can just leave the area, you'll fail the quest, and then you can go back to Eve and get the quest again and come back. Now that's the part that I think the the dev didn't want that happening. They, he didn't want people to be able to respawn the quest over and over and over and over again. But regardless, with the infinite body bags there, you can um, you can still sit there and farm it. So that's the tip for the bunker. Um, that's what the bunker is. That's how you get your first key cards I covered, getting in the door. So you got to kill military men, get the key cards, get into the bunker, loot the bunker. There's two different bunkers usually in the map. Um, and then once you have key cards, now, now that you're in here fighting these hazmat dudes, you're going to have uh, hazmat armor. You can go into the wasteland. You're going to have fibers to make the... Um, make the radiation ready uh, mods for your armor so now you're gonna be able to wear uh, either steel or titanium and be able to go into the wastelands you should have titanium tools and weapons and all that stuff now now you're ready to go you're a big boy you, you got a lot of your classes taken care of and sorted out you're pretty decent level you should be 50 to 100 uh, level um, and I think Eve, I don't think Eve actually points you to Caitlyn. I forget, this is something I'm not sure about. It's been so long since I did the quest. Either Eve will send you to Caitlyn, or one of the other traders will eventually send you to Caitlyn. If that doesn't happen, just know that Caitlyn is always in the wasteland, and Caitlyn is always in a town in the wasteland. She's not like out by herself usually. I shouldn't say always, usually in a town in a wasteland. Um... Again, you can find her. I'll show you how to find, um, like if you're on an online server, how to find her. But Settlement Trader is the base where Caitlyn's at. So there's two of them on this map. Uh, military Bunker is where we're at now. So there's three Military Bunkers. Um, the Quest Prefab is where Eve's at. So there's two Eves on the map. And then there's two Research Labs, which we'll have to go over after Settlement Trader. So let's go to Eve. So now we're protected from radiation. And radiation is in the wasteland. Um, you know, if it'll, it, it's kind of buggy right now. Right now, if if you're on PVE, it doesn't give you any damage. It just puts like a fuzz over your face, so it's not a big deal. I don't like that. It makes it too trivial. It takes away the step of having to find the uh, armor and the radiation mods and all that stuff. 
Um, but let's go in here. So this is basically a trader station, you know, but it has Trader Caitlin in it. it has your guard captain with all your goodies and Kate Oh, there's the fuzz. Finally found the fuzz. I don't have my uh Now it should be doing damage, but because I have PvE enabled, like can't damage players, it's not doing damage to me. Which I don't like. They need to definitely fix that. Um what was I looking for? Oh, I was in stats. Yeah, because I have my admin hat on. So if I put my power armor on, or armor with mods, the power armor, see it gives 100% uh, protection from radiation. So that should go away because I have full power armor. I don't know why that's not going away. But um, sometimes the power armor does get bugged out. Take it off. On again. Yeah, sometimes the uh, the buff gets bugged out and whatever. It looked like it went away for a second there, but anyway, we'll just we'll just make do with it. This is Trader Caitlin. Um, you can build rep with her by doing quests as well. I believe her quest line leads to the labs eventually. When you build uh, rep with her, it'll she'll send you to the labs. I think you can also reset the labs with her quest line, similar to the bunkers. I never do that though, because I don't. I don't need to. I can always find the labs. They're so easy to find. Um, but Trader Caitlin is special in the fact that um, her special stash holds uh, solar panels. It's the only place to buy solar panels. Her special stash. Once you have her uh, better barter and your, um, you know, your vendor skills up to where you can see the uh, special stashes, she'll have solar panels, solar cells. She'll have fusion forges for sale. She'll have laser workbenches for sale. So usually you have to craft them, but it gives you the opportunity to buy them before you craft them. Also, she tends to have a lot of stuff like tool and die sets for sale. Um, she usually has steel bars, um, cigars, calipers, uh, calipers, uh, welding tools, um, mods. She, has, she usually has a lot of stuff that you might be looking for otherwise. Um, that it might be vendor only or loot only that you can't craft like cigars you'll find a lot you see how many cigars she has um, also she can sell mastery books to where you don't have to craft them which is nice that saves you all that crafting material uh, if you can find crafting books sometimes she'll sell blank skill books so she's definitely an important vendor that you want to find quickly and sneak off to so she's like one of the reasons why you want to come to the hazmat or come to the radiation zone before you have decent armor maybe just a hazmat suit two reasons you'd want to do that so you can mine titanium and to go visit caitlin and it's a high risk because these monsters will smash you with no armor um but a lot of time it's worth it um they are expensive so prepare like 20 to 30k for a solar panel 40 to 60k for a laser workbench, you know, I think like 60 to 80 for a uh, fusion forge, so it, it costs a lot, so make sure you have like barter potions and all that stuff. Um, so now that you found Caitlyn, you have all this stuff, the next spot is the lab. Um, the labs are always in the wastelands. And again, it starts with DF, Research Lab, but they're easy to find. They're usually in the, like, a city, if you just kind of drive around a city and then look for these big tents. If there's a map, like, if you're playing on an online server, you can just look for the big tents and the five little tents. So the, the footprint signature is very unique and easy to find with these. Um, what you'll find inside the big tent is tons of zombies, usually demons. They're not demons now because I'm low level. Death stalkers. They're not demons now because I'm lower level. Do I have my god mode on? Um, but they will be when you get here. So, uh, But you have some nice... You have like four chests here. Uh, this is also a very good spot if you're low on cloth. Just destroy these uh, tents. But let me just get rid of these guys. Now imagine if they were all demons and behemoths and stuff. Not just normal mobs, because I'm level 9. On this 
facing the tents, it's going to be the one on the right. So if you're facing these tents with the big tent behind you, the one on the right is going to have the secret spot. Take that apart and... <gasps> what is that? Oh, this is really bugging me. I wonder if I can just take some radiation pills. Uh, there's also radiation pills that you could take um, in, in lieu of a radiation suit. Ah, there we go. Since my radiation suit was bugged and wasn't working, I just wanted to get rid of that fuzz. I was getting on my nerves. Alright, so this is the lab. You just unlock this. You go down. All this is impenetrable, the walls and the doors, so use that to your advantage. Um, and then as you see the blue coloring, that means that's you need a blue key card to enter that. So green was to get into the other one. By now, you should have looted or... Uh, got oh there's a demon in there already I'm only level 9 that's crazy yeah so this is the hardest spot in the game thankfully I have my admin instant kill pistol they're gonna be dropping demon military guys military demons drop a lot of quill gun quills snipers because that's really what you should be using at this point you should be upgrading to quills if not multiple M60s and you're trying to skip the coils, but the power of the coil pistols and coil rifles are uh, pretty powerful. So that's what you're going to want to have when you come into these labs. What you want to do is because monsters will spawn up there and come down, these doors are invincible. So just keep it closed and then they can't get to you. So just close the doors behind you. You got to be careful. Demon behemoths can spawn in here and stuff like that. I'm just going to peek through. Nope. Um, I guess I'll just kill him. I'm, I'm in god mode. Ah, uh, yeah, so zombie behemoth right there. Like, that would be horrible to deal with your first time coming in. Trying to, you know, get all these guys in here dead and out without getting heard. All these guys in this room, there's usually guys in there. But in this case, just do... So the first place you want to go to, even if you're weak and you can't clear this whole uh, area, the first spot, the first room is in here. Come in here, close the door behind you so nothing can get to you. Nothing can break these doors, they're all, even with my admin gun, I can't break them, they're protected. Clear out this room and then now you're safe. You have this little room and you can start looting. Now these storage containers are the best loot containers in the game as far as end game stuff. So in this first little room you have a few of them and then you have some lockers. So you want to check the lockers. The lockers aren't as good, they don't have as high of a chance for items. Um, but these have the highest chance for the sword, the laser pistol, um, and the, the, the um, multi-tool. They also take a very long time, so I'm going to have me a sip of my drink. Alright. Um, actually, let me take my points and put it into um, put it in the fast eddy. Ah, I can't go any higher than one. The, the problems of being an admin. I guess sit here and go through these but regardless these have a higher opportunity to get you the thing you want so if you looted the bunkers and you did the bunker quest a couple times and you still don't have a laser pistol or a laser sword you can kind of sneak in here or rush in here real quick and close the door behind you and you'll be safe for a little bit and then you can maybe get a better chance from these few chests that you have in here and I'm gonna do a you know I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going but just so you know these chests are better I'm just going to do a quick lab run and explain the lab and how to get through it. So this one, you need a key card, right? You need a green key card. Always close the doors behind you so repops or anything behind you can't get you. You need a blue key card to get in here and then you go down. And then you need a blue key card to open this door. Now, this door leads over to this door so you can to get in here, you need to use a green key card anyway. 
Uh, well, actually, I guess it depends. If you have more blue than green key cards, um, choose this way. If you have more blue, we could go this way if you have more green. If I go this way, I mean, just break out the glass. You can break out the glass here. Just do one block, do a little crouch method to get in here. Check the desks, see what they got, anything good for you. Red key card is important to get in deeper. Um, but let's say you went this way, right? This way just has more monsters and it just kind of loops around. Now you do want to kill those uh, behemoths eventually because they drop only from the behemoth's loot bag can you get the rarest loot in the game. So, um, And these guys right here, these radiated behemoths are a pain. Um, so yeah, so you come through this way or come around and then you're here. We want to progress through this green door. This way it's just nothing but monsters. So you don't really have to come this way other than to kill the monsters. I think there's some in the bathroom. None in the bathroom. None in the bathroom. Got a behemoth trying to poke out. Now, here's a trick. Here's what I do with behemoths, because they're tough. They'll one-shot you. Um, here's how I can cheese the behemoths 100% um, of the time while, be, while being safe. See how they kind of poke through the door when they're punching? You can shoot them when they're coming through the door. Now, I don't want to use my one shot, one kill. Let me use this guy. But you can shoot them when they come through. You can hit them with melee, but see how they do that forward step punch? Make sure you're out of their range. But what I do is I just plop my turret down and it'll auto target them as they come down and I can kill them that way. Um, obviously I'll have, by this time I have better turrets, I have better ammo in my turrets, but you pop three turrets down, they'll just sit there and they're quicker than you are, right? Because they're a computer. Um, so they'll eventually whittle that behemoth demon down. He does have some regen. 45, 40, So my little one crappy turret with no mods and not the right type of ammo isn't going to cut it. Um, but you can shoot them through the door and that's how you can cheese them. And that way you don't got to worry about him. And he did not drop his super rare loot. But it, they tend to drop a lot of military stuff. You have two rooms over here. Once you're through this door, close it behind you. Um, loot the desks. Loot the um, locker. Loot the locker. Loot the desks. Move forward. Go through this door. Coming through this door to the left is just a little um, bench. There used to be a behemoth. In, the behemoths used to be inside these little containers here. I don't know why they changed that. Come through here. This is just a choice, right? So you have green card and red card. If you have red cards, use your red card to get in there. But red cards are the harder to get cards. So usually by this point, you might only have a few. Uh, if you have a stack of 20, don't worry about it. You'll have so many later. But if you only have like one or two... Go to this route, open the green door, and then break through the glass right here. Oh, he's, he's already tried to break through the glass. So loot your two desks here, break through the glass. It saves you one red card, but to progress, you're still going to need a red card. So if you don't have a red card at this point, you're out of luck. Um, you have to keep farming until you have a red card to go down to the next level. Reminds me of SCP, doesn't it, with all the key cards and stuff? Um, and then here at this level is nice because you get some more opportunity for good loot. I'm going to have me a sip of drink while we wait for that. Um. And there we go. Got a nice high level laser multi-tool. And I'm only like, what, level 10 or something? But by this point, by the time you do a full run, most likely you're going to have a good laser tool, a sword, and a pistol. Um, even though I don't think I've found a pistol yet, but you should have after you've done the bunker a couple times. But just keep looting the bunkers, reset them if you can, keep looting the bunkers, come down here into the labs and clear them out. If you're on an online server, this will most likely be all be in reset zones, so 
you'll you'll actually be fighting the high level players for lab runs when when the servers on online reset everybody kind of first thing they do is run to the lab and see if they can be the first ones in to get all the good loot so make sure you're doing that if you're on an online server make sure you're not missing out uh, you'll come here and everything will be looted and then you won't have an opportunity to progress because other players they don't care that you just need one sword or you just need one pistol they'll they're going to want to get all the pistols so that they can upgrade them and have a high level pistol that does a lot of damage so i mean you might get some nice players that if you ask them say hey i've run a couple labs or i've run a lab and i haven't found a pistol do you got any extras they'll be like ah sure you know here's one of my crappy pistols but that's good just so you can disable the demon regen because when you're in here fighting these you don't you don't have admin guns like i have see how they're doing that they're burning me through the wall right now so i'm taking damage and um, i need oh my god they're gonna kill me i think their fireballs are pretty devastating because they'll knock your drink down when you're burning and they'll whittle your health down um so one way to counteract that what most people do that i've seen is have the um oh what's the mod called uh the purifier Yes, have the water pure water purifier mod in your helmet, and then you can drink murky water, water water potato potato. Um, you can drink murky water, and the reason why you want murky water over any other water, it's easy to to make for one thing, but more importantly, it stacks to 125, where the other stuff only stacks to 10. So you don't want to burn your um, Get rid of some of the stuff. You don't want to burn your good, um, your your good water and drinks that are, you know, just just to quench out fire. So this way, you can they they light you on fire. Let's see if I can get get them to shoot at me again. Drink that, puts fire out. So murky wa water is definitely a must when you start getting into demon territory. You're always going to want a stack of that on your bar. Just to put the water out. Um, Alright, so let's go through here and kill these little guys. Oh, would you stop burning me? Fly mode. Oh, I didn't have God mode on. Put God mode on so I don't have to worry about it. How long did I not have God mode on fighting those behemoths and stuff? No collision. As you can see, it gets kind of crazy in here, right? Now imagine trying to fight this legit. Now when you come through here, when you open this, this hallway is nuts, right? I recommend doing a little tactic. Setting up your turrets, doing whatever, but doing the double double door open. Like that, so it automatically opens and automatically closes. So what you want to do is whatever your weapon system is there's going to be a bunch of those monsters out here tap tap it'll let one or two of them in and then automatically close behind them if you try to open it let a couple of them in and then manually close it they're going to get in your way you're not going to be able to close the door they're going to swarm you and you're going to die um so double tap not only is it good for opening closing doors going in and out of your base and traders it's good for funneling through the mobs because remember they can't destroy those doors um, that's kind of how I clear them out and then also what I'll do is I'll set turrets out here and then double tap and the turrets will fire boom, boom, boom and then stop fire and then stop and it kind of like just makes it a little safer so utilize these doors is the tip to help progress now when you go through this bottom one lab one here or whatever this is this lab door is always closed this one's always open and it's locked so what I usually do when I clear this out is I rush up here real quick, I unlock it, and I shut it. And that way I'm protected from the monsters in that hall because look, yeah, if you alert them and you got two uh, behemoths coming down on you, you're not going to be alive. Usually what I do at this point is clear out this uh, area here. So I'll open this door and do the same thing, I'll clear these guys out. Usually nothing too hard in here, usually just a guy, a zombie in here. But you have some desks and some lockers and some opportunity. If you go over here into this end, you get some more lockers, you get some more desks. And I think the quest, the 
grab the satchel quest is right here usually if you're on the quest uh, also you have a laser workbench so this is a laser workbench if you have not been able to buy one from trader Caitlin you can actually come in here and use this at this point right so you can if there's something that's you need to craft that's laser workbench only this gives you the opportunity and you can see you need a wrench a hammer and sometimes you need a multi-tool uh, in in the tools for the bench to make whatever you want to make so then what I normally do is now I have that resolved to come over here and I work this hallway and get this taken care of and then the same thing this first door is going to be locked and then it, it's very important to do it this one and I'll tell you the reason why I come up here get that closed right you always want to get those doors closed it protects you close them behind you close them in front of you and I'll show you why that one's even more important than this crazy hallway. So come in here, clear these out. And then you got more things to loot. And then also, you get your first access, if you have not bought one from Trader Caitlin, to your Fusion Forge. So when you're starting out and you want to try to craft something, uh, if you don't have a Fusion Forge and you're trying to craft like a laser pistol or something like that, or if you're trying to uh, convert some uranium, what is it, uranium to titanium to what, anium? Enriched uranium. So if you're trying to make some enriched uranium, which is uranium and plutonium, um, this is where you have to go to do it. So they have a little one here in case you don't own one. Be careful of this room back here. There's nothing in it but behemoths. There's usually two behemoths right there. So be careful of that, but they're worth killing because the behemoths can drop um, stuff. Usually what I do is I come up here, I set my turrets up over there, I shoot them, I run out here, and I close the door. Uh, if my turrets don't kill them, I can use the cheese method from killing them from this side is usually what I do. But I kill them, see if they got any drops, they have rare loot. Now, the reason why I said make sure you do the same trick as run up, unlock, and close this is because in this room is the portal room. This is the end room of the lab. See that portal? That portal is just like the body bags. That's a spawner. And that'll sit there and spawn demons and uh, not succubuses. Uh, what are they called? Incubuses? Incubuses, I think. The demons would like literally look like demons. Um, zombie dogs, demon dogs. It'll spawn all that stuff. It doesn't spawn behemoths, unfortunately. There's no way to farm the behemoths that I know about other than going around into the wastelands at night and doing lab runs and stuff like that looking for behemoths. So end game is basically behemoth hunting uh, for rare drops. Rare drops being um, rare drops of the behemoth are... Ooh, what, what is it? It's the Porkins. The shotgun, which is a better shotgun. It's like the best shotgun. It's not an auto shotgun, but it's a more damaging shotgun. Also, I think, I'm not 100% on this, but I think the Porkins disables uh, demon regen. So it's a shotgun that can disable demon regen. The other thing it drops is, it's a hammer, but I don't remember what it's called. Mm, power, it's not the power hammer. That's a craftable one. Edrix? Ed, Edric? Edric Hammer. Ah, oh, there it is. Edric Eric's Hammer. Eric's Hammer is a two-hand uh, smashy. I don't know if it disables demon regen. I imagine it should, since it's a rare drop-off behemoth. Um, Toby's is the other thing that can drop. This is really good if you're a rifle user. A very rare mod that increases accuracy and headshot damage of rifles. So that's a that's definitely if you're a rifle user, you want that. Um, the other, the two most rarest things of Darkness Fall that drops off behemoths is drum roll, gyrocopter parts. You cannot craft gyrocopters in Darkness Falls. The only way to get gyrocopters in Darkness Falls, the chassis and the um, accessory in order to craft it you have to get the drops from either a skateboarder demon a biker demon or a utility worker demon they have a like a 0.05 percent chance of dropping it about the same as a treasure map uh, i've never actually gotten one to drop completely 
I've had lots of Tobies, I've had lots of Porkins, I've had lots of Eric's. I've never been able to get a, a gyrocopter going in Darkness Falls, so that's that's like the end 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 game um, loot. All right, so let's kill this dude. So this is the final room, the portal room. Am I invisible? Let's go invisible. Um, obviously a lot more loot. You have more uh, boxes to loot here. If you can work your way through the portal spawner, you can get these guys. Now, nothing's spawning right now. Usually, uh, demons will spawn here, I'd say, every minute. Five or six demons will spawn. So, it can get crazy in this room. I don't know why they're not spawning. It might be because um, I'm in admin mode and invisible. But one thing I like to do is I'll take some concrete and I'll just do this. Once I get a chance, once I can break in here and get a bit of a chance... I'll come in here and just do this with some con some reinforced concrete. Like I'll put frames down and then upgrade the frames and that's enough. And then I'll stand on this side. So what this does is it makes it a little bit easier to fight them because they won't be shooting fireballs. You won't have six demons shooting fireballs at you. Oh, what's underneath? I wonder how much loot falls under a floor that I don't even realize, like when I'm killing this stuff. Anyway, um, it just makes it easier because when they spawn, they don't see you immediately. So you have to move for them to hear you, and then they'll come after what they hear. And since you block that path off, it kind of just funnels them out this way. So they'll go, oh, what's over there? You know, they'll come around, and then you can kill them kind of more in a more organized fashion. Then when they spawn, they all spawn at once. You, like, you'll be sitting here in an empty room if you manage to clear the room out. And all of a sudden, boom, you have five or six demons shooting fireballs at you. Potentially an uh, incubus demon coming at you and hellhounds running at you. So it just makes it a little bit, little bit uh, easier. I mean, you can, you can get crazy and go three high. You can do something like this so you have a thing to hide behind here. You know, be like, shoot them. But they won't. Pretty much they won't try to destroy this to get to you. They're going to... It's such a... Oh, and there we have an Incubus just spawn. That's weird that spawn, uh, spawn timer is so low. Maybe because I set the time down one. Interesting. So maybe it, the spawn is the speed to how fast the day goes. Because I, I set this down. I wonder if I turn this up, will they spawn faster? Let's turn Let's jack it up like... 20%. Let's kill these guys. Let's see if they spawn faster this time. I'm just curious if the speed of the day passing is what determines the spawn rate. Anyway, you don't want to fight. Also, what this wall does is you don't want to fight and accidentally shoot the portal. The portal can take damage and it will eventually break and then they won't spawn anymore. I mean, that's really what he designed it to be. Designed it to be like, like if you're fighting this, it's very difficult to break in here while those things are spawning. Um, it's very difficult to clear a room, so you're almost desperate when you're when you're weak to to just get the portal to shut down and shut the spawns down. Like when you're first starting, eventually you want to farm it. You want to sit here and farm the demons and stuff like that for. Um, for better power armor gear and stuff like that so when you're more powerful and able to farm it you won't want to damage it when you first come in you're probably going to want to like chuck grenades at it and dynamite and explosives to damage it um but eventually you don't want to so what i do is i build a little wall most people will go out here and they'll just use this door and they'll fight them out here so they'll let the demons spawn in here and then they'll attract them and the demons will kind of blah, 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 make their way out to all that takes a long time for me. I use this as backup plan. Uh, if things get a little too overwhelming in there, I'll run out here and close the door and, you know, get my health up and get my ammo situated. Most part, I try to make a wall and fight them in here because it's just faster. They have less to walk. You can kill them and then the regen can happen faster. I'm assuming the time has nothing to do with the regen spawn. Um, but yeah, you can, you can break this though. Um, you can shoot it down. Wrench it down. Oh, I'm in invisible. That's why it's not, uh... 
Let's see. And I think over time, like, demons will just randomly swing and hit it too. And then it takes damage. What happens when I wrench it? And then when it breaks, there you go. You can loot it. Portal's broken. You can loot it. There's usually nothing great in there. Oh, it's the first time I've ever seen power armor in, in one of these. Usually you just get like some titanium and some other stuff. That's, I, that's interesting. I had no idea the tight, uh, power armor boots were on the portal's loot table. So I'm assuming the loot table gives uh, it's like titanium armor, some nanites or something like that. And then that's it. Now you're clear. You can this room will stop spawning. Um, you can loot everything. Um, you can use the other. This is another forge that you can use. And that's the lab. That's the end game. That's 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 the end game process. So you want to farm the lab over and over again. Kill demons. Uh, kill behemoths uh, until you have full set of power armor. Um, you know level 80 power armor, level 80 laser pistol, level 80 laser bladed sword. You know, eventually when you're high enough level, you'll be able to make laser rifles, which are really cool. Uh, I always forget where the creative mode is. Rifle. Um, there you go, laser rifle. Laser rifles are pretty cool. Nice and powerful. Um, yeah, the crosshairs are a little off. That might be because I'm floating. Uh, you could throw a thing in a full auto automatic into their laser rifle and make it automatic. But that that's basically end game for Darkness Falls right there. And let me put my collision back on. Yeah, so that's the lab. Joop. All three floors of the lab. Oh, look at that. It's interesting. That's the uh, that's the stairway going down into the lab from the top. That's pretty cool. All right, so recap: progression, normal trader quests, getting your gear up normally, getting your skills up, getting your classes done. Once your classes are done. Um, Find your way to Eve, get the bunker quests, farm the bunkers for key cards, for uh, laser pistols, laser swords, and laser multi-tools. Um, after you're done with the bunkers and you're more powerful and you can put radiation mods into your armor so you can have armor, go down into the lab, fight the demons in the lab, work your way through the lab, get more loot, get to the end portal, try to kill the behemoths for rare loot. There you go. Get gyrocopters, fly around, and show everything off. What is that thing? Burning. Oh, it's supposed to be a rocket. That's cool. Look at that. Look at UI. It's like a rocket launching. That's sweet. All right, so um, that was a pretty long tip as far as progression. <laughs> that was like, here's how to progress and a thousand other things uh, as well. So I'm not sure how I'm going to put that in the timestamps, but I'll figure it out. All right, let me think about what is next. Okay, so if it's in your own game and you want to know where a POI is, it's it's very simple. Just turn on debug menu, F1, debug menu, hit escape, open POI teleporter, and type in what you want. You want bookstores? Type book. And it'll tell you the location of where they're all at, and you can click it and go to it. And voila, you're at a bookstore. Um, so very easy when it's your own server or something like that. But how do you do it when it's an online server and all the files are hosted on the server? Well, let me show you that real quick. Okay, so how to find POIs on servers. Um, if you're on an online server, we'll, we'll do online first because that covers both topics and then we'll do like your server uh, if you're playing by yourself or you're hosting the server. Um, most or good <laughs> online servers like dedicated server admins will um, have an online map. And it's basically like this is the hated cruise map um this is just one i have bookmarked so i guess it's one of their games 
but you can see it kind of as players run through the map it kind of uncovers what has been found so you can kind of see what's going on um, you'll be able to look into the towns and find stuff now I'm pretty familiar with um, what POIs look like just from my experience so I know that this is the big art gallery just from seeing this pond here I know this is where cars park I know that the loot is uh, da -da 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 -da. the loot is right here in this this is the loot cache so I know to come up here I can nerd pull up if I want kill that fight all the zombies that are around here and in here are a bunch of air conditioners on the roof that I can take out like I know that from experience so I can just look at a map and I can kind of see what the POIs are I don't know every POI but just from experience I know a lot of them so I can look at it and I could tell if there's a laundry mat or I could tell if there's a, some type of bunker um, so if I go over into the wasteland and I just look let me let me look and see if I can see what do I see I don't see much of anything for some reason <laughs> let me look at the other town in the wasteland three more towns uh, look and see what I see Mm -mm -mm. I'm actually looking for a specific thing <laughs> and I don't see it which is unusual let me check the other town and look for what I'm looking for but I found it look at that here's the lab so I know the lab because the big tent and then the five tents and I can see it's all mangled right here so I can even see that a player has been in has gotten in there and there has been some scuffling going on and the blocks got damaged so you can kind of, you know, just from looking at an online map, uh, you can kind of tell where things are and what's going on. I might even be able to pick out Trader Caitlin if she's in this town. Uh, that's not it. You know, you just get used to looking at the stuff and understanding the layouts of them and, and finding it. I can even find demon portals. Uh, let me see if I can find one real quick. I hate doing this while making a video. Like, um because it takes time but basically I can see the little demon it's only three blocks wide but I can tell it when I see it but sometimes it's hard to see usually demon portals are like on the outlying outsides of towns um, let me see I don't see any there mm. yeah I'm not gonna waste any more time on that but so this is one method right so just by looking I can kind of look at the towns if I wanted to take the time to do it I could look at the towns I could tell there's another art portal there I'm looking for bookstores you know maybe I need I, I want to know where to I always want to know where the bookstores are when I first start I want to know where they're at so I could hit them and get my uh, research notes right um, but s some uh, some servers maps are even more helpful so this is the hated crew let me go over to Skynet this is Skynet's uh, map. Um, so they have a different map, you know, the wastelands up here. Um, if you look at that, I know where the portal is on this one, I think. It is there or... Yeah, so here's the portal right here. I can see it. It's those three blocks. Uh, sometimes it's black, sometimes it's red. But there's an overworld portal there. That, that was the portal you've seen in my intro which is probably three hours ago at this point. Um, but my, what I wanted to point out here is she, this, they have it set on so you can see the quest POIs. You can select that. So any POI in red is potentially a quest POI that can get reset. And they, admins do this because sometimes um, they say, oh, you can take over POIs as long as it's not a quest POI. Sometimes they don't to reset regions which are entire regions that get reset oh that's region five reset regions. so anything in red here is going to get reset generally what they do is a any region touching a town they signify as a reset region that way the town gets reset so that's kind of even if they didn't have it selected you can just do region files and you can kind of see okay that that's all touching a town that's definitely going to get reset this is all going to get reset some of it's questionable. Would an admin care to reset that little town? Yep, they did that whole block. So they just did everything. Like this right here would be questionable to me. No, this right here would be one. Like if I was going to build a house out here, I'd be worried because this little bit touches the town. 
but does the admin really care if these two POIs reset? Apparently they didn't. Either they just missed it or they were like, ah, I'm not gonna take up this whole spot for a reset. But in this case, they allow POIs to be identified. So if you have an online map that shows uh, the POIs, you can just click on it and see what they are. Skyscraper 01. Well, I know that's not a bookstore. Um, junkyard. Da da da. Uh, what's this one? Oh, Settlement Trader. That's where. That's where Caitlin's at. You know, so you can you can do it this way if you want to. And here's my base. That's my base. Look at <laughs> there's so many people here for whatever reason. Everybody seemed to spawn in this area, and we all all congregated right here by this uh, trader gen. <laughs> there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's there's probably a dozen people living in this area over here. <laughs> so this town this town gets wiped out. I picked this area because it's in the it's near a trader, a general trader, and it's not too far away from the wasteland. It's not too far away from the traders and the labs and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's one way to do it on live maps. What if they don't have a live map? Or maybe you're looking for a quicker way to tell where something's at. So let me show you that. In your file system, so in your C drive, users, it'll be whatever you named your computer, slash app data, slash roaming. There's a seven days to die folder. Or you can just type uh, percentage app data percentage and it'll take you to app data go to roaming seven days to die and you're here so what you want to do is go into uh, saves local and these you're gonna have a bunch of these weird named uh, files these each one of these is a server I've joined and it, it kind of guess it just gives it like a hash name or something like that it gives it some time it's type of unique folder name um, but if you join a server you can see it by the date created. So if you joined one today, you can identify it that the folder was created on the day that you joined the server. So you can go in, you can identify it that way. You can go into the um, into the server, go into the world, and in here you can. It'll have a. Sometimes it'll actually have the map, but a lot of times the admin tries to limit how much he downloads onto your computer. I, I, I think it's not to withhold information from you. I think it's just they don't want all that bandwidth going out uh, when new players are joining their server, so they try to limit it. Um, but usually you'll always have a biome map, so you can look at that, and you can bring that up and uh, see what the biome of the world is. So green is grass, uh, tan is desert, white is snow, um, purple is burnt biome, and then the orange is wasteland. So you can see how the world is laid out. Um, the other thing that's going to tell you what, uh, where everything is, is the prefabs.xml. So you have to open this up. You can open it up in Notepad. You can open it up in Notepad++. Let me go ahead and open that up and show you how to read it. Okay, so I've opened up the prefabs.xml file. I have it open in Notepad++. Notepad++. You can use Notepad to look at it. Um, but basically in here will show you all the points of interest and it'll show you their uh, location on the map. So basically you just need to know the name. I mean you can browse through it obviously. There's Trader, Wreck, there's Vacant Lot, Cemetery, House Bungalow. You can browse through it and look at the names of all the POIs. Um, but if you know the names and you're looking for specific ones, like let's say we want to Let's say you just joined the server and you want to see where all the Darkness Falls specific ones are. We just hit Control F for find and DF. Um, everything is prefixed with DF Falls, but you can just do DF. Uh, find all in current document. And as you can see here, um, defaults military bunker, defaults settlement trader. There's the research lab. There's the other military bunker, research lab, quest prefab. You can do this with any point of interest that you know the name of so if you're looking for books books find all in current document and then you have these bookstores so you have alpha 18 store uh, excuse me uh, store book 02 so these are our bookstores uh, there's also one more bookstore uh, it's a skyscraper 
So just do sky, and it is skyscraper 02 is the big crackable skyscraper uh, one, but only the 02. The 01, the 3, the 4, there are other things, they're like apartment buildings and stuff. Um, what else is there? So there are DF books, like if you're looking for a laundromat because you need dyes, um, you can find them. There's three laundry maps on this uh, server. Um, you, what else is, what else is useful? Uh, all the DF stuff, bookstores, laundry mats. You know, you can find the tire place you're looking for. If you want the art store, because you know it has loot and air conditioners on the top that you can get lots of electrical parts for. Whatever you're looking for, you can find it in here. Um, now how to find it is, um, is the, the address right here, uh, the location. It's also right here but it's also in the find window. So I'll do it here because it's a little bit bigger. So if we were looking for this bookstore, the first set of numbers here in position equals is the uh, east-west uh, variable. The middle is the altitude, the height, so we don't need that. We can just disregard that. And then on the right side is the north-south. So how it works is west is negative numbers, the middle is zero, and then east is positive numbers. So this would be west 312, and then how north and south works is north is positive, south is negative numbers. So this is west 312, south uh, 2752. And then now that you have that, all you would have to do is go to your map and uh, take a look. So let me see if I'm going to be able to remember this. So let's just say 300. You don't have to be perfect on your map. You just want to get it close. So let's say 300 west. Uh, 27 south, 27,000 south. So 300 west, 27,000 south. And you just go to your map. 27, three, three, what? Oh God, I forget it already. What was it? 300 west, 27 south. 27 south. 300 west. 27 south. So this one. And the position is always like on the corner here. Uh, actually, I think it's this corner. So 275, 2750 something would probably be what the location is. And that's why I said you don't have to be perfect. As you can see, like I put my, this is the bookstore. I put my marker usually um, like where the entryway is. So I just, so I know, but um, that's, that's how you can find it. Right. And you can mark them out. So let's say, let's say I hadn't been to that bookstore before. It was over here. You could just kind of put a little marker there and just do like book question mark. And then you know that, okay, let me, um, let me go down here and explore that area and see if there's a bookstore down there and loot the bookstore or whatever you're looking for. The Darkness Falls Spiral Library. This is a Darkness Falls uh, specific POI. Um, if you do like a normal map, you won't have this. This is uh specific to darkness falls like the uh trader caitlin trader and the eve uh, vendor outpost request so let me just give you a quick tour of this poi um just because it has it's a good way to get books and leather look at all these chairs um so i'm just invisible flying around i won't aggro the mobs um but you see all the chair all the leather here it's a great way to get started with your leather you will, if you're starting here, if you're coming in here as a noob, it's a great way to get experience. If you're level one, two, whatever, just make sure you had looted enough bird's nests and got enough feathers to make arrows. Because you're going to come in here and sneak shot these guys in the head, finish them off with your melee weapon. I would not want to use like blunder buses and stuff and weapons in here because you're going to trigger all these if you shoot. So you want to kind of come in here stealthy. Um, once you scrap up all that leather, you got two bookshelves, one, two. Um, which can have a random amount of books in it. Then you want to go here into where it says stairs and then you go up these stairs. There will be a few monsters, zombies, oh, wrong button. There will be a few zombies as you can see as I'm going up on the, on the staircase going up. So sneak up on them, pop them in the head, finish them off with your melee. When you come up to the top, you want to, uh, you want to be careful because as soon as you get to the top here, You'll have spiders and dogs and stuff like that. Now, spiders aren't hard. They're just scary sounding. A bow and a hit with a melee weapon will take care of your spider. But there's a big chunk of them around here. So you want to be stealth. And you want to watch what you're doing so you don't aggro a bunch of zombies. But 
once you get in here, look at all those books. They got two levels. Another spider up top. More leather in this, on the second level. You got all these books. One there, one on this side. Watch out for the dog behind this desk. There's always a dog behind that desk. I always forget about him and he comes around and bites my ass. And yeah, each side has a bunch of books and leather and stuff. When you're done, you can head back down or they got this little neat thing here where it says exit. You can actually jump down here. And these are hay bales down here. So you land here and you'll be safe. And then jump down here, land and you'll be safe. And you can exit right back out where you were at this chessboard. One other little trick to these is right here in the middle, if you come up, there's a box in this glass. If you break through, it has like 3,000 hit points, you can have a book there. Also, a little trick when you're higher level and have auger, if you want to bypass all that stuff, let's say you don't, there's demons in there and you're higher level, you don't fight them. Come up here, start on this one. So this is the front of the building, right? So facing the front, the left side spiral, on the back of it. What I usually do is put like a, I put a single block here and it allows me to jump up and kind of get up. And then you can kind of just jump up this spiral on the outside and you can just kind of travel around, jump, 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 jump. It's a lot of jumping, but you know, it beats fighting those demons or whatever. And then you can break through this guy right here. Let me just get the, um, doot, 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 doot. what do I want? Dev? DEV, dev gun. Now, this is for when you're higher level and have a good pickaxe because this is concrete. You can blast through that. It's reinforced concrete. Blast through that. You can use the darkness falls trick to where you can scooch through one block. And I'll, I have that in this video at some point. So if you're looking for that. Uh, but I, I guess I'll just go over it here too. Basically, if you're crouched, you can squeeze through one block. Uh, and darkness falls for whatever reason. You don't have to have it too high. So you can kind of squeeze through here. And that way you can skip all the monsters in the spiral staircase. Also, if you really wanted to, you can do something that's really sneaky um, using the um, using that trick right there. Let me, uh, let me go off invisible and aggro these guys and show you what I mean. Uh, invisible. I'm just going to shoot this gun. Aggro them all. Oh my god, this is going to be crazy. But just as a demonstration. And then, say say you shoot your gun or use your auger. You can run down here. Hop back into your hole. Scooch outside so they can't get you. They're going to bang on the thing. Let me take off collision and fly. Squat down. Jump up. Oh, I don't have my first level of jump. So let me put fly mode back on. Get up here and turn fly mate off. Scooch down. Now see how when I crawled through, it kind of, even though there's a block there, my head's in it, I can see through. You can sit back here protected. So you're like, I'm kind of going through that block. You can sit back here protected and shoot them and hit them and melee them. I can see here melee if I want. From a safe distance. Kind of a hacky, kind of cheesy way of doing it. Uh, I used to come in here and just hit them all with my sword. Uh, they will break through eventually if you have this many, if you're crazy like me and just pull the whole thing. But as long as you can see through the block, you can shoot through the block. You can hit through the block. So even though there's a block right here, okay, the second I can shoot through it, I can't shoot through it, can shoot through it. Can't, 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 can't. You can, design, you can use this design in Darkness Falls. I don't know why the blocks clip like that, but they do. But you can use that design in Darkness Falls for your horde bases where you go down and then kind of all around you you can see but yet you're still behind blocks and they have to beat on the blocks to get to you and then you can just sit there and chill and blast them in the face um i don't know why that is about darkness falls specifically but it is but that's something that you can do uh on this poi and then just run up here and now everything's cleared out and doot, 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 get all the books and just chill um yeah so that's the spiral library it's a very very good poi to know uh, to use, um, I'll give you a nice little outside shot of it. That never went on the roof. Is there anything on the roof? Nah, it's just glass. Um, yeah, so that's that's the POI. That's the Spiral Library. Easy to see. Um, so if you see that in the town, you know there's books there. 
next one I want to tell you about is the sky. So let me put a little pausey pause. So this is the mini bike racetrack by Spider. Um, if you go into your POI teleporter, you can see X Custom underscore mini bike racetrack by Spider. Got three of them on this map um, that I'm in right now. But what makes this uh, a good POI to know is look at all the tires. You are never going to need another tire again in your gameplay. This will take care of all your tire needs. So when you wrench a tire, uh, you have a chance to get a tire. So you can get tires for your vehicles very easily. Um, I would say if you wrenched all of these right here in this little corner, you'd have enough tires uh, to craft a mini bike, a bike, and a 4x4 truck. Um, but the other thing the tires are good for is when you hit them with an axe, they'll pop and give you uh, plastics, so scrap polymers. So you could go through here and get all the tires you'll ever need and all the scrap polymers you'll pretty much ever need from one POI. Look at all the tires. It's, it's insane. In addition to tires, it has hay bales. So if you wanted to make a, a drop like in the bookstore, you could drop down into a, a hay bale thing for your base. You could just grab them. Not only are they good for landing on, like little landing pads, but let me grab some of them. If you scrap a single hay bale, it gives you seven plant fibers. So no more do you have to walk around punching plant fibers. You just come in here, snag a whole bunch of hay bales, and then scrap them all. There you go, got 105 of them that quick, so unlimited tires unlimited plant fibers hay bales for your base if you need them this is a really great poi to know uh, let's go on to some other good pois to know this is a good poi uh, for a couple reasons this is the art gallery let's open up the teleporter so this is the um custom gallery by top minder and i guess that's pilly top minder and pilly um custom gallery it's like an art gallery um, what makes this good is it has a lot of cars, right? So if you're looking for mechanical, electrical, leather, pipes, um, wrenching cars is your best. Um, especially for mechanical, because a lot of people don't realize not only does the car give you mechanical parts, um, if you get extra motors, you can scrap them for 30 mechanical parts per motor. So cars are by far the best for mechanical. Not the best for electrical, but it does give electrical pipes, leather, brass radiators, gas, scrap, uh, iron. So cars are like the best thing to scrap, absolutely. But if you come up here, a lot of times what I do is, I know a lot of people hate nerd pullers, but a lot of times I'll just nerd pull up, come up here, um, watch out, because let me make sure I have invis on. Inside these are usually monsters, packed in there, usually uh, high level monsters. Considering I'm level 1, look at the difficulty. You got all the hard monsters. So that's like a high level spawn in there. Um, but if you come up on this roof and sneak over here and kind of hop over this area, look at all these air conditioning units. Electrical parts galore. And they also give mechanical parts and pipes. So if you come up here and wrench these uh, air conditioners, you're going to have several hundred electrical parts per POI and if you're on an online server it can you know respawn obviously so the art gallery and then going through the art gallery is actually fun too just going through it. I, I don't oops, what the heck I um oh yeah it's like a booby trap there um going through is actually kind of fun this is a pretty neat oh don't want to show that on YouTube um pretty neat um you know little POI that somebody put a lot of uh, a lot of creativeness into just going through it so definitely recommend if you haven't checked out the art gallery as a POI to do it but as far as a resource up on the roof has very nice um, very nice um, amount of electrical parts and nice parking lot full cars let me show you what it looks like on the map just so you can see it very easily identifiable by this little beach park in the back here and the parking lot on the side. Now I'm just going to show you some of the more notable uh, Darkness Falls specific um, point of interest, right? So we went through a couple of these earlier. So we did the uh, quest prefab, which has Eve in it. So I'll just show you that real quick again. This just has Eve, the quest giver, that allows you to go to the bunker. 
Um, that's all, nothing special. I'll show you what it looks like on the map so you can kind of identify it. It has this little circle thing in the middle which makes it easy to, uh, to spot. Um, and then let's go over to the bunker. Where's the bunker? The military bunker. Military bunker always looks like this. It just has a little well in the middle. So it's not the easiest thing to spot. Um, you, can, you can ride by it and miss it. Here's what it looks like on the map. As you can see, it doesn't look like much of anything. It's just a, like almost an empty thing. If you got, if I had my name out of the way, you might be able to see the well. Yeah, you can barely even see the well. So definitely hard to uh, spot. But let me just fly down. Let me make sure I got no clip on. I'm just going to show you, give you a tour real quick of it. So you go down. Down, down, down. And then in order to open this, you need... What do you need? Let me see... doesn't tell me what I need. I think it's the blue. Let me just double check for the for the um the sake of the video what key card it is. The green or blue. And to use the key card you just have it in your inventory. Select it. Yeah see over there it says green. So it's the green key card you need first. The blue one is the one you need to open the uh, big lab. So you just click it and it unlocks it and then you can open and close it. I am invisible, right? Yes. When you come in here, as I showed you before, um, you know, you got the, the body bag that respawns the mob. You got the dust with the loot. Um, let me get into no collision. Um, then you can come around here. I think I go in fly mode with no collision. Go through here, get all the lockers. Another body bag through this way and then the final room um, usually the quest uh, bag is like right here if you want to complete the quest or don't complete it and you can reset the bunker over and over and over again all right so that's the bunker it's a nice little POI under the under the uh, under the ground there great for farming you know like I said you could use Eve's quest to reset it and uh, sit there and farm it and gain levels gain skill ups get loot get uh, research papers um, tons of loot uh, by the time you're able to farm the bunker and then after the bunker here's Caitlyn so let's go over to Caitlyn trader Caitlyn is a settlement trader in the wastelands she has all the high-end stuff for sale where's the uh, entryway here we go let's come in from the front so this is what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like on the map. So you can identify it. Just come in and Caitlyn's right here. Captain's right there with his normal stuff. Caitlyn's right inside here. You can talk to her. Um, in her special stash, if you have points, um, points in traders. Um, I really hate it when they do that. I was hoping being invisible would keep them from doing it. Let me go kill them real quick. Either gotta kill the guards or kill the things they're shooting at. Quiet. Alright, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, if you have... Where is the skill? Better barter five of five and then you also need scavenger you need some points in scavenger as well the more even though it doesn't say anything about special stash this does affect it as I said earlier um, but when you go into her you'll be able to buy solar panels uh, laser workbenches uh, fusion forge um, but even without it she still she still sells some of the more rare stuff that you might get stuck on like tool and die set is a uh, workbench tool used for uh, making ammo so you need that um, what else does she have in here she sells steel so if you, you can't make steel yet but you just need a couple pieces um, you can try to find her real quick and try to buy some from her um, but yeah she has a lot of like cigar she'll sell that stuff uh, where other vendors usually won't she has more of a chance to sell a lot of the rare uh, things Welding torch. One time I did a playthrough, I could not find a welding torch for the life of me. You need a welding torch to make a crucible. So I got stuck. I couldn't make steel until I found a welding torch. I'd travel all over the place to find it. 
um, uh, calipers um, as well. And I always feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> calipers. I hear a lot of people say that. Calipers, which is wrong. It's calipers. But whenever I say it, I'm like, ah. Anyway. Um, yeah, she has a lot of stuff. So coming to her if you get stuck could be a good idea. Again, this is the wasteland, so you have to have a radiation suit. Um, right now it is bugged. I've said this before. Right now it is bugged. You can come in here without a radiation suit if it's on PvE settings. But I think that's going to get fixed. I hope it'll get fixed because it kind of trivializes this. Like, it's very difficult to get to Caitlyn and get to the labs. you got to farm up a set of radiation suit um, from the bunker. is a great place of getting radiation uh, stuff from. So you go to the bunker... You farm up a full set of radiation so you could sneak in here and see Caitlyn, but you got zero armor, so these monsters that are out here in the wasteland are going to tear you up if they get a hold of you. So ideally, you would like to take your, you know, your military armor or your steel armor and put the radiation mods in there, which takes even more pieces of the radiation suit, which you get from scrapping them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a progression system, and I feel like being able to sneak in here now um, and not take damage in the in the radioactive wasteland. Um, it's kind of kind of it's kind of cheap and cheesy. Um, hopefully they fix that. I think because I'm on in God mood, it's not affecting me. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not seeing the. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing the uh, little sparklies that are in front of your face, the static when you're normally in here. Anyway, on to the lab. I'll give. Let's give a quick uh, lab tour, and then. Uh, or and then that, that'll be it as far as like the POIs. Typically the labs are close to Caitlyn. Um, they're usually in one of the cities. And typically Caitlyn's in near one of the cities. She's not too much this time. Let's go into the lab. It's going to stick me in the ground. Oh, okay. Labs are very easy to spot. This tent is very recognizable. So when you come to the lab. Um, when you're just driving through the wasteland. All you got to do is just drive around the city. If you don't want to use like the uh, use any uh, cheaty methods like the you know going into the files into the XML files and finding out where it's at or using a map or something like that it's relatively simple to find. Ooh look at that behemoth over there. Let's see if he drops anything. Squirrels. Nah. I'm just so used to farming behemoths for their rare drops I kill them whenever I see them. So anyway very noticeable. Um, when you come in, they have, they have like has like five chests in here that you can loot. It's very nice. There are four chests, an ammo box, two ammo boxes, and four four uh, safes. If you go into this right tent right here and just smack out the cloth, there's a little hatch. If you go down into the hatch, you can come down here, down, 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 and you get to this key card. Now in the lab it tells you right here. You don't have to guess what color you need to unlock it. So you need a blue key card to unlock it. Now one of the good things about the lab. And also the bunker. Is they're indestructible. So once you come in here. I'm going to give you some tips on how to run the lab. At least how I run it. When you come in here you open a door. Immediately lock the door behind you. That way any nasties that spawn up there, they can't come in now. These blocks are all invulnerable. This door is invulnerable. This is like a safe room because this door is here. So you got an exit and an exit. When you come through this door, you have to be a little careful. There's some. There can be a spawn in here. I've seen behemoth spawn in here. I've seen nothing spawn in here. But come in here, clean out this room. A lot of times right here there will be a spawn. So be careful coming out here. You'll usually see there could be a behemoth. A lot of times there's a spawn right here as well. Could be a behemoth. A lot of times there's a spawn right where this guy is at. Could be a behemoth. Now I'll skip this room a lot of times. The first time I'm running this I'm not going to do a full clear. I'm just trying to get to the loot boxes. So like this would be a real good, good run for me. I'm just going to skip through. I'm not worried about this room. There's nothing in here. It's just you know more monsters and regular loot. I come through here, kill whatever I have to, or sneak by whatever I have to to get to this door. This is your first door. It's usually open. See how it's unlocked? Come in here. There's usually a couple lower level uh, uh, zombies in here that you can kill. But look, these are the best crates. These have the highest chance of dropping loot. Um, out of all the lockers, desks, everything that can drop loot, these have the highest chance. So a lot of times I'll hit the bunker 
and I'll be unsuccessful. I won't have anything that I'm looking for. No laser pistol, no uh, no laser sword, nothing like that. So if, look at that, got a laser pistol. I'm level one. I'm level, or I might not be level one, but I'm very low level and I still got a laser pistol. What level am I? I'm level three. So proof that laser pistols are not level dependent, not loot dependent, although you're not going to get a high level one. Um, but they can drop even at level one. You can sneak in here if you get a key card and get a laser. Um, let me see what else I get. Now I'm curious. Um, so this is where I usually come because I can handle this. As long as there's not a behemoth in the way or something like that, I can usually handle this. Um, if it's a if it's a server with a teleporter that I can teleport out, um, you can you can even just rush it, right? So like, if this was a server where I could teleport home and there was behemoths and stuff. I could just like suicide run, ah, and do the double tap method to open and close behind you. So you just be like bang bang, and then it closes behind you, and then you got to deal with these guys. Um, anyway, inside this room, more stuff to loot. Look at that demon trying to tear me up. You just got a couple lockers, and then if you want to progress further, you need a green key card there. Um, again, just as you come through here, sneak, crawl, take your time. These lights, by the way, great for electrical parts. Do not scrap them. It makes noise. You will aggro everything. Everything will know where you're at. Just, you know, try to be as chill as possible your first time through. Um, scrap them on your way out. Need another blue key card, and then we're going to go down the stairway here. Another blue key card. Oh, see? Now, this is where it's, like, tricky because you don't know what's behind that door. So, I always recommend standing back a little bit. And when you unlock it like that, you see how it opened? He can aggro on you and run right through the door. Because it kind of, when you unlock it, it opens. And then it takes a second for it to close. So if there's a monster right behind it, a zombie, a behemoth, whatever, they can aggro on you. So a lot of times it's best to kind of stand off to the side here and unlock it so they don't see you. And don't like stand right in front of it. Go, burp, and then you're like, ah! And he just one punches you and you're dead. And then, uh... Yeah, that's not fun. So anyway, open this up. Now you have two choices here. You can everything's invulnerable except for glass. So you can bang out this glass and skip over this way and go through this door. So if you didn't have if you ran out of blue key cards but you had green, you could kind of go over here and go this way. Don't forget to loot the desks. If you have plenty of blues, you can just swing through here. But there's a lot of monsters going down this way. So you can skip all these by going through the glass. Be careful. A lot of times I skip these, I regret it because then I make some noise when I'm over here and they come running around a corner. Regardless, you have doors. Use these doors. They're invulnerable. You, if you run into trouble, close the door and step back and heal up and do whatever. Also, if you say there's a bunch of monsters aggroed behind this door, you can let one or two of them in by doing the double tap door open close method. Tap tap. Let me, let me, why does that take so long sometimes? Let me unlock it. So if there's a bunch of monsters behind it, you can just tap, tap. It'll open and shut. Don't try to tap open and then try to shut it while there's monsters in your way. You'll get overwhelmed, you'll get wrecked. Just kind of come up and go tap, tap, move back. It'll automatically shut. One, maybe two monsters will come in. You can deal with them. Tap, tap get the next set so that's one way of dealing with them um, come through here come through here door with a green key card go that way you can go this way but there's nothing here it's just a bathroom another bathroom and then like an office or whatever okay, so I mean unless you're trying to kill the monsters there's no reason to come this way usually when I'm here I just try to keep low aggro and sneak right around and go in here when you're in here, this is kind of a safe zone. You usually have two lower level monsters. I guess they could be behemoths, so just be careful. Um, but deal with them, and then you can loot this room. You got a little bit of loot here. And then loot this room. You got a little bit of loot here. Once you're done that, you're kind of, once everything's cleared, you're kind of in a safe zone here. You got a door behind you, door in front of you. Open this up. There's usually nothing here. Usually nothing in here. You can loot this. Come back out. Be careful coming through here. Yep, there he is. Sometimes he's there. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's down here. But you got to be careful. Like, 
this guy being here, if you were loud when you came through here and weren't sneaking and like used an, uh, your axe on that door, he's going he's to burst through there and bust you in the head. Because behemoths are rough when you don't have a lot of armor or you know, you're just coming through on your first pass. Um, <clears throat> make your way, deal with, the, deal with him if you have to, aggro him and then run through here and close the door. Um, however you got to deal with him. You know, sometimes what I'll do is, if I know he's there, I'll set up turrets facing this way. Boom, boom, boom. I'll aggro him, run in here, and close the door. And then just stand here while he's trying to get through the door and let my turrets take him out. Anyway, you got two choices. You can go this way, green, or red. So if you don't have any red key cards, or if you only have one red key card, and you have more greens, go this way. Get your loot break out the glass come through and this is the reason why I said if you only have one because if you use your last red to open that then you're gonna be stuck you can't progress any further this is the one you absolutely need a red to get through and then pretty much at this point you're going to need red key cards to progress further so come through here come down this is a nice spot that I always try to get to because it usually has several uh, storage crates which are the best looting potential for your laser pistols and laser swords and laser multi-tools and uh, ammo for the laser pistol. Another red key card. This is usually a fighting hallway, so usually what I'll do is I'll, you know, pew pew one with my laser pistol, get him in here, fight him, pew pew the next one. I'll clear this hallway out completely. This lab door is usually closed, so what I'll do is sneak past it and walk up here and Un this is locked and it's locked open and you have all those nasties in there so what I usually try to do is come up here with my reds and I usually come up and just boop and then close it that way that one's closed and I can deal with them now or later so you can either go down that hallway or do this lab one um, lab one is usually what I do I just open this up deal with the guys that are in here there's a guy in here with loot um, this is your first access to a laser workbench. If you couldn't buy one from Caitlin, you can come here. You can't take it, but you can use it and craft it. You just need like a laser multi-tool uh, to put in there. This back room has some loot as well as right here is where I think the quest for the lab. Um, I think Caitlin, if you do enough faction for Caitlin, she gives you a quest for this lab, which will like the bunker, I think let you reset the lab over and over but this is where the pack is usually at for that quest so then we can move on to the final two labs go in here clear out this hallway using door techniques to protect you you got backup doors over here to run to if, if things get bad uh, so I clear out this hallway and then I do the same thing this one's always closed so I skip that and I try to sneak over here and why is that unlocked I guess it's I guess this one's unlocked but if it is locked I try to lock it and close it reason being inside here is the portal this portal is the end game portal mobs will just constantly spawn from this portal uh, I'd say like every 30 seconds or 60 seconds you'll get a group of four to six uh, demons spawning from that looks like we got a behemoth in here as well um, so what I usually do is close that and then clear out this lab first I usually come in here and clear all these guys out. Got some nice chests in here. You got a fusion forge that you can access to, you know, smelt whatever you want. Um, you know, if you're if you're able to craft, usually by the time you can craft these laser pistol stuff, um, you have a fusion forge yourself. But if you just need to uh, make some enriched uranium, which uh, which is uranium and plutonium, you need like a couple pieces of that for some things. You can smelt it in here and just kind of sit and wait after you clear it out. In this room, two behemoths. I was going to say, there's none in here. There's a zombie and a radiated. So usually all, these guys are always here. Um, so good for farming the behemoth. Try to get the rare drops from them. And then usually I work on the last room here. So I come in here and I just try to clear them out. I pull what's in there out to here and utilize this door. And then once I can, if I'm strong enough, once I can, I'll come in here. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get concrete frames. Um, let me go into creative. Maybe I'll show you what I do. Um, frames. 
Where are the frames? There we go. Got some frames. I need some concrete. Do, 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 do. Maybe if I filter it out more. It's just so many blocks. There we go. I'll usually have a stack of a thousand concrete on me and some frames. What I'll do is I'll try to in between the portal spawns if I'm strong enough to fight my way in here is I'll just go like this real quick with some frames. I'll try to get some frames down all the way to the wall there. It doesn't matter either side. I just usually try to go all the way to the wall. I'll just do that. You can make it three high if you want. And then oh, I don't have a laser multi-tool. Laser multi-tool. And then I'll use the concrete to upgrade them real quick with the laser multi-tool. And the reason why I do this is because I want to farm the portal. The reason why I want to farm the portal is I want demons spawning from this portal non-stop. I don't want them shooting fireballs at me. I don't want five demons shooting fireballs at me while I, as soon as they spawn. So basically, they'll hear me walking around out here and then they'll go, oh, they'll aggro and they'll come up and they'll come around this way. And it just gives me a better way of managing them, fighting them without them all just shooting fireballs at me. Also, it kind of funnels them around um, to, a, to a more manageable position to fight them. And the, the main thing it does is it prevents me from accidentally damaging this because you can damage this portal. Um, if you hit this with a weapon or with a tool, you'll damage it and the portal will break and disappear. And you can actually break it on purpose. Like, if you're weak and you can't farm the portal, a lot of times what people do is they'll just run in, throw grenades, or destroy it. That way it frees up the room and then you can loot all these great chests back here, you know? Um, if you're not strong enough to handle the portal. I would recommend not doing that unless you're on a server that resets the POIs because once, it once it's destroyed, unless you reset the POI, it does not come back unless you get the quest from uh, Caitlyn to reset the POI. Um, but what I want to do is sit here and farm it because demons can drop uh, power armor. So if you sit here and just kill demons, kill demons, kill demons, kill demons, you'll get a full set probably about 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Usually by that time, uh, it's good. Now, I'm not 100% sure. Some people tell me that just by spawning demons, this portal breaks. I don't think that's true. I think what happens is, over time, you'll randomly get a demon that punches it. You know how they just punch blocks? And over time, they'll punch it enough to break it. So even if you're not shooting it, they'll break it eventually. So eventually, it's going to break. But I think this wall helps out a lot. It stops them from shooting those fireballs at you and hitting the portal by mistake. It kind of funnels them out, you know? Uh, that's why I kind of put this wall here, uh, just to kind of help me deal with the, the portals. And that's, that's the lab, that's running the lab, and that's, that's end game. This is the, look at all these monsters in here. Let's go, vroom, vroom. so like three floors deep down in the ground, and that is the end game. So there you go, that is, uh, all the cool POIs, uh, for Darkest Falls, a little bit of tour through the lab for you. Before I get into how to install the game and, and all that good stuff, um, I just wanted to give you some tips about how to find a game, right? So, um, and also some map tips. So, when you're coming in here, um, so you want to join an online game, how do you find it? There's two main ways I find a Darkness Falls server. The first is just by typing Dark darkness and usually people will have darkness falls in the title sometimes they do not however um here's the italian server that i was playing on earlier um here's trips i've played on epic um epic has a lot of if you want darkness falls with like advanced they're not advanced but additional things like um equipment and gear they have a lot of like epic specific mods installed as well Hated Crew is a very good one. Uh, those guys are very have very great servers. Skynet is one that's in my video as well. Um, yeah, so a lot of these, a lot of these Darkness Fall servers are good. Any of these star ones that you see on mine, I don't know about Chronic. I don't remember him. Um, but anyway, if you just type Darkness, good enough. Um, some people don't put Darkness in their servers, so go into your filter, and for Game World, type DF. 
and it's gonna pull up actually you can just do D F A L L for default that's gonna filter it by the world name and all the default uh, darkness falls maps start with defaults so you can just do it that way so like zombie pelicans you would never know that's a default server unless you've seen that they're running default small um, so you can kind of see here it is early in the morning it's like five o'clock in the morning right now as I'm recording this um, so um, yeah there's not a lot of people online right now but um, sorry these guys are distracting me up here I gotta mute that server um, yeah this is how you can find them by doing the map and it'll tell you that they're playing it also if you're going to host the server you want to use one of these maps actually it's funny this Italian server they didn't use one of the default maps if you don't use one of the default maps and you use like one of the vanilla maps you won't have any of the darkness falls specific uh, points of interest that I just showed you you won't have the bunker you won't have the lab you won't have Caitlyn you won't have Eve um, so you need to have one of these dark darkness falls maps in order to have a lot of that stuff that's a common mistake I see people hosting servers do or playing the game it's kind of important because you're missing out on a big part of the game if you don't have that stuff in there so actually when I joined this guy's server uh, to play it I was like hey by the way did you know you weren't running uh, correct and they actually like wiped the server and redid it and put the correct map on real quick um, and so how you do that like if you go to new game it's like new game be new game um, your map choice here so basically you just pick one of the map like depending on what size you want large small medium there you go um, you can use like uh, I guess nitrogen is like a map generator you can use that in coordination with darkness falls but I don't know anything about that uh, it gets a little technical, but when you, if you do something like that, you got to make sure it's Darkness Falls compatible. Um, but anyway, that's how you can find uh, Darkness Falls and how you can create your own. Just make sure you're using one of the Darkness Falls maps so you don't uh, mess that up. And then, of course, you can use any filter you want as well. You know, if you don't want any player killing, you can filter that out. Um, if you're looking for a newer server, you can put a daytime in and look for only servers that are new. Um, you know that don't that haven't been running for a while so that that's kind of the tip there for darkness falls make sure you're running that map um, and if you do search let's reset if you do search by dark darkness make sure they're running a darkness falls map or at least that they know like these guys don't run darkness falls map but this is the hated crew like the, the admins here know what they're doing they, they know how to run whatever maps they want to run. I'm not sure if this is a Darkness Falls map or not, but these guys know what they're doing. They, they can run whatever kind of generated map they want, and it'll be fine. They're going to make sure all the POIs are in there, even if they have to manually put them in themselves. Um, yeah, so make sure the admins know what they're doing, or make sure it's a Darkness Falls map. Okay, so how do you install Darkness Falls? So if you go to darknessfallsmod.com, um, you can go here and kind of read about the mod, um, some features, tells you all the basic features that we went over. Um, so you can read about it. There might be some things that I didn't add here. Like I didn't mention that they have the junction box mod, so you can have invisible wires. So might want to come back here, read this. There's the muscle cars. Uh, it tells you what you get uh, for each class, like as you go through your uh, quests, if you're interested, if you're trying to make up your mind about uh, which class to pick, like what do you get, what kind of, you know, rewards do you get, and skill points and all that stuff is, is listed here. Um, but if you go up to the top and it says uh, download, you can click on that. It's going to send you over to um, uh, the forums, the seven days to die forums. So if you click on that and go over seven days to die, you can you'll see here um, by uh, Kane GB. Um, this is the creator. He's the developer of Darkness Falls. And as you can see, uh, last visited eight hours ago. This guy is on top of it. He's an active developer. He's been working on this for a while now. Um, I did get the chance to speak with him in Discord. I went to his Discord and I. I get into how to find that and stuff uh, really nice guy really friendly 
uh, was telling me how he got started playing it. Um, uh, him and his wife uh, were playing, and on uh, Seven Days to Die, and on Christmas, he just started tinkering around with the files, and they started changing things that they just didn't like about the game. Um, I think he said it was his wife's idea to add classes and all that stuff, and it kind of just started from there. Um, and, and they just started building on it and building on it, and he's made this really great mod with a really great uh, progression. But if you go through this thread, you can see all the comments and histories. It's got 295 pages of comments. So this he basically just keeps this one thread alive and updates it and posts stuff here. So this is one of the main ways to communicate and look at the history, version history, stuff like that. Um, is, is what you'll find here. But if you go down, you should have a link to the download. If you go down, 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 down. Here we go. Um, confirmed working modlets. You'll see some people adding sorcery. Uh, I've never seen expanded traps. I've seen some Darkness Falls sorcery servers out there. Um, but if you go here, he has uh, the download links. What you want to do is download that. Um, you want it. Ideally, what you want to do is you don't want to mess with your default Seven Days to Die folder in Steam. You want to copy your Seven Days to Die Steam folder into a new folder. Just like you can just name it like in your C drive, Seven Days to Die Darkness Falls. Name it whatever you want. Copy your Steam Darkness Falls over to that and then install the mod uh, that you download the zip file. Just install all that stuff into there. And that's it. That's all you have to do. It's it's simple. Or you can Google Seven Days to Die uh, mod launcher. Or actually, it's not just um, it's not just for Darkness Falls. This is a mod launcher for Seven Days to Die. It has a lot of different uh, mods in it. Like here's the Sorcery. Here's Darkness Falls. Uh, War of the Walkers um, is a, is a popular one. I just started messing with this one. Uh, it was crashing on me though, so I had to uninstall it. So a lot of different mods in here that you can install and uh, how you how you do it it's pretty simple just click on the mod you want darkness falls um, what you do is you want to copy from existing so it's going to pull it from your steam so you could do this manually which is what i just said go to your steam file copy seven days to die into like your c drive which is basically all it's doing here so it's going to create c seven days to die mod alpha 19 darkness falls darkness falls it's going to copy Steam over there and make a whole separate copy of the game and then install the mod into this. Um, so once you hit uh, copy into it, um, then you'll be able to go in and I can't show you the screen here because I haven't I don't have the files copied, but you'll be able to go into it and just click uh, uh, preload mod. There's a button right here that says preload mod click that it's going to download all the mod files into the copy of dark the uh, seven days to die that it made from steam and then you'll be able to launch it right from this launcher very simple um but i do have problems with this mod launcher sometimes it's not perfect um i sometimes it doesn't load for me sometimes it doesn't up update right it's working now um but i don't use it because i just do it manually for darkness falls because sometimes i have problems with this but that's how you can install it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to figure out. Um, and, you know, with this mod launcher, it's definitely easy. And you have access to all these other mods, too, that you can try out if you're interested. Okay, so uh, Kane is the gentleman. He is the guy who made the mod. <laughs> this is his Discord, Darkness Falls uh, uh, mod Discord. Um, He's active in here, as you can see. This is, like, today. He's in here talking. There's a lot of good information in here. If you have questions, I highly suggest coming in here and doing a search. Make sure you search. Um, you know, you want to come in here and search, and, you know, if you can't find it after you search, you can ask. People usually have the answer. Uh, if people don't have the answer, a lot of times he'll just jump in and let you know. He, yeah, Obviously, as a, as a modder, he's very insightful to how the game functions and operates and does this do that or does this how does this affect that so um but yeah there's a lot there's a lot of really good uh, helpful people in here i highly suggest uh jumping in as discord if you go play the mod just so you can search for helpful information and uh you know support them however you can um i think he has a youtube uh video um 
Yeah, right here, Kane's Corner is his YouTube channel. So, you know, jump on his YouTube channel. Say hello. Uh, give him a subscribe. I mean, you know, this this guy has created a hell of a mod here, and he's working with other modders and, and, and in the modding community. Um, you know, uh, get in there and tell him, tell him what's up if you like his mod, and uh, support it however you can. And I hope you uh, like this video. Um, <laughs> it took me a really long time to make this video. And I swear it's going to be like six hours long. And nobody's going to watch it. And it's going it's to be so heartbreaking. Um, but whatever. Darkness Falls is a mod I really like. I really appreciate this guy's work. Um, I've had a lot of fun. I spent a lot of hours on it. And um, I hope you do too. And that's kind of why I made this video. For the few people who are looking for a guide video for darkness falls here it is you know i looked you know i'm a user myself i'm a player myself i go on youtube and look for guides and a lot of times i just see playthroughs i don't i don't want to sit there for two hours watching somebody play through to pull some information so um yeah so um that's why i kind of decided all right let me just make this mod i'm going to just blat out all the information i have in my head try to you know help you out and give you give you a resource to utilize so hopefully you enjoyed it um if you did do all the things that you're supposed to do support my channel and again word of mouth is like the best thing like if somebody's looking for some darkness falls help send them on over to my video that's the best way you can help me out and my apologies if there's any misinformation that i gave you know i tried to give as accurate as i could I know there's a lot of information that I couldn't fit in here. Um, it's an extremely long video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see everybody in the next video.